Skylar Nimitz has admitted to shooting his wife to death, but he claims it was all an accident. I did not intentionally mean to murder my wife. I killed my fucking wife, okay? I killed my wife! This video contains the interrogation of a young soldier who claims that shooting his wife in the back of the head was an accident. Family and friends were concerned when Danielle Ripion dropped out of high school to marry Skylar Nemitz, a boy she had only known for three months. None of them knew just how badly things would end. The couple had been married for a year and a half. And while Danielle usually put on a cheerful front, there were signs that maybe the relationship hadn't turned out as perfectly as she'd hoped. Several friends noticed that she began to wear clothing that concealed more of her body, and they caught occasional glimpses of finger-shaped bruises. Once, Nimitz became so enraged that he destroyed her phone. Danielle was also kept on a rigid schedule of cleaning to make him happy and was even unable to take a job without his approval. Danielle had lost her mother at a young age and was one of several children raised by her grandmother and then her stepfather after her grandmother passed. Teachers and fellow students recall that she desperately needed attention and fell in love easily, not just with her boyfriends, but with their families, who gave her the love and warmth she longed for. With Nemitz being in the army, she could go for weeks or months without seeing him, something that must have been difficult on someone so young and in need of attention. In her diary, there appeared to be evidence she was seeing someone else. Although she and Nemitz were on a tight budget, she sent roses to someone she claimed was just a male friend shortly before her death. It is suspected that Nemitz, who had just recently spent three weeks away with the Army, discovered this. This is in reference to case number 1428911132. I'm Detective Todd Jordan. This is my father, Detective Bernard. All right. The time now is, the uh, date is uh, the 16th of October. It's 7.18 p.m. And these are all formality stuff that we have to go through, okay? Uh, another one of these formalities, I'm going to read this to you, okay? We're just, this is a part of the, the investigation of what happened in your home, okay? So this is another one of those formalities. Before making any statements or, uh, before questioning or making any statements, I want to advise you of your right. You have the right to remain silent. Any statement that you do, make and be used as evidence against you in a court of law. You have the right this time to talk to an attorney of your choice and have an attorney present before him during questioning or making these statements. If you cannot afford an attorney, you're entitled to have one appointed for you without cost to you and to have an attorney present at any time uh, and any question or making any statements. Any question or making any statements. This is the one I like. You may stop answering questions and ask for an attorney at any time during the questions and making the statements. Do you understand those? Okay. All right. I'm going to write your name right up here, Skyler. I don't know Okay. What I want you to do, because I just read those to you, write by one, two, three, four, five, right here. Just put your initials in there and then read those and answer those two questions, okay? Just yes. Yeah. Exactly. Is there a photograph? No, yeah. We'll, we'll get that. Okay. okay. I'll get that. Thank you. Okay, and then initial by your, yeah, that's perfect sign up. And initial by your two answers there. And my partner's going to sign it, and then I'll sign it away, okay? So tell me what uh, what happened tonight, Scott. Today I got back, I'm sure I'm in the military, and mm -hmm. today, I've been here for like two years, and today I got back from Yakima Training Center up in Northeast Washington. Mm -hmm. I got back about three o'clock. My wife picked me up then. I've been gone since the 27th of last month. So I just got back today. A couple weeks then. Yeah, it's been like three weeks. Got back today. Um, wife picked me up, got in my truck, and drove home. Um, downloaded all my gear onto the porch. And we just, we visited for like an hour and just, I missed her so much. Nemitz begins the interview with fake crying. But once he has asked a few basic questions, he forgets his initial act and speaks calmly before seeming to catch himself. Uh, 
this time was different. This time, there's something different about this time. I miss a lot more than I have before. How long have you guys been married? We're about to, we're about to be two uh, about to be two years. Um, but anyways, we got home. Or some pizza. Just try to relax. I'm just I haven't slept in a couple of days because I've been working nonstop. So uh, yeah, I get home, eat some pizza, watch some movie. She works for a company called uh, Granite Transfer Transformations. It's like a construction company. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, she's she works for the managers there, and uh, so uh, she said, uh, well, she gets paid on her own time because she work she whatever. So what I'm do you mean? What she does her own hours? Yeah, she, she, she it's a whatever you call it system. It's like a call, she calls and she calls and just talks to her boss and she works with the management. Mm -hmm. And um, same way she just said, uh, I'm gonna work for like two hours and call some. Um, I don't know what the fuck how they handle all. That. I don't know anything about the military. I don't know all that shit. Okay. Anyways, she, so I'm like, okay. So she goes on. She was talking on the phone with a couple of employees or whatever and she was going because she also we i got her an imac so she can like do videos and like make videos to like promote the business mm -hmm. whatever. so she was making a video or whatever and anyways i was gone for those usually when i leave i leave her like a firearm or at least i some sort of security or just sure. or I, I tell a friend you know that i'm leaving and so this time I had a, a DPMS AR-15 that I bought last year for her birthday. For her birthday, mm -hmm. it was just me and her. I bought that for her birthday. Anyways, I left it unloaded. This is where I was so confused: is I left it unloaded with a magazine away from it in the closet because she doesn't know how to use the safe and all that. So I left that in the closet, and I told her, "You only touch this if you need it." And when I get home, I'll put it away because I'm I'm home. So. Anyways, I got home. We, you know, I didn't even think about any of that. I was, I was just relaxing. And finally, she went to work on the computer and talked to employees and whatnot. And I, and I just thought to myself, oh, well, I'm home. I'm just gonna go. I'll go unload the rifle and I'll put it away because she doesn't need it anymore. So there's the front doors right here. You kind of walk around, and there's a spare bedroom in my in our in our bedroom that me and her sleep in this bed mm -hmm. with. Anyway, she was in the spare bedroom that we use for when I do stuff on the computer for work, or she calls employees. She goes in there because we have a computer and it's silent. She was in there, and I left the rifle in there because the safe is in that same room. It's a Cabela's safe. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm just trying to get it as accurate as possible. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So I went into the room, and I took. I was behind her when she was on the computer. I right before I said, right before anything happened, I looked. I was just like watching. I looked over her shoulder and I was looking what she was doing on the computer, and I was like, "You know, you're really cute." Or whatever. I told her, she, you know, you're being really cute right now because I just think it's cute when she works and stuff like that. And so I took the rifle and I, I took the magazine out. I took the magazine out and I I ch I don't know what the fuck happened. Like. I didn't charge it, I didn't pull the trigger or anything. I, I hit the safety, I turned the safety from safe to semi because I was about to charge it to make sure it was clear. Even though, when I gave it to her, I knew it wasn't around. So here, I think that when, maybe when I was gone, she might have put a round in the chamber maybe, not knowing what she was doing. And so, I don't know what the fuck, I, I did not pull the trigger and I didn't, the magazine was not on the weapon. I put the weapon on fire, it was on fire, so it had the probability of firing the weapon. And I don't know how the fuck it went off, but it went off. And it meet. What's your wife's name? <laughs> I'm gonna name your names. Her right. first name is Tara. Spell it for me, bud. T A R R A H. My name is Danielle, T-A-N-I-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. I call her Danny. Okay. And then her last name is my last name, E, but Tony M. Okay, where are you guys from? Uh, we're both from a hometown in uh, Northern California. We're both from Humboldt County. Uh, she was born in 
McKinleyville. Was she, she, was born, she was born in Mad or no, no, she was born actually in San Francisco, and immediately a week later, she she moved to McKinleyville, where she lived with her family. And I was born in the same town. I was born in Eureka, but they're within like ten miles of each other. It's right. all one big county. And What's uh, her date of birth? Her date of birth is January eleventh, nineteen ninety-five. She's nineteen right now. I got it. Okay. So you said that you, you knew uh, the. Uh, <laughs> Nemitz lowers his head in a display of grief, which conveniently allows him to avoid eye contact. No, it's not in you. We just saw here people out there, and I can't have people walk in, so it should have been locked. I don't want people barging in on this. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I've, I've never hurt anybody. I mean, the, the worst thing I've done, I go deer hunting. Mm -hmm. And this weekend, actually, I was planning on taking, I remember I got home and I had planned out this big thing. We're going to go down to Morton and we're going to go deer hunting. And I had, a, I had a deer, I had a rifle that I've had since I was about 11 years old. My grandma's been using it since the fucking, like the late 60s. Mm -hmm. And I was excited because I was going to get her all of her stuff and we're going to go hunting down to Morton. Mm -hmm. I remember I was so excited. I remember. I had already had plans this weekend, and I remember we were just talking about him. We were talking about her work. I was so excited to see her. I was on the field the whole time. I didn't have much time to talk to her because I was working from four what in the morning. What are you doing in I'm a, I'm a mortarman. I'm a gunner. I'm a 240 gunner, and yeah. yeah what, what you can you, just, a 11C, 11 Charlie. 11 C is your unit? No, that's, M, that's MOS. My unit is 3-2, three, or you can just put 3 comma 2, 5-20. HHC. And I'd like to talk to my chaplain. Sure. Is he, he allowed yeah. to be in here? Or? Yeah, well, he, he, uh, not in here. He can't, but we'll get, we'll call I him. I just want to talk to him. I, I, I understand. I, I get that. Listen, man, I'm a good God fearing man. My partner is too. Um, I, I understand that. Uh, but I got, we just got to kind of figure out everything that happened right now. I'm this, like, I'm like, I could shoot my buddies out in like Capitol Forest and mm -hmm. stuff, you know, like every other weekend. Yeah, I'm not I'm not an asshole guy and I was like, hey don't don't do that, you know, it's not safe. Oh no, don't do it, it's not safe. Fucking wear E pro wear I pro and E pro it's not it's not safe. Like and then I'm that guy that's always just hassle and my buddies go out there they can drink alcohol and I'm the one guy that doesn't and like <laughs> and this is the shit that happens to me. <laughs> I can hear about my buddies fighting with their girlfriends and wives, and I never do. I love my wife so much. <laughs> you guys uh, never fight, you say? <laughs> I mean, we have little bickerings, she's like, but we never, I've never laid a hand on her in my entire life, and I never planned to. I never, I never, I never. <laughs> So how long were you guys you got in the field for almost from three? From the, the 27th of uh, <coughs> September. September, September to uh, today. I left this morning. I left it. And how many times, how long have you guys been married? We got married on um, March 7th of 2013. March 7th of 2013. Yeah, so four, more, four five, five more months and we'd be two years. Okay. And so, how many, so much more. Yeah, how many times have you guys been deployed in that time? And when, I, when I got here, my unit had just gotten back from deployment within two weeks before, and we had been on yellow cycle, so we don't deploy anymore. Okay. So, I mean, I mean so you guys been married a little over a year. So, in that time period, how much time yeah. have you guys been away? Um, we were, we've been together before we got married. We were together, but not marriage wise. Yeah. And uh, I've, been gone for, I've been gone for months at a time, and then I went. I went to basic and I was going for whatever the fuck yeah. time that was, whatever. So you guys like high school school college? Yeah. Yeah, okay. okay. I've never since, I, I've been her cousin, I've been friends with since I was okay. 12 years old. Oh, okay. Our so whole families are in, intertwined since we're little kids. Okay. And it's really good for me, it's my families. Well, I was just gonna, you, you said that you missed her this time more than you normally missed her. I mean, yeah. was there something going on that made you miss her more? No, or? I think, Last few times, the last I went to NTC and Southern California Yak in the last year, and like some other like little things to each other, like on post. I, and usually I was like, oh, this is good for us, you know. Like we had a little bicker minute the other day, so I think it'd be good for us to get a little mm -hmm. couple days apart. But this time it's just like 
<laughs> when I left, I just I, I knew I was gonna miss her. We did, we were just seeing some kid, and I loved her so much. And I was really sad to leave. And so was she. And when I saw her, I remember when I got in the truck after work, she was just had the biggest smile on her face. And I, I was trying to I was trying to fight my smile away. But and that was today, right? Yeah. You guys, any of my friends, uh, when I talk about her, I always talk great, great things. I love her so much. Okay. I would never hope anything like this. Oh, no. No, this time I just, I don't know why, I just really miss her a lot more this time. No. You can, I mean, just wanted to be home more, or what I was just, that? I just missed it. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, Which, um, we'd known each other for about three years yeah. the other day, when I, on October 4th, and then that day, yeah, I was just, I was just really missing her. No. No, it's tough being away from Did the, uh, was she missing you too? Yeah, she was telling me she was just missing me a lot. <laughs> Have you guys ever, uh, um, she ever had some guy at work that she talked to or anything like that that made no, you upset? I, no, I trust her a hundred percent. Right. I she I would never, ever, ever do anything. She or her anything, and I know she would either. It's it's solid. It's it's really good. I know for a fact too. I've known her for so long, and I can read her like a book, and she can read me, and it, it's just. <laughs> this is a. But this kind of stuff is supposed to happen to people like me or No, you're right, it's not. <coughs> but there was nobody at, uh, you, when you got home, you guys were just hanging out and, and just eating some pizza and stuff. There was no bickering or anything like no, that? No bickering at all. I was, I was just so curious how she was doing and just what she did and how work was going. She was wondering if I was okay out there, if I got sick or anything. She was asking me a lot if I got sick. And, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Do you guys have any beers or anything when you get home? Yeah, that's one thing I'm gonna say. When I got, uh, I didn't expect this, but when I got off, uh, when she came pick me up, apparently one of her friends, she asked one of her friends, she got me some alcohol, but I didn't, I hardly drank any of it, and I remember she got some cinnamon. While Nemitz admits that she had someone buy him alcohol, he fails to mention that it was at his request. I didn't really drink that much at all, like ever. Mm -hmm. And she got me some cinnamon shit. You call it Fireball or something yeah, like that? Yeah, that's what it's called. Anyways, I had, I literally had like a little, like it was like probably like a glass like that big around, like mm -hmm. that tall, so like a regular drinking glass. And it was probably like that much, and I poured the rest. Filled the rest with Red Bull because I was really tired, but I didn't want to go to sleep because I want to talk to her so much. I remember I drank that, and that's all I drank. Mm -hmm. Did she have anything to drink at all? No, she didn't. She doesn't. She doesn't drink at all. Like that's her. That's her rule. She does not drink at all. She doesn't smoke. She doesn't drink. Mm -hmm. I smoke cigarettes when I'm out in the field, but right when I get home, I usually smoke like whatever I have left, and then I quit. Mm -hmm. And then. Drinking wise, I, re I rarely, I really rarely drink ever. And I love being in the military, and that's like, I want to be in the military my whole life. I'm like, I don't want, to, I don't, I don't want to leave it. Well, I don't. It's important uh, to me as my wife is. Right. You know, I'm, I'm just saying is that we're, we're not in the military. We, are we both. I mean, I, I was in the military. But we're not worried about the military right now. We're just trying to get the basis of what everything that happened. Ask um, away. I don't know what else you want to do, but just ask so, me a point. I yeah, know. I am going to ask you some point blank questions. So at no time was there that she didn't have a boyfriend or anything like that while you were deployed? No, and yeah. you guys weren't fighting over that? No, no, Okay, no, no, was no. there anybody yelling inside before the gunshot happened? No, 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 no. Was the TV up loud? Because there was some, you know, your name. Yeah, the movie, uh, I was on AMC, on, I was watching G.I. Jane. Mm-hmm. Whatever the hell that is. But I was on loud, and I had that probably on like 40 on the volume, and that was kind of loud. And then immediately my dogs, once, once it happened, they started barking because they were really freaked out. And I never hit my dog. I never beat my dogs or anything. And they, you know, they aren't beaten. And, like, they hear one loud thing go off. And they're, like, they're freaked out. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it was it was probably the TV though because really? she, was, she yeah it was probably was because she. Which so you've been gone. But so right so. right after it happened, right after the the fire the the gunshot, I was I was I was freaking out. I I didn't I didn't know what the fuck to do. Uh, I'm trying to get this done. You're 19 or 20. You're 20, 20. She was 19. So um, you've been gone since the 27th. So no, about three weeks. Yeah. And you, uh, you guys, you hadn't seen each other for three weeks, and you sit down, and eat some pizza, and have a little shot, and then she gets on her computer and does some work. Yeah. After it's being that. away from each other for three weeks. Yeah, I mean, I told her, yeah, you go ahead and work because when she, I told her like work an hour or two because she gets paid for that. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah, go ahead and work for an hour or two. I'm gonna watch this movie. I'm gonna eat. I'm gonna hang out with my hound dog. I got a hound dog that I'm absolutely like best. For. I'm glued to, mm -hmm. and yeah, I was like, yeah, go, go ahead, call, because she had, to, she didn't actually, she didn't actually work, she had her, her video up, but she was calling people to make sure, I don't know what she was calling about, but she was calling uh, clients or employees, or I don't, she was calling people to business, and I said, yeah, go ahead, and yeah, while I was watching the movie, yes, I did have it on loud, and while that was going, it's probably still playing right now. No, I'm gonna. You have extra time. No, it's yeah. it's a 60 inch flat screen. Yeah. So I don't. It's just kind of a long stereo on the bottom that's connected to the TV. It's like part of the TV. It's just kind of loud. Oh okay. Yeah, but I I'm telling. There was no argument. There was no argument. There was no bickering. Anything. I remember the last thing I said to her. I went into the room and I said, "You're really cute. You're really cute." And then I just inside my head I was thinking like oh well, you know I'm just like oh she's gonna this little mom just gonna put it away because it was on the bed because she said hey this is out and I put it she's like I put it on the bed she's like you can put it away and I didn't even think twice about it and then uh, I thought to myself while I was watching the movie I was like hey she doesn't need this anymore so I'm gonna put it away. Uh, I'm is that where you normally left it on the bed? No, my firearms. When I'm home. Not when you're home. When when you leave. No 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 no. Where was when, that? When I left. Usually I don't even have a firearm out, but this time I just left one out because she has her own and she's going to shoot so I thought she knew how to use it. No, it, on the, so when you walk in the front door, there's this spare bedroom that has the computer in it and there's yeah. the other bedroom that has just our uh, Kelly King bed in there. It's in the closet, she, keep, she keeps it in the closet on her side, hidden some, when I was gone. She put it in there, I don't know, I think it was just sitting there on her side of the closet. Mm -hmm. And then, but you went and got it and brought it into the computer room? No, she brought it into the computer room. You saw her? It? Like, yeah, like 30 minutes before, she brought it in the computer room and was like, hey, can you just put this away? Or whatever, I don't remember what, exactly what she said, but she said, I don't need it, put it away, whatever. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get kind of a little confused. Yeah, go ahead and ask. So, it's, how many firearms do you have total now? Go there real quick. They're not all mine. Well, how many? Just I'm just curious as to how many you have there. Even if they're not yours, how many firearms are in the apartment? Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. How many? How many rifles? Nemitz places emphasis on the fact that the last thing he said to his wife was that she was cute. He also says, unprompted, that he never beat his dogs. It comes off as an attempt to make himself appear innocent, which usually just makes the detectives doubt the suspect even more. Six. Six rifles. So then most the, of them hunting rifles. Six yeah. rifles. Okay. And um, so the rest are handguns. Eight handguns. No, there's six rifles, and then there's um, three shotguns. Three shotguns. Okay. And then there's six handguns. Six handguns. Wait. There's. It's easy. I can't really. There's. It's, it's okay. We're not in a rush. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, there's six handguns. Okay. I know for a fact there's six handguns. Okay. And 
There is one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six rifles. Okay. I might have messed up on the total number. Okay. So well, six handguns, six, six rifles. Fifteen. And then there is. <coughs> There's three shotguns. Okay, fifteen total. So are they all locked in a safe or? Yeah, they're always locked. They're always locked. I have in a safe. safe. They're always locked. I keep the ammo separate and the ammo okay. cans locked. Or they're okay. not, they don't, I have locks in the separate ammo cans. And then, so she and has safe, so she has the one she has the one AR right. Yeah, she has one DPMS AR-15. It's a five five six caliber. It's a yeah, semi-automatic. Nice. Okay, and that's the one that you leave out for for. Her? Personal safety while you're gone, home protection while you're gone. I usually don't, but this time I did. This time you did, okay. And so, when she has it for her protection, she stores it in the closet. Yeah, she. Okay, how I left it for now, I told her is okay. So on the on the weapon, uh -huh. there is there is the magazine. Okay. The magazine well on the side. I have what's called a bird cage, okay. which is a secondary magazine well that holds mm -hmm. the magazine, but mm -hmm. it's not inside the weapon. Okay. So I have a thirty round I'm magazine, a thirty round magazine that holds in the the bird cage, mm -hmm. and I told her just keep that in there. You don't need to have it. In the so you just have it in the bird cage. Yeah, and, and I told then you, where did she keep it in the house? It was in the. Um, there was other magazines for that weapon that are mm -hmm. loaded, but I don't remember where the hell they were. I don't remember. I don't know where they were, and she kept it in the. Um, in our closet, she in, in our bedroom, in not bedroom not closet. in the office, okay. and she kept it on her side where her clothes are on the right side. Okay, so but I, I, she like I've seen it like when, after we went, like not hunting after we went shooting one time it was unloaded and she just put it in her okay. closet right there. But so, this but time it was almost positive because right when I walked in I think I remember seeing when I laid down my bed is right when you walk in the bedroom where the king bed is right in here in front mm -hmm. of you. You turn right, there's a closet, and it was right on the right side in the corner. Okay. On the other side of the closet. Okay. But, yeah. So, so, it was, so she takes it, so this is the part where I'm getting confused. She takes it from there into the other office, and then yeah, she to come 30, put it away? 30 minutes before this all happened, she took it from the closet into the bed, into the office. Okay. And she said, I don't need this anymore, I just put it away. Okay, just so kind of does she not have a combination to the safe that she wanted you to put she, in the safe, or? I've told her before, but I don't think she knows it off the top of her head. Okay. Okay. So that's what I'm trying, that's, I was just trying to figure that out. Um, I've told her before and I've I was just kind of wondering why she'd bring it in the office and just not say, hey, the rifle's out, you might go and throw it in the safe. Yeah, that's what, she, she took it from the bedroom, uh -huh. put it in, on, there's a blue blanket, on the spare bedroom where okay. the computer is, on the spare bedroom bed, she put it on that. She said, "Hey, can you put this away?" Okay. I don't need it anymore. Okay. okay. So, and I didn't think much of it. I said, "Just say yeah," and then not till thirty minutes later, I was like, "Oh, okay. Well, she doesn't need it anymore. I'm gonna go put it away." Okay. And then I went in there. And it seems odd that Danielle didn't know the code to open the gun safe. At least one of the guns was hers, and she used the gun on a fairly regular basis. This is weakened even more when you recall that Nemitz wanted her to have a gun for her safety while he was away from home. What good would it be if she couldn't get to it? Yeah. Okay. Let's go, and this is a hard part for this guy, I know, but tell me about the part where you went in there um, and this happened. So you had a hold, you, you picked it up, and she was on the computer. Okay, so the magazine was in the, ma the birdcage. Okay, I took the magazine out of the birdcage. Okay, she was sitting on the computer. As she was sitting on the computer, I was like, oh, you look really cute. So the computer, and I took the weapon and I, um, I had unlocked, I had not unlocked the safe yet. Actually, I can't even remember if it's unlocked or locked. But, Okay, so I walked in, I grabbed the rifle, the magazine was still in the birdcage, took the magazine out of the birdcage, and I was going to clear the weapon because I was going to put it back in my safe. So, I don't know why I clear weapons every day, all the time, I'm like, but this time I put the, the weapon on fire before I charged the charging handle to make sure the chamber was clear. And when I put it on fire, just, I don't know if I fucking like hit, I, I, if I hit it against my leg, or if like I hit it with my finger in the, I don't know what the, it hit me with such surprise, I didn't know what the fuck just happened. Like, sorry for my cursing, but.
You have 15 weapons in your house. You're pretty familiar with weapons, right? Yeah, I've been shooting weapons since I was shot my first weapon when I was four years old. I've been shooting, firing weapons my entire life. I've been hunting my entire life. Yeah, so you, you understand how they work? Yes, I do. So and that's why I don't understand is why the fuck I would make such a simple mistake by putting the weapon on fire before I shoot. Well, kind of my job and my partner's job is to make sure it was a mistake. Mm -hmm. And that and that's kind of where we're at. We want to make sure that, that if it was truly was a mistake, then it was a mistake. But some things, uh, I know you're upset. Yeah, I've been doing this job longer than you've been alive, so I mean, I get that, right? But you've, you've changed your story twice since we've been sitting right here, and I just want to make sure my point I'm not lying about anything. I'm, I'm not saying, Scholar, you are. It, it could be the fact that you're upset. And, but well, one thing you got to do is before you start talking, is, is listen up a little bit, okay? Because that'll help you make sure you're answering the right question, okay? And then that'll, that'll help us understand, make sure that we're following what you're saying too. So initially he said the gun was in the, in, and it could be just confused, but initially he said the gun was in the office and then, then the, later on it was in the bedroom and you brought it in there and then the, no. there's other magazine. No, hang on, just okay. I just wanna make sure we're understanding. Okay. So she brought the gun into the office and said, put this away. About 30 minutes later, you decided that was the time to put it away. The magazine was in the, the uh, attached bird cage on the yeah. side of the firearm, right? Yeah. Okay, so you, you took the magazine out or you left it in? In, in, the, in the just when you were going to clear it, when yeah. it was in the birdcage. Yeah, the magazine was in the birdcage. Okay. okay, I took the magazine out. I from I remember for a fact mm -hmm. I took the magazine out of the birdcage mm -hmm. before I tried to clear the weapon. And the birdcage is attached to the side of the receiver, nowhere near yeah, the breech so of the gun. Yeah, it's, it's, it's next to it, but there's no way from, make sure you're listening to me, okay. no way around from that magazine that's in the birdcage could get into the, the chamber unless it was all prior, the round was already prior there. Right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, but here's what I think is because there is, mo I had multiple magazines loaded. I think what happened was she, when I was gone, she had, she had put one in the weapon or something, or she was messing with it because I do not leave a weapon with a round in the chamber. I don't do it. Even for my personal safety, even when I'm hunting, I don't leave around in the chamber. I just, I don't do that. So I think she must, I, th I think she messed with the weapon before I got home. Mm -hmm. Like not knowing or maybe she got bored one day or I don't know. Well, that's when you talked about that, you said when you left on the 27th of September, yeah. you left it unloaded with the magazine away from the rifle. And then, when you, so when you came back today, it obviously wasn't in the same condition as when you left, correct? Yeah, that's why I think, and I, that's why I'm saying is, some, uh, she had a friend over, I think, during the, sometime, but I asked her when I first got home, like, you didn't, nobody was, like, digging a rifle and throwing stuff, was there? And she said no. So I think she just got so, curious. Did you ask her that? Did you say, hey, why? <laughs> I that, that was when that when the fire went off. Yeah. That was the first time I tried to clear the weapon because that was the first time I touched it since I left. Okay. So I think. Well, just, thing, just ask me more questions. Now. Okay, and then well, the only other question I have so clearing rifles in your lifetime. How many times have you cleared a rifle, and especially an AR style rifle? I got my first. I got first AR type rifle as M16 semi-automatic when I was 11 years old. I've been clearing it since that. I've been in the military since two, uh, late 2012, so I've been clearing it for since then. Been no army school, weapon school. So, how many times do you think you've done that had function drill where you've had to clear it? Like how many times in total? Mm -hmm. <sighs> maybe maybe a couple thousand. A couple thousand. And in that clearing, have you ever put the selector switch to fire? Oh, I'm sure some, I'm sure I put, I mean, even today I turned in, I turned in three different M4s in the arms room when I got back from Yakima. Okay. And I remember that I probably, because when you, when the bolt is forward, but the mm -hmm. weapon is already charged, you can switch the weapon from safe mm -hmm. to fire. Okay. Well, I'm just, I'm just asking, because I was, I was never in the army, I've always just been a cop. And so when they teach us to clear our rifles, it's always on safe. Drop the mag, yeah, clear the rifle. Why at this time so right. that's why I was saying, have how many times did you? Is that do they teach on the army to slick the selector switch to fire before you clear it, or is it put it on safe, drop the mag, then clear it? It's on safe. It's on safe. Okay. 
So what, uh, why today did it, did it get slick? Why did you, what happened today where you slicked the, the, the fire? The detectives have established that Nemitz has cleaned this type of gun thousands of times. The odds of him making this sort of mistake are exceptionally low. The odds of this happening at home without witnesses rather than on the field are even lower. When you've been deployed before, have you ever had people come over and mess with your stuff? Any of your friends what come over mean, and mess? Uh, at my house? Yeah, at your house while you're gone. Did, have you ever found that your stuff is out of, out of touched or messed around with by her friends? Um, not that I know of. I really, I really trust her. You know, I don't pay right. attention to those kind of things. Except for today, you just said that no one was in here messing with our stuff, were they? So you just told Not me that five minutes ago. She did have a friend over, but I don't think she was messing with anything because I asked, 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 asked her that. Well, why would yeah. you ask her that? If no one's ever done it. Just because I don't usually leave a firearm at home, like out in the open for her. So I asked her beforehand, hey, like, you mess with it. I asked her, you, like, I asked her, did you mess with it? And I asked her, because she has a friend named Carrie, and I said, oh, well, she messed with it because I didn't know if they were, if they thought, oh, let's go shooting or what, or. You know, well, let me show you what my husband got me for my birthday back in January or what. It just seems odd to me that uh, you're gone for three weeks. First thing you do is eat pizza, have a drink, and watch a movie while she's doing some work. You don't have any uh, um, time, just the two of you. No, we but, did. But, so but I then, and then you tell me that there's a, you know, she didn't know if a friend okay, came I over. Don't want so. to talk. We had sex We had sex during okay. the day, and we were hanging out on the couch, and we probably cuddled for a solid 45 minutes just cuddling on the couch, and we laid back on my bed, and we were just talking, catching up, and we cuddled on my bed a few Okay, Scott, this is, I know I'm not trying to get into your intimate details, but it's very important that you need to tell us everything because what it makes you look like is your lying son. And I don't want you to I don't I don't want you to, to look like I don't want that to happen to you. I want you to be able to tell us everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, because that was a big hole that I'm trying to figure out because I know it uh, even an old man like me, when I get home, that's not what I'm thinking about eating pizza. But after I've been gone for a while, sorry. Um, so I just want to make sure that we got everything figured out. You know, and we're not missing anything. But it is kind of strange to me that if no one's ever gone in there and messaged your stuff before, that that would be a question that you would ask. I don't know. I'm just. Okay. I don't know. I'm just anal, I guess, because I mean, the, here's why I asked her, and I think I just, I think I just said this, was I don't usually have firearm at home for her, but for this time being, I, she had one that I think she knew how to use that she'd gone out shooting before, so I thought, okay, well, maybe I'll leave this one for her, I don't know. Because recently, in our apartment complex, I just feel like it's really like ghetto, and I'm not a racist person, I'm just saying that it's kind of ghetto, and I don't, I don't want anything to happen to my wife, and I, I worry, I'm not worried about her doing things with me, I'm worried about other people doing things to her, you know, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'm, so, I just, I was just worried about her. I think that was my main thing, and I think that's why I miss her a lot. I was just so worried about her, like, I was just worried. Go ahead and ask her. I'm, I'm losing my train of thought by this time. No, no, it's okay, man. We're just kind of, we're just kind of chilling. Making sure we'll figure it all out. out. If you don't mind, would you kind of just take me through and, and and don't leave any details out what your home coming was like so she what is she you know from like you're telling us a story and from when she picks you up kind of tell us what My happened intimate parts of that. yeah i mean you don't have to go into the details but just kind of just like you're telling a story a chapter at a time okay so, so it makes sense to us so 4 30 this morning i woke up Got ready, I was in Yakima, I went and geared up my truck, got all my stuff strapped down. I text my wife, I was like, hey, I'm leaving Yakima, I can't wait to see you soon, or whatever. I think, I'm pretty sure I texted her, or I, know, I think I called her from my buddy's phone, because I don't have service in Yakima, because I have Sprint. Anyways, so, we left Yakima, I didn't, usually when we got the field, I don't really text her or call her too much, because it's just... I need to work and she understands and mm -hmm. it's just easier if I just don't. But she knows it's all okay, so that we're really trustworthy so it's not that big. 
I need to change my shirt. I'm tired of looking at this fucking bullet. Yeah, I'm gonna have to take a picture of you before we do that. Uh, um, just because. Okay, so I was even, we did, it was me, my squad leader, and my driver. We were running skills on crew back from Yakima to here. It was about a five hour drive. And uh, when we got back, I remember during that time we were talking about my wife, because I have a guy that's also my squad that he's just always, always arguing and just with his wife and he's always complaining, he's always talking about like, cheating on her and stuff. And like, I remember I, I tell him like, how can you do that, man? Like, how can you even think about those kind of things? Like, I remember the night he got hit in the mouth by a Tootsie, which is a, a cover that holds some water around. And I remember that night or like the next morning we got in a fight because, of, well not like a fist fight, but like argument. Cause I was like, how, I was ticked off. Like how he can treat people like that and how he can treat his wife and like, Anyways, so he went home, whatever, and so finally we got, we were driving back. I hadn't talked to her since that morning, and the, and the, and the night before, I, I texted her the night before on my cell phone. Two things indicate that Nemitz is lying or holding things back. First, he is oversharing. He goes off on unrelated subjects. This makes it sound as if he is either trying to avoid answering questions. The second indication of lying is the way he keeps sliding in subjects or opinions that make him seem like a good person, such as criticizing another man about how he treats his own wife. The implication is that he would never do such a thing. Tell her, mister, and let's come back. Can we see her? And, uh, yeah, I'm hard of hearing, buddy. You gotta speak up just a little bit. Anyways, so once we rolled into JB Long, we went through Logistics Gate, exit 123. I texted her and I was like, hey, I'm on JBLM. And um, she told me she was on her way to come get me. And I was like, oh, well, you might want to wait a minute because it's going to be a few hours. Because I have to turn on my SI and I have to clear my truck and I have to clean everything real quick. It's going to take probably about two and a half, three hours. But she already knew that because she'd done that. Um, so she drives in anyway, she's really excited to see me. She parks at my uh, CP, which is pretty much my building that I work in. Anyways, so I remember I got all my stuff out and I like, quickly, I was like the first guy, I ran all of my stuff over my truck and I jumped my truck and I, I gave my wife a kiss and she just had the biggest smile on her face and I was just trying not to smile too big because I still had to go back to work. and Gosh, I miss her so much. She was wearing probably more makeup than she usually wears, but. It's fun. Um, anyway, so I went and did my work. Whatever, I turned some SI, I turned my weapons, and that's why I say I cleared M4s that day. I cleared M4s today. I probably I cleared exactly four of them. Four of them. I cleared my two, and then I had a buddy turn them in. He didn't clear them right, so I cleared them and I gave them to the armorer. And um, just turned in my M4s, turned my 240s, turned in my fucking my more tubes. Finally, I get out. We have a little conversation with the company commander. We have the first sergeant there, and we have uh, everybody from our platoon that said, "Don't drink, don't drive." Or I mean, don't drink and drive. Don't beat your wife. Don't beat your kids. Don't beat dogs. And if you have a problem, call one of us for help. Whatever. And I was thinking to myself, well, I'm just gonna. And you know, I heard there was some talk about the platoon. They're all gonna go to Hooters and they're all gonna drink beer or whatever, get and bottomless fries or whatever, and I was just seeing myself. And I actually text my buddy John, because he was seeing what I was doing, and I was just saying, well, I'm just gonna stay at home tonight, hang out with my wife. I think, I think exactly the words I said, I was just like, just gonna hang out with my wife, eat some pizza, watch some TV, just relax. So, anyways, texting that, that this is like while I'm, this, yeah, so, Anyway, so I get off work, we're driving home, we're just talking, whatever, just talking about how I was doing. She was excited because she told me she shampooed the carpets and she really wanted me to see him because I got a hound dog and uh, when he was like younger, he used to like pee on the carpets and like I was gonna be like, oh my God, and like stain the carpets and stuff. And, um, I we were always talking like, oh, we should go get a, carpet shampoo or whatever and like so when I was gone she borrowed one from a girlfriend named Carrie anyways so I got home we got home together 
and she helped me carry my stuff up. We put it on the porch because it was kind of stinky. I hadn't washed any of the stuff in a few weeks. And I went out on the porch, shut the dogs out. They all came. I have a little, uh, it's about a year and a half year old, little like, little mutt, little tiny dog. It's a little lap dog, but a little cutie. And then I got a, about an eight month old uh, black snout hound dog. And that's like my buddy. He's like my cuddle monkey. And um, so I said hi to the dogs. They were so excited they peed in my boots. Mm. And um, yeah, did that. Hung out with the dogs for a little bit. I came back inside. We sat on the couch. We were just we just kind of talked about how her work was going or whatever. And what I was interested, like, because I hadn't seen what she actually does for work yet. They must continues to give too many unneeded details. Talking about how excited his dogs were doesn't make him seem more honest and open. Because she kind of she got the job kind of in the transition of me getting ready to go out to Yakima. So she actually has only had this job for about four and a half, five, like probably five weeks. So I was kind of just interested and uh, she was telling me about that. And um, Anyways, went, so I was like, oh yeah, well, why don't you show me and went into the bedroom and, or the computer room and she was showing me some of the, a couple of videos she put together. And uh, she likes to, she used to cheerlead and she likes to cheerlead. So uh, she was showing me some videos of some stuff she'd recently done a few weeks ago before I left of a, a guy we know back home that traveled up, travels around and he helps like flyers be cheerleading. Anyway, so I was watching a video and I was like impressed like with, with what she was doing. I was, I, I don't know what it was, I was just, today, when I got home, I just felt, I don't really like apartments, you know, but like today, for some reason, just being around my wife and my dogs, and the house is clean, she was working, she was busy, you know, I just felt really good, like, I, today was a good day, I just felt really good, I was, once again, I was, this is the happiest I've been in a while, and I just, great day, so we were sitting there, we're talking, and, um, one thing led to another, we're cuddling, and then we end up uh, having sex. And um, after that, we go, um, we, uh, I go take a shower, because I still haven't showered until like last night, I've only taken like two showers, I've literally only taken like two showers in the last like 20 some days, so. It was we had sex and then I took a shower and um, she rinsed off real quick I think but she didn't get her hair wet and um, yeah we went out after that went out to the living room because I during like right before we had sex I ordered a pizza through the Domino's app mm -hmm. right when I got home and uh, so we on that and pretty much right out after I got out of the shower I put on some clothes and immediately the person was there with the pizza or whatever got some food. We uh, brought it in, put it in the kitchen. I remember, and uh, right when I brought the food in, for some reason, like my hound dog was just really excited. For some reason, I brought it in the kitchen. He he's potty trained now, but for some reason, I don't know if he was so excited to see me. But I brought the food in the kitchen. He peed on the carpet because he was so excited. He was like howling and like groaning and stuff. I remember. You know, I don't hit my dog, so I was like, oh, well, you gotta go outside now. So I put him on the porch for about 15, 20 minutes, and um, during that time, me and my wife went and sat on the couch, and I was watching the movie G.I. Jane on AMC. I think it was AMC. And, um, anyways, we watched that for a little bit, and I was just kind of zoning out, and she had gotten me that um, cinnamon alcohol, whatever it is, and um, she'd made me a little drink of that, and it was like some, uh, whatever, I had like that, it was like a little dash of that, and I had some, some Red Bull because I was about to pass out, but I really wanted to talk to her, so I was like drinking a bunch of Red Bull. Anyway, so we were cuddling on the couch, just watching the movie after we ate, and I was like, oh, well, why don't you go work on your work or whatever, so, you know, when I get tired, I'm going to go to bed, so, because I still got to work tomorrow, I have, to be, I have to be there at 9 in the morning, I got a late call, so I don't have to go to PT, but I still have to be there, 
And uh, she's okay, so I'll be work for like an hour, call some clients, I'll be done. Yeah, speak up again, buddy. I said, I'll go, she's like, okay, well, I'll go call some clients or employers. I don't remember what she said, but, and then uh, I'll be done. We can go lay down, go to bed. So she goes and does that. Or she goes in there, and then she's there for like maybe a couple minutes, and then she goes like, hey, and she goes. I see her walking into the bedroom. She grabs that. It's a it's a AR-15 rifle, and it has like blue on it because she likes the color blue. And she brings it into the bedroom. She's like, hey, can you put this away? We don't need it anymore. And um, I'm like, yeah, but I kind of just say it off from the corner of my eye because I'm watching TV and just kind of zoning out because I'm so tired. And my root, my hound dog Ruger is laying with me. And uh, so about like 20, maybe 30 minutes later, like, oh my God, okay, I'll go do that right now because my dog was all bouncing around. So I get up and go do it. I walk into the, uh, I walk into the um, uh, office and um, the rifle's on the, on, the, on the bed and it's on the, it's on the blue blanket on the spare bed and um, I just got the magazine birdcage, so you know I'm me thinking maybe she didn't miss or whatever. It's probably still clear, so I um, take I take the it's a, like a thirty round magazine. I, I take it out of the birdcage. I put the weapon on fire, and I took the weapon out. My, I took the weapon on the um, buffer tube and one hand on the stock, and I hit it against my leg, like my thigh, because I was. That's just how I do it. Like I just I put the stock in my thigh. And I'm gonna jack the I'm gonna jack the charging handle. I'm gonna check the chamber. And I did it like this. So it was like level. And when I did that, it went off. And Were you directly behind her? Or I was I was directly behind her. And it was just I was directly behind her. I remember I came up in a room. I was like, oh, you're so cute. And I grabbed the rifle and I was about to clear it. And my little dog Cooper, my, uh, it's like a, the little rat terrier thing. He's sitting on the bed, just watching me, just looking at me. And um, it goes off, and I, I, didn't even, I didn't even know to think. I mean, I've never had a negligent discharge every on ranges, never like, and and. Um, I pretty much lost the raft. I didn't, my I was spinning. I didn't. <laughs> I I took the rifle and the hand, the rifle was still in my hands, and I um. And I looked at the rifle and I was like, "What the fuck?" And I looked at it and there was no magazine in it, and I was like, oh, "Obviously, there's a round in the chamber." I mean, that's an obvious fucking thought. Like, so I go into the bedroom. I go into the other bedroom because I see what just fucking happened. And I can't, I just, I just, I take the rifle and I throw it into the closet, into the, into the, um, mm -hmm. the, our bedroom closet. I throw it in there. I don't know why I threw it in there, but I did. I threw it in the bedroom closet. And, um, oh, when I first, I forgot the, the safe. When I first got home, um, before we had had sex or anything like that, I remember I walked into the bedroom because I was looking, I was just, right when I walked in, I took off my boots, I took off my ACU top, and I was walking around the house because it's so clean, and I was just looking around. And I noticed that my safe was unlocked. And I almost vividly remember locking it when I left. I vividly remember taking, before I left, taking the weapon out of the safe. And I didn't put the magazines I had next to the rifle, but they weren't in the rifle, in the closet. And um, it was, I remember locking the safe before I left. And when I got home, that was one thing I, that's why that tripped up, is the safe was unlocked. And I just pulled it right up and I was like, you, why is the safe unlocked? And I was, and then I asked her, uh, you know, who'd you have over with? I, I said, who'd you have over? And 
you know, well, did they met? Did they see your rifle? Did they mess around with anything? And she said, no, nobody touched anything. And I, I, as far as I know, the only person she had over was her friend Carrie, mm -hmm. which is a friend of mine's wife that lives on JB Lum on main post. And uh, I just thought, oh, well, I, vi I, like, I vividly remember locking it, but I, at that moment, I was just such an, I was just, well, I guess I messed up or something, or maybe she unlocked it and didn't remember, or I don't know. So I didn't think too much of it because everything was still in there. There was nothing missing, nothing was loaded. It was all in the same place. So, yeah, so I closed it and I locked it. And this is right when I got home. And then all that stuff I just told you that just happened. So, and then later on, after all that shit happened, and I threw the weapon in the uh, bedroom closet, and I didn't, I didn't know what to do. Like, did you call 911 right away? No, right when it happened, literally within, right after it happened, like there was smoke in the air. And my neighbor, um, he's, I think he's in the military also. He knocked on the door immediately. He was sat there for maybe a couple of seconds because I was just, I was just so, like, I didn't know what the fuck just happened. So. Do you remember what you told him? Yeah. Yeah, pro yeah, I think so. Right when that happened, he knocked on the door and I was like sitting there and I saw my wife's, I saw my wife's body in, the, in my office chair. And, um, I, I like froze because I, I can't believe, I couldn't believe that just happened. And, um, so, and then my senses came and I fucking, I went and answered the door and he was, he was wearing a white t-shirt and he was my next door neighbor. I remember Nemitz is still bringing up the fact that he asked his wife if anyone had been there handling their stuff. It is an odd question to ask and makes him sound paranoid. I remember him because I've seen him multiple times come, come back from work at the same time I do. And I remember he... He said, I, he, I think he said, I heard a gunshot and like, are you okay? What's going on? And I said, and I told him, no, it's not okay. I said, I said, no, it's not okay. I think, I think my wife, I, I said, my wife's hurt. And he said, I, is she okay? And I said, no, I think she's, I think she's gone. I think she's gone. Because when I saw her, she was, her body was, she wasn't moving. And She wasn't moving, and I called her name like at least twenty times, and she did not move. And I went, I went and grabbed her, and I, I tried to hug her. I tried to hug her, and I was saying her name, and nothing happened. I remember I grabbed her, and I put her face in mine. And I said, Danielle, 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 and um. I don't know what I couldn't. I, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't cry. I remember. I, was, I just thought to myself, "I'm such a bad. I'm such a bad person. I can't. I'm such a bad person. And I, I'm not even crying. And I, I was just saying to myself, "I'm. I'm evil. I. I'm evil. Like who? What did I? What did I do? Did I do something wrong in the past? Or did karma come in? Is God mad at me? Like." So that happened, and he came, and I remember I went, after he asked me those questions, I said, I have to talk to somebody, I have to, I have to talk to a cop or a sheriff, and I immediately said, I want to talk to my chaplain, because... Right. And we're going to, we'll make sure we get a hold of somebody for you, like that. The, um, one of the statements that we got initially, that uh, you might have just said that she shot herself cleaning her rifle. Is I what never somebody said, said that. that. Somebody okay. said that? Yeah. That, that, that's no, what it never said. happened. Okay. I, it was in my hands. Okay. It was in my hands. It was not our hands. Okay. And you're telling me it was, uh, it was an accident. You weren't mad at her? No, I was, no, I was Did not. You, I, I, I guess this is the point where I'm going to ask you some point like questions. Did you, were you mad at her and you shot her intentionally? No, I did not. Okay, and it was I an accident? Yes, it was an accident. I did not shoot my wife intentionally. I love my wife so much. It, I'm surprised that I, when he when when he came in, I actually like 
I don't think I fainted because I knew what was going on still, but my like my body just gave out. I just couldn't stand. Like I don't know if I was just it was the adrenaline or what it was. But when he came to the door and he was saying uh, my neighbor was standing at the door, I remember looking at him and I remember just thinking about it. Just finally, just like clicked what the fuck just happened, and my like my body just gave out. I, it wasn't fainting, but. Mm-hmm. Because I was still like a weight. Just the knees got weak. And my knee, down, right? my knees got weak. My body got weak, and I, I just hit the ground hard. And immediately, I, I was just thinking, why, why couldn't, why her, why, why her, why couldn't it be me? Like, how far away were you from her? You think? Um, let's just say, probably the width of this room. No, shorter than that, because if she was sitting at a desk. It's probably like five feet. So, yeah, can you describe it to me? So, if this is the room, you want me to draw it out? Or? Yeah, if you don't mind. So, I can kind of understand on the fresh sheet very, very well. Yeah, so I can kind of get an understanding of where you're at when the rifle went off and where she was at. <clears throat> The detectives have Nemitz sketch the layout of his home. Sometimes this can be used to show that someone is more familiar with a layout than they claim to, or to see if they deliberately leave out any details that might incriminate them. I'll move this door down a little bit. It doesn't have to be the scale, but just the yeah, okay. Well, so when you walk in, this is the front door right mm-hmm. here. You walk in, there's this little area, and there's like a, a little tiny, little, like 12 foot hallway right here. Anyways, so the rifle was right here. When if, and this is, I'm just trying to get straight to mm-hmm. when it happened. Anyways, walk in, grab the rifle. Take a mat, whatever. I was standing, probably. I was standing. I was in the room, but I was about right here. In the chair. And she. And she, this is a chair okay. right here, and this is where the desktop is. And she was mm-hmm. facing the desktop, and I was standing in the doorway. I or I was like, I was. Well, the bed comes out to like. It's kind of a big bed for that little room. So the corner, like right when you walk in the corner, of the bed's like right next to you. And there's like a little tiny slot in between the closet and the bed that the safe like barely fits in by like mm-hmm. a half an inch. So I, I, you know, I grabbed that and whatever and I cleared it and or I failed. I was, probably about, I was probably about five feet away. Okay. Well, on the computer, um, was she doing her work or was yeah, she talking she, to somebody? No, did she was you, on the Did you see the message on the computer? Uh, what? Did you see the message on the computer? There was a message on the computer? I'm asking you, did you see a message on the computer? No, I mean, when I when I walked in, I thought she was on granite transformations. Right. Nothing that would indicate that there that she had a uh, boyfriend or anything like that? No, like, no, She wasn't I having never, an affair? Never, never that. saw anything like no, that? No, 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 no. Well, are you insinuating that? No, I'm just asking just because, asking. I, uh, I, you know, I'm not at the scene. I didn't go to the scene. I came yeah, straight no, here no, to meet nothing, you. Nothing from what I saw or anything led to me to think that she was cheating on me in any way. So there was no jealousy issues? There was no jealousy well, that's issues. What you know, sometimes when jealousy happens, it makes you act irrational for a split second. And you do I something that you normally wouldn't do. Um, but that wasn't but no, the case. Yeah, that wasn't the case. And I remember when I walked in, I told her, "Hey, you're cute." 
I was like, oh, you look cute. Okay, so she wasn't like Facebook in or? No, I, I'm almost positive. I remember seeing the, the Granite thing, so I'm almost positive she was like Granite Transformations yeah. or company website. But not like, there's not somebody that she would be talking to there, Granite, that, that she may like or something or that liked her. I mean, she's only been working for about four or five weeks. I would. How long has she lived wanna, here? She's lived here as long as I have. She moved in in about the late, late March of 2013. How's she doing adjusting to living up here in Washington? I know some the first couple months hard. were a little hard, and I remember right when we got here, I took her to Seattle to kind of get a little taste of what Seattle was like. And mm -hmm. my family's actually my mom's side of the family's actually from here. They're from Renton in the uh, okay. Seattle area, and we actually have a a beach house up in Commando Island up mm -hmm. north. Anyways, so you know, me and her, we go there. We go hang out with my grandma. We have. She's very good friends with all my family. I mean, she tech, she talks to my family. Mm -hmm. Even though know, I tell her I, I, she doesn't need to or whatever, like, but she does. She's very good friends with my grandma, and my aunt. They're all cooks, and you know. Um, but no, no issue ever in your whole relationship of her ever having a boyfriend, or you ever having a side girlfriend. No, I have never, and she knows that I've never done anything with another woman. Has she I've ever? Never even talked to another woman. Has she ever had a boyfriend other than you, like since you guys been together, or she kind of likes somebody a little bit and make you upset and jealous? I mean, she had an ex-boyfriend like a like right when we first like moved up here. That but that was like from like two three years ago. Mm -hmm. But you didn't see anything where she was I, communicating I, with him at all. Not that. Nothing that would make you upset. Mm -hmm. No, um, but I had met him before we'd move up to Washington and they were still they were friends but I remember seeing him because he worked at a Safeway back home and there was nothing there was no issues I remember they were friends and I think I knew him beforehand because of no. school no. but I didn't there was no issue um, again like my one of my best friends that I grew up with since I was you know like elementary school was uh, her cousin so you know and I you know because I knew her family before I actually knew her I've known her family for a long time since I was a little kid I didn't meet her until I was about so Scott, let me tell you about what's going to happen just so you know yeah. is uh, and uh, what we're doing is because this is a, 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 a death investigation uh, we have to do a is, a, it, is this she's she's gone, she's gone. Um, they're doing a search warrant of the premises and they're going to include the computer and uh, get all that stuff off the computer. Mm -hmm. So if there's anything in there that uh, it, you might have seen that would indicate that that she was having an affair or anything that made you upset and jealous or that you intentionally did this, we're going to find that. And I'll just mm -hmm. tell you that it's always better to come up front and say whatever the facts are yeah. Uh, instead of us finding it later yeah. and I'm not trying to paint you into a corner I don't want you to say something that wasn't true but I do want you to tell me the truth and I want to make sure that we cover every aspect of this okay okay I'm telling you the truth uh, if, if she was talking to anybody I wouldn't know about it because I don't I, I'm not that I'm not a snooper I don't snoop around like I trust my wife mm -hmm. I really do I trust my wife and if, if she was I'm telling you right now I would not know about it I'd be really disappointed to find that out, but... Hey, Scott, I'm not saying, in fact, that she was. I'm just saying that if you had that information and it mm -hmm. upset you, and you, uh, just out of the pure passion of just anger and frustration, you did something that you're going to regret, then you need to tell me now, because we're going to find that. She, then we may not find anything uh, there. There may not be that evidence there. However, if it was there, our computer guys that are a hell of a lot smarter than I am are going to find mm -hmm. that stuff. And so if there's something that you saw, this is your opportunity is what I'm trying to get to you, Skylar, okay. so go ahead and tell me. I mean, and, you, and, and we'll go from there. I'm not trying to uh, talk bad about your wife or any of that. I'm just saying if there was something there, you need to, you need to get it, tell me now because this is okay. your opportunity. Yeah, on the computer, I've never done, I barely even used a computer. I remember there was one time way back on her cell phone. I remember I was, I just had a really bad dream that she had, she had talked to some guy or something. I remember I woke up and I looked on her cell phone and I was looking, I, I opened it up and I looked at her text messages and her only text messages were to like me and her sister, Ashley. Mm -hmm. And um, 
out, you know, I wish you back to but I, I'm... What's your cell phone number? My cell phone number is... And what's her phone number? Hers is 707. Okay, hold on, 95. Okay, it's yours? Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure I didn't hear you wrong. Yeah, it's okay. pretty similar. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I don't... I'm telling you the truth. I don't know anything. And he, here's a, but I have a question too. Mm -hmm. If there was something that popped up, why would I get in trouble for that? I mean, well, I, I'm just saying that what it does is, is uh, uh, it kind of shows motive for something that looks kind of bad. You're you're what we would call somebody that's uh, um, uh, not a novice by any means, but more into the expert of uh, handling guns. You have 15 guns in your home. You uh, are in the military and you use M4s all the time. And you have a DPMS, which isn't a cheap old uh, throwaway pistol or rifle. It's a pretty quality gun. And to uh, put it on your leg and it, um, you know, put it, the weapon accidentally on fire, not clearing it with your expertise, and then a round is discharged hitting your wife in the head. This is uh, that doesn't look good. So there would, if there was something that was there, that would kind of understand what's happening. You know what I mean? And that's what I'm asking you. Is there a lie detector you can hook me up to? Absolutely, we can do something like that. It's called a CVSA. But what I'm trying to get at is. And you may not be some, but the thing is, I don't, don't mean to disrespect you by calling you some, but I'm just, I'm old, so it's easy for me to do that. But what I'm, what I'm saying is, is that giving up information now is your best opportunity, uh, to, it, it absolutely helps you. If we find stuff, then and the physical evidence in the house isn't quite matching your story exactly. As we keep seeing, I get a text and stuff. It's not actually happening by physical evidence the way that you're indicating it. So I want to make sure 100%. Not how it is how I'm saying it? Yeah, yeah, it would 100%. And, and that's sometimes that's explainable. However, I want to I want to give you every opportunity every absolute opportunity to tell us the truth my partner and i want want we only want the truth we, we don't he and i never accuse anybody we're not talking bad about your wife we're not talking bad about you we just want to find out the truth and sometimes what happens scholar is that people do they, the way they want it doesn't matter if they do it intentionally or subconsciously they always want to shine the light brightest on them so it makes it look like hey it really wasn't my fault Everybody does it. He does it. I do it. We all do it. Life, right? We do that. We always shine the light brightest on ourselves, even when we admit some fault. We all. But the, the fact is, is if there was something going on, you found out something, and you were angry, and this happened. Now is the time to say it. That's that's what I'm trying to get at. I want to make sure that you you understand. You need to talk to my partner and I right now. This is your opportunity where we can help figure this out, get it all square, and then. You know, uh, unfortunately, your wife uh, has passed, and we want to make sure that we we're here for her memory, right? That's what our job is. Is we want to make sure that everything is done right for her. Yeah. Can I go to the bathroom first, and then you can ask? Do you need to go to the restroom? I've had to go since I was in the in the car. Yeah, but what, one second. You got, can you have your city phone? I okay. don't. Mine's in there. Can we take a photo? Can you stand up and photograph you? And I'm gonna collect your clothes and hand you this. Uh, Do you want to um, just put them on the wall? Uh, sales I'll, no, they're not. You can ask yeah. more questions. Yeah, yeah, I, I will. I just need to take these pictures real quick for you. Okay. So just stand right here. Look at look at me. My buddy's gonna be the photographer. He's the I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do like a 360 around you, okay? Well, actually, I can't go around the room, so it's small. I'm gonna just stand next to you. Just step right here a little bit. Okay. For a second, right. I want you to hold both hands out like this. I think that's why I would have been in this room. That's okay. Sorry. Yeah, uh, I don't want to see this from hands a little bit closer together. Bring it to the right there. Okay, then roll them. Put them a little bit closer together. There you go. Okay, I'm gonna get a close up on your face if you just turn sideways for me. Is there blood on my face? A little bit. Just, just turn back towards me. Turn 
back towards me. There we go. Nemitz shows a willingness to take a lie detector test, and the detectives agree before beginning the process of taking photo documentation to be processed as evidence. I can then paste them online this. And then just let me check real quick, make sure I got everything. Are you an armor as well? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, cool. What? Hmm? I just was wonder because you're, you're pretty knowledgeable about guns. I'm I'm one of the firearms instructors here, so I, I got when you're talking about guns, I could tell that you. Can I show you should, something? On yeah, just hang one second. Okay. Yeah. Um. Uh, actually, I need you to do it on another sheet of page. Okay. Well, in the in the. Um, oh, uh, you want to show me on this? Yeah. I was gonna find out. Okay. When you walk in this bedroom that it happened in, mm -hmm. if you look inside this closet, there's um, just some other stuff I have. I have like, cause like one of my hobbies, and on top of it, there's like a little armoire with a TV. Mm -hmm. I have like uh, AR-15 parts, cause that's like one of my hobbies. I'll build AR-15s from scratch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's like probably enough to build a couple in there. And there's, um, there's, I have like TA-50 in there from work in there. And then I have- What's a TA-50? It's just like, you know, your pouches, your mm -hmm. duffel bags, bags, whatever they assign you for the military. Are you supposed to have it? You're a little nervous about that because you know weren't supposed to have it? I don't, no, no, I'm, I'm supposed to have that. I'm supposed to have it inside my house. But most of that is actually on my porch right now because I brought- Yeah, we have officers standing by there. Don't worry about that. With my ruck and all that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll square okay. that away. But that's what they'll like, oh, that take. Real quick, for since we're all sitting home. So you said you put it against your. Okay, so. Can you, can you demonstrate just how you, how you did it? Were you, did you right squat hand, down or were you? No, I was just okay. like this. Like if, if you were. So, so Daniel was over here. She's facing the computer. Uh -huh. I went like this and I had the stock like this and I went like that. Like my this hand was on the buffer tube and this hand was on the foregrip. It has an angled fork on it. And I was holding it and I went like this and I hit it on my thigh. And when I did that, I don't know what happened. But like, I don't know if like, I don't know how the hell it happened, but with the end beforehand, the weapon, I had it on fire. When I hit it against that, it went off. Can you raise your pant leg up? Is there, you hit it hard enough to just no, put I didn't, the, I didn't the mark? It. I didn't you don't fall that. down. I mean, just raise it up, whatever. That's blood right there. Did you have your shorts on or you just had your own? No, I had my shorts on. Hang on real quick. Let me grab okay, it. Okay, drive down like for a second. No, go ahead and leave your shorts. I don't know where that's from. What? Leave, leave, how are they normally? You don't know. I mean, keep those on. Put your underwear. You don't have to pull your underwear out. Okay. Right there. there you go. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. All right. I'm going to stay right there for a second, but I do uh, get a paper sack real fast. Okay. Well, I see my wife, uh, no, not right now, but so there's a lot of there's a lot of things. Like I said I know this is probably rough night for you, but there's a lot of stuff going on right now and a lot of things that we gotta get through. I'm sorry. Keep me I have to apologize. This is my job. This is what I do. So, so. I really do respect like, the police and respect the government. I don't know why this, this is this isn't supposed to happen to me. Okay, so what we're going to do, uh, Scott, is I want you to put all your books in here, all of them, and I'm going to hand you this Tyvek suit. So I don't want the video to see your butt, so move over here and I'm going to stand in front of you. Go ahead. Take me. Put that on. You got to put your legs in first. Put your legs first, yeah. All right. 
my uh, uh, none of the is going to take you to use the restroom right here, and my partner and I are going to be right back. You need something to drink? Yeah. Some water or something? Soda or something? It's just water. Okay. I'm going to take a walk. I'm going to go down here and put you in the bathroom, okay? We'll be right back with you. Okay. I'll get some water. Go over there. So, what I want you to do is go right over there and have a seat in that chair. Am I just being left in here? Huh? Am I just being left in here? Just, yeah, yeah, for a moment, I'll, 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 I'll. Now that his clothes have been taken, Nimitz will be given a CVSA, which is hardly accurate, but it can still be used as a tool to observe a suspect who thinks the readings may be indicating their guilt. All right, stand fast and both those detectives will be right back in here with you, okay? sure we're figuring everything out um, there's a few things that uh, uh, we'll have to clarify again and go through okay we want to make sure that uh, we do this for your wife um, Danielle yeah I know, I, know. Right. I wish I had, uh, had the opportunity to meet her so I could feel comfortable calling her by her first name but uh, you guys are just a couple years older than my kids so I I, uh, I feel for you I do we want to make sure we figure out the right thing, right? It's pretty important that uh, we get all the information initially that we can. Um, so we don't want to wrongly accuse anybody of anything or, or miss something in, in that aspect either. Probably get in trouble anyways, no matter how I tell the story. Well, so people handle these things. You know, if you watch TV, you, I can see why you'd say that. But in real life, it's different. In TV, they figure shit out in 30 minutes. If I work through, even if I work through the commercials in 30 minutes, I can't figure it all out. It's going to take some time. We have to, we have to go through that. We got to figure out exactly where you were standing, where the uh, bullet struck your wife, um, why it did, all those things. You know, the computer is still intact, so they'll be able to find that. Go we'll go through that. We'll go through the phones and stuff like that. Part of that search warrant, we'll, we'll look through phones and make sure that, you know, and I'm not accusing you of doing something wrong, but, but what I want to say is is that it's not all adding up to the, the physical evidence right now. What the kind trajectory. Story, what kind of story like this would add up? Who, well, who one is that it's happened to. Uh, it, well, it depends. If you're asking who does it happen to if somebody intentionally killed their wife or does it by accident? It doesn't happen that often accidentally. It doesn't mean that it's not. It just means that it hasn't happened that often. 
there's some uh, some issues with uh, bullet entrance and bullet exit in the, the where it's at and where you're saying isn't quite li lining up you know I want to make sure that I'm understanding where I'm standing. you where you're standing where the trajectory of the round you understand trajectory of rounds you're yeah. a gun guy yeah you know that right yeah. so some of those things just don't quite add up scholar can you explain but which way did, was it which barrel do you remember it was the barrel it was up the was weapon was down the weapon was, was level with the ground as, level as far as as far as I can remember, the weapon was level. So the weapon was level ground. So how tall are you? About five seven. About five seven. Yeah. And so, so when I hit that, that, when I took that thing and I hit it right here, and so was it here or was it your thigh? I don't remember. This is why I need I need like time to like just relax and yeah. there's, there's a lot for me to handle. Sure, sure. But we but we gotta we gotta figure this out. Yeah. And um, so the weapon. So which way do you think the I, muzzle? I thought it was on my thigh. Mm -hmm. it, it was the detective has given Nemitz a subtle warning. All of the electronic devices will be searched, and they will be able to find things that he may have believed to be well hidden. So I remember, I remember how it went off. I hit it on myself. Mm -hmm. Was think, your finger on the trigger? No, I I can't remember if it was or not. I don't think it was. You don't think it was because you don't want it to be, or because in probably fact? Could, probably because I don't want it to be, but it might have been. Yeah. It might have been even though I don't want it to be. I, I fucked up. Yeah. Are you a good soldier? I'm, I try to be as good as I, I want to be an NCO. I want to lead soldiers. I'm a good, you can ask anybody I work with. I'm a good, I'm a good quality guy. We work, I'm not the guy that's going to sham at work. I'm going to bust my ass if I have to, like that. I'm not gonna leave one of my buddies behind to go do a detail by himself. I'm good. I try to be a good soldier, at least as I think so. I try to be. I try to be nice to everybody I work with too. You've been nothing but polite to me, man, and I appreciate that. Yeah. And I hope that we're, we're showing you the same respect. Yeah. Cause you're a quality uh, professional soldier. As far as I can tell myself. Yeah. And how long have you been in the army? I joined November seventh, two thousand twelve. And uh, so, oh, December. Uh, that was my first day. My yeah. first day in the U.S. military was November seventh, two thousand twelve. Yeah. And what rank are you? I'm an E four specialist. E four. And uh, are you testing for your E five soon? I was hoping to. I become eligible in um, yeah, in about like middle of January of two thousand fifteen. I became eligible to get my E five. But I've been studying for the last three months already. Yeah. Is that and something you want to be? You want to be a professional I soldier? That's I want to be in the military the rest of my life. I got nothing else going for. That's what I like. I just like it. It's too. It's too easy. It's too easy of a job for me. It just to me, it just comes too easy. Yeah. And it's fun. Was it an easy life for your wife? Yeah, she. I th that's what I was getting at earlier. Is at first. When we first moved to Washington, I think because of her, it was her first kind of time being away from family and just with me, it was a little hard. So I took her out to Seattle. Yeah, kind of said, just, yeah. Yeah, get used to kind of just watching and drove around a little bit. But after that, I mean, for the last like year, we've just been really good, like really good. And she want to make the army a, a career. Yeah, I told I I would tell her about hey you know I'm thinking, I'm gonna re up you know maybe we can go somewhere different maybe we can go maybe we we talked and I really wanted to go to Italy because I wanted to go airborne mm -hmm. or I wanted to go and I want to go to ranger school too. And you want to be a ranger? I I wanted to go to ranger school. Is that what you want? Don't want to go. I mean you may yeah, go. I, I mean I that's what you want. Do you want to be a ranger? That's something I want to do. I want to go to ranger school. And you know I told her that and she was very supportive of that fact. You know, I told her, oh, well, you know, sometimes schools can be from 10 days to, you know, three months. And she she's fine with that. And I'm fine with that, too. I trust her. She trusts me. I love her very much. I know she'll be there when I get back. So, um, and you're sure that's the life that she wanted? As far, the way she told me, and she used to, when I, whenever I leave, she texts me. And actually, if you look, if one of those people look at my phone, that text will still be there. The one that she sent me the other day it is about three text messages long. Just how much she loves me, how much she supports me, she would do anything for me. And 
I really know I was really busy when she sent me that. It was I think it was like later at night. I remember I was really busy, and I couldn't I couldn't say much. So I, you know I said oh, I love you. You know thank you. And um, but I kept thinking about it, and I was just like oh she, you know this this girl is I love her so much. She she's more support than I could find. And when I first joined the military, my parents weren't very supportive of that. You know, just parents in general, I guess. I don't know, if, just not very supportive. And you know, I, I had, I'd been with her for a while and she was very supportive of it. And she still, want, she wanted to stay with me. And we've been talking about, you know, just staying together for a while. And we ended up getting married. And, you know, and then she had the struggle moving over there. And then, but then she got used to it and we just really did. That's her family. Nemitz had big dreams and says that Danielle was supportive. Not only had Danielle dropped out of high school to marry him, but she also allowed Nemitz to control what jobs she chose. What are you going to say about your guys' marriage? Um, well, her family is really... Um, her mom died when she was about two years old from a disease. I can't remember what disease it was. I think it might have been cancer or it was something... It was a weird, it was a weird, I can't remember what it's called. Her mom died when she was very young. Okay. Before so she didn't really who remember. Who in her family she has constant so, contact And her with. dad wasn't around her entire life. So she I was ended up raised by her stepdad, Michael, mm -hmm. and her grandma, his dad, or his mom, I mean. Um, and it was in her grandma that she grew up with. She died when she was like, 14 because I remember seeing it in the newspaper and it was a family friend because I was friends with her cousins mm -hmm. and um but she has a sister Michaela that I don't know if you want to ask that. she has a sister Michaela and she's hey. 17 or 18 yeah she has contact with her do I have contact? No, does she? Is Danielle? Yeah. Yeah, they, they stay in contact. Her and Michaela don't get very much along because Michaela... Well, so would she know? Would Michaela know if, if Danielle was having an affair? I don't think so. But she hasn't... Uh, she has another... My Danielle has another sister named Ashley. Mm -hmm. And she just got married about two and a half, three months ago. And she went on honeymoon to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And she... They talk? Yeah, they talk all the time. She actually talked to her today when I got home and she actually was uh, doing the FaceTime or whatever mm -hmm. it is. And she came into the room when I was laying on the couch. And Danielle did and she was all excited because I was home and she was FaceTiming Ashley, her sister. And I was like, oh, don't FaceTime me. I'm, re I'm really tired because I was about to pass out on the couch. And this was right before So on that computer, there's a couple things that um, I want to ask you again about in that computer. And um, this FaceTime desktop, desktop. Uh, if there's a laptop, desktop, uh, whatever tab, whatever to do on the phones. Was there ever a time that you found a message or you believe that she was ever having an affair on you? This, this is super important because I, I just we're out there talking to some other detectives and stuff. The trajectory of that round doesn't make match up from the entrance to the exit wound. Doesn't add up to what you told us. Okay, so what I want to make sure. What it says is it doesn't add up to what you told us. So what I want you to do is make sure you're telling me the right thing. Yeah. If you saw that, she, you're a gun dude, man. You got gun parts there. You can build okay. an AR. You, when I when I round off, I thought it was on my thigh. It, I think it might have even been on my breast or my shoulder. I don't know. I remember that round went off. I'm. I know. Don't. <laughs> When you give well, me that look, it makes me we're just, myself. We're, we're just, we gotta sit there and we gotta make sure. So we've gone through a couple different things. It was on your thigh, it was in your chest, and that might have been on your shoulder, your finger was on the trigger. Yeah. And, you, and you and I both know guns don't go off unless your finger's where. No, I'm totally, yes. Right, right. Yes, it's, it's got, something's gotta pull that trigger to make that gun go off, right? Not yeah. always. I've, I mean, I've heard, yeah. I've heard well, them force me off from the, if you hit the stock pretty If you hit the stock pretty hard. I've heard of them going off. But it has to be something harder than a thigh. It has to be hard ground, concrete, right? It wouldn't just go off from being slammed into your shoulder, right? I don't know. I mean, so, take it, take I told a second. you about the alcohol hey, this, drink. This, no, right. just, just listen to me for a yeah. second, okay? I want you to focus on this because when I start talking about something, you want to change the subject, okay? So I want you to think about this, okay? And think really hard. Was the gun on your shoulder and was your finger in the trigger well? Did you pull it up here and you're going like this? I was it? not aiming down the sights. I know for well, no, I'm not saying you're aiming it. You know how you hold the gun like this? It's yeah. already, right? Yeah. Racked around now, right? 
So, I mean, could that have been how you were doing it? Can you remember? Or were you doing it down here? Or down here? I think it was on your shoulder. It was on your shoulder. Yeah. Okay. But I know the magazine was not in the weapon. The magazine wasn't in the weapon. But there was a fucking bullet in the chamber. That's obvious. Wow. And so this you is have the to attack me with this. No, no, I'm not why attacking you, man. I understand that, son, and I'm trying to figure out why. And so far, your story's changing a little bit, and it, and I'm concerned about that because if you were pissed off, if you're just really mad, and you pointed the gun and you pulled the trigger out of a, a, just a, a, a fit of, of passion or a rage, that's one thing. But to sit there as a professional soldier uh, and lie to me, that's another thing. That makes you two categories. One guy that had a fucking uh, split second of a stupid mistake or of anger versus a guy that's a calculated murderer. And I want to figure out which one of those you are. I'm not, I'm not a murderer. Okay, so this is the, the facts of life, son, is that, Skylar, your wife is gone, and, and I know that's not... Uh, and that Nimitz is becoming more defensive and accuses the detectives of attacking him with the bullet in the chamber. The detective has merely stated a fact about the case. That's a bad thing. And now, what I want to try to figure out is if you intentionally shot her in the back of the head, or if, you, if it was an accident, or if you were just really pissed off and you were just saying, damn it, and you had the gun right there, and you're five feet away, and you pull the trigger, and then you go, oh, fuck, now what did I do? Mm -hmm. And I want to figure out what happened. The weapon, I'm almost, okay, I think it was on my, on my middle of my chest or my shoulder. It was up high, okay? My, my hand, it might have, I don't remember if it was, that's the thing I do not, I think it, okay, I think it was in the, it was, most likely it was on the fucking, it was on the fucking trigger, because that fucker went off, okay? But I'm telling you, I, there is no anger towards my wife at all. There is no anger. I was Were not, you playing with the gun, and you just, was, you no. pull the, the magazine out, and you go click, because you thought it was going to go click, and it went bang! Is that the difference? Is that what we're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, it went off. And I, I know it went off, but did you intentionally pull the trigger and it went off because you were fucking with the gun, playing with it, and you stuck it to the back of her head and you pulled the trigger and you didn't I know that the... stuck it to the back of her head. Okay, so tell me what happened. The, I was holding the weapon. I took the magazine out, okay? I was, for some reason... Okay, I took the fucking magazine out, I put the weapon on fire, and I pulled the trigger, okay? Because I thought the weapon was clear already. Because it just imprinted in my mind, I thought the weapon was clear because I never chambered it, and I never thought she touched it. And there was, there was, the magazine wasn't in the mag well. So, I, it made me think, why the fuck would there be a brown in the fucking mag, or in the fucking chamber? So, whatever, I took the round, the, I had the rifle, I pulled the fucking trigger when I was on fire, and it went off, and it struck my, my wife in the back of the head, and it killed my wife. It did. You're exactly right, Skylar. Why? Why what? Why did, why did you have it pointed at her head and pull the trigger? I don't... What's the number I wasn't, one firearms rule? All firearms always loaded, right? I know, and... So what, what was your thought process for having the gun pointed at her head and pulling the trigger? I, 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 okay. The weapon... Can I stand up maybe? Sure, sure, absolutely. Go ahead, stand up. Okay. <clears throat> so I had the weapon. It was on the bed. I grabbed it. I need you to stand a little bit over there. Okay, okay sorry. Better. There you go. The bed was right here. I grabbed the weapon. I picked up the weapon. I went like this. I took the magazine out. I put it on the bed. I put it on fire, and I pulled the trigger. While the camera doesn't show Nemitz's full body, it is enough that you can see he wasn't holding it next to his thigh as he claimed earlier in the interrogation. And it went off, and I, it was on my shoulder. It was on my shoulder, it was on my breast. It was up high, it was around here. I don't know why I thought it was on my thigh, but that was just- You I, didn't think it was on your thigh. You thought the story sounded better, Skylar. I'm not a fucking uh, stupid guy, okay. and, and I don't want to be treated like I'm stupid. I got a little southern accent, so people right off the bat say, you're a stupid motherfucker. Let me I, tell you this, Skylar, sit your ass down. This is my fucking house. You put a gun to your shoulder, and you pulled the trigger with a gun aimed at the back of your wife's head, and you killed her. She's dead. That's a tragedy. That's a fucking tragedy. My, my biggest concern right now is, is this a tragedy by accident, or did you intentionally shoot your wife? And that's what we're going to find out. And I'm going to tell you, if I find a fucking letter or anything in there that indicates that she was having an affair, it don't look fucking good. So stop the bullshit. Don't say I initially thought. Don't fucking lie to me, man. I've been doing this job for 25 fucking years. People lie to me every goddamn day. 
I am a human lie detector test. Stop fucking lying. You with me? Right. Then you tell me, be a professional soldier, and tell me right now what the fuck happened. I'm tired of bullshitting you with you. I've been treating you with respect. I want to treat you with respect. I want to treat your wife with respect. She deserves that. She earned that. And you are going to provide that. With me? Right. Tell me what happened. I don't think she was having an affair at all. There's nothing that mind that was pop was on my mind. Okay, the weapon was on the bed. Took the magazine out of the weapon. The, the birdcage. Okay. Was it in the birdcage or was it in the, in the uh, um, magwell? It was in the birdcage. Okay. Then there was other magazines for the weapon, but it wasn't on the weapon. There was one magazine in the birdcage. Took the magazine out of the birdcage. I put the weapon on fire and I held it like this. I fired the weapon. Oriented at your wife's head. Yeah. Why would you orient that weapon to your wife's head? I don't. I really don't know. I really don't know. I don't know. Why would you go outside and I have a a? Nemitz has been around guns since childhood, and has had training in the army. One of the first, most basic rules of gun safety is that you do not point a weapon at someone, regardless of whether or not it is loaded. Nemitz has insisted over and over that he was very rigid about gun safety, so this level of mistake does not make sense. A written statement saying that you went outside and you told your neighbor that she was cleaning a hunting rifle and... I didn't and see she was cleaning anything. Two, two statements, your neighbor. She, they said it on the, on the scene and they came down here in a room similar to this and said the same thing. Are you, were you trying to cover up from a fuck up? No, I, I was... She was not cleaning. She was on the, she was on her, uh, our iMac on uh, granite, whatever her her fucking work that she works with. Okay, she was not cleaning anything. I was not cleaning anything. I got her from the couch that I was watching the TV from. I went to go, go I went to go get the weapon. I was gonna unload it and put it in my safe. I took the magazine out. Apparently, it was around the chamber, and I did not charge that weapon ever since I brought that weapon out of the safe before on the twenty seventh until now. I did not charge that weapon. So here's what's going on. Is we keep getting different stories and keep getting different versions, okay? Yeah. And so it seems like, to me, it seems like a cover-up. You're trying to cover it up. You're trying to make it not look so bad for you, okay? So we finally got it out that the weapon was on your shoulder and that you pulled the trigger, mm -hmm. okay? Why was it pointed at her head? Because you're a professional soldier. You know about firearms. not professional enough. Well, listen, you know about firearms. They're always loaded, right? Never point out an object you're not willing to destroy, right? Mm -hmm. Never put your finger on the trigger until you're ready to fire, right? So you basically violated all those things that have been imprinted in your head, right? Yes. I so did. why? Are you trying to, because here's the deal, if we figure out that there is an ulterior motive, that goes to premeditation instead of just a fit of rage, an act of jealousy. Now we actually have planning and concealment. Yeah, there was nothing planned. Um, what do you want me to say right now? Or what, what, I, what I, I want you to tell you me the truth. I, I just want to know why you violated all the firearm safety rules when you're a firearms guy. Because I'm a fucking idiot. I, I made I mean, one of those one in 10 million mistakes where I was a fucking idiot and I... I'm, I'm, I'm so the worst motherfucker in Washington were you, right now. Were you joking around? Was uh, it, were you there, having there an argument? No, there was no joke. So no joking. What was what was going on in the room that led you to point a loaded weapon, put it on fire, and pull the trigger? It was just spring. I literally dropped back immediately with my shoulder put it on fire, and then I, it, I think it went off when I was. Were you trying to scare her? Were you no, trying to no, replay around? I never do something. Else. I would. No, I wasn't trying to scare her. I was not trying to scare her. I think I was just moving a little bit too fast than I should have been moving when I picked up that weapon. So then why all the other stories before we got to this one? I, I think it might have just, I was, I don't know, I'm just fucked up because of what just happened. I'm, I'm fucking losing it. I mean, I get that, but hey, hey man, I fucked up. I put the gun on my shoulder. I, like the, the fire, I pulled the trigger. I don't know what I was thinking right off the bat, right from the get go. And not this big elaborate thing. Cause that's what it is concerning me is all these other elaborate stories. Mm -hmm. And it took us, what, a couple of hours to finally get the truth out of you? 
When we're not all the way there yet. I, yeah, we're missing that point. Why was it pointed at her head? I don't know. I, I think, I don't know why it was pointed at her head. I really don't. It was just, I, was, I think I was moving too fast for my own good, faster than I thought I could actually move when I was trying to clear that weapon myself. And... So you take the gun, the magazine out of the gun. You say birdcage, you know, I'm not sure. It may have been in the back of the So you charge, the weapon's charged, you say you don't, but you leave it for self-defense, right? Yeah, I Okay, so you leave a weapon for self-defense, but you don't know if she can charge it, because she, maybe she can, maybe she can't. Well, what fucking did, you might as well have left her a baseball bat if you didn't charge the gun for self-defense. Because if she doesn't know how to do it, the only thing she can do is hit somebody with it, right? So did you charge the weapon before? No. And so you're telling me she charged the weapon, she took the magazine out, she put the magazine in the, in the uh, birdcage, or there was a separate magazine somewhere throughout the house, which we will find, and you're going to tell me that one's missing around. We had, we have, there's multiple magazines around the house, because I'll go shooting, I'll just leave them, I'll put them in a basket, or I'll throw them under my bed in the spare bedroom, because I got random stuff. I'll put them on top of it. But, um... I did not charge the weapon. That's why I'm so curious as what the fuck was going on. Every gun's fucking loaded, man. I they, they tell every hey, dude. You know how many grunts are in the fucking army that they they have got the lowest IQ, and that's why they're grunts. The detective points out all of the ways that this story isn't adding up, and Nemitz is growing more and more frustrated. Right, and, and they've got to be able to teach those guys that every gun's fucking loaded until you verify it's unloaded. You're a gun guy, you've got gun parts you can build an AR. Your your own admission. I'm just assuming that you would at least know how to clear a fucking gun. And it should be by this point in your military career, and the fact that you've been shooting AR since you were eleven, shot your first gun when you were four, pretty good memory for an old factor. But all those things, you would think that would be ingrained in your fucking head to, to clear that weapon. And why in the fuck did you point it at the back of your beautiful wife's head? And on that point, we have other people watching, and they said, sometimes because we messed up, you said that you intentionally pointed it at her head, and I missed that. In this room, and it's on video, saying that you intentionally pointed the rifle at her head. I didn't intentionally point at her head. I, it was in the direction and I wasn't paying attention to what direction. I knew I was behind her. I knew that she was sitting at the desk, okay? And I knew that you know the rifle was pointing that direction. I just, I was not thinking straight and I just did it out of reaction just quick and I grabbed the rifle, cleared it, and grabbed it, bam, went off. And I did not intentionally Were you so Let's stop right there. Okay. Bam, it went off. You shouldered the fucking gun, put it to the back of your wife's head, and pulled the fucking trigger, and, and she died. Why Did you not? Know? I don't know why you would. That's why I'm asking you. That's why we're sitting in this interview room. That's why we're talking. I'm trying to figure that out because your wife deserves that respect. And if you tell me that you love her that much, then you got to give her that respect. You might have been in a fit of rage where you pulled that trigger and you killed her. Yeah. Because you were pissed off, but she deserves to know, we deserve to know that answer for her memory. Yeah. She deserves that. Okay. So tell me what the fuck you're pointing a gun at the back of your wife's head for. Tell me why. Don't give me no bullshit. Just man to man. Nut up and tell me why. I was not paying attention where I was pointing the weapon. And the weapon was pointing at the back of her head. You said a few minutes ago that you intentionally pointed at the back of her head. I did not intentionally point it at her. I intentionally had, in the spur of the moment, I intentionally had it in her vicinity. Which no, it was absolutely pointed at her. The proof is on the living or on the office floor. That's the big hang for her. Why? You're a gun guy. Why would you do this? Why would you clear, clear a weapon like that? I thought... It makes no sense. We're gun guys. We work around guns every day. And I have never yet cleared my rifle when it's pointed at the back of my head. I've never yet cleared any gun when it's pointed at my wife. So why? We 
get rage, we get passion, we get jealousy. That type of stuff we understand. That type of stuff we see every day, and that type of stuff makes sense. Mm -hmm. But when you have an expert in something... I wouldn't call myself an expert. Okay. Professional. With a weapon. And you make this one mistake and somebody ends up dead. It's just not making any sense. Do you see where I'm getting at? Yes, sir, yes, sir. And so we're gonna go and we're gonna look in the computer and we're gonna look and see if she was contacting somebody. And we're gonna look and see if maybe you saw something that you made you mad. And then we're gonna contact family members who she confides in and say what kind of a person you were. Mm -hmm. Or you can man up and tell us what happened. Okay. As far as I know, she has never talked to a man, another man besides me. And I am positive that I've even asked her before, hey, is, is everything okay? I know I was gone for about a month. You know, how your, I actually, today I asked her, I was like, how are your coworkers? They don't, they don't hit on you or anything. She's like, oh, no, 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 no way, no way. And, you know, so I didn't, I'm not going to double, I'm not going to second guess her. And in the past, I've never even thought about it. I've never had an idea that maybe she was, I never. I never thought she was, and I never think she is, and I still don't think she is. Okay. I don't know. But yet you still asked. I no, I didn't. I asked the way I asked probably sound like that because I because she has new coworkers that she's working with, and I asked her if any of them were maybe I don't know how to put this like pushing towards her, or maybe we're trying to hit on her or anything. I was just asking well, her. How did you ask her? You I asked, explain it to me. Just start, how did you ask her? What were the words you used? Nemitz keeps insisting that he wasn't jealous of his wife, but why else would he ask her if anyone was hitting on her, unless it was something she had complained about before? That isn't something anyone would be likely to come up with out of the blue. I asked her if her coworkers are polite and did they hit on you or anything? That's like exactly how I said it. Are your coworkers polite and how did they hit on you or anything? And that was it. And I was just asking her. And what she said? She said, oh, no, 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 they're all married. And she said I wouldn't. And they don't. And they're all, yeah, she's like, well, they're all married and I'm all married. And... <sighs> yeah. That was, to, yeah, I asked her that earlier, but nothing. And you know, I didn't even think, that was just like, just came up because I was wondering how her coworkers are. Because I'm, I'm just curious. She's curious if, you know, my people I work with are mean to me or I just want to see how she's being treated. So I asked her, you know, how are they? Do they hit on you or are they nice to you? What would you have done if she said, yeah, one guy's hitting on me. He's calling me three or four times a day. Well, I don't know. I've never run into that problem. So I well, what would you say? What if she would have said that today? Um, would it make you mad? I would have been upset, but I'm not. So upset enough to put a gun on her head and shoot her? No. No. I if that happened, I would not blame my wife for something like that. But well, what if she was calling him back? I'd probably leave. I'd probably go to post and I'd probably go stay in a room on post because there's free rooms on post that are in my in my battalion, and I and I've yeah I'm unfamiliar how the place that she can go, but uh, somebody that you love that you miss so terribly, yeah. and you're telling me that if she was calling some dude, you just say okay I gotta leave. No, I wouldn't just up and leave and leave like forever. I would, if if that was se okay, let's say this was a serious situation. And she was talking to somebody. I would you know like to know maybe some details about it, if it you know whatever. Well, what if she gave you some gory details to it? Maybe it was more than just talking to somebody. Would that make you so mad that you put a gun in the back of her head and shoot her? I'm asking you. She didn't do this. No, as I'm as asking you. To figure out because it doesn't make any sense. What you're telling me is a professional soldier does not make sense that a gun accidentally went off five feet from the back of your wife's head at a, at a angle with exactly with the floor that took us two hours to tell, for you to tell us that you shouldered a weapon and you pulled the fucking trigger. Okay. So I'm just trying to figure out your frame of mind, why you do something like that. Somebody that's got this experience that you have, that, on your own admission, why you would put a gun in the back of your wife's head and pull the fucking trigger. So I'm trying to get to the bottom of this, man. Scholar, I don't think you're a dumb guy, but I think you're sitting there thinking that fat fucker's a dumbass and I'm getting over on him. 
You, I have no problem with you guys. I don't understand what you think I do. I don't. I really have no problem. Because with you your guys. story doesn't make sense. There's a huge fucking gap in your story. You're detailed all the way through up until the point where we had to talk to you for two and a half hours to get you to realize that we're smarter than you think, and you shouldered the weapon because the fucking trajectory of that fucking round didn't match up. So immediately you changed the fucking story. That's about the eighth time you've done that. When your story eight about eight times, when your story doesn't make sense, and you hear it for the second second time and we bring something up, you change the story. I'm trying to figure out why you put a gun to the back of your wife's head and pulled the trigger. Because I took an oath to do my job, like you took an oath to do your job. And I'm going to do the damn best job I can for your wife, because that's part of my oath. I'm a homicide detective. Yeah. I have to speak for the ones who can't speak anymore, because somebody put a fucking gun in the back of their head and pulled the trigger. And I gotta find out why. Yeah. And you're sitting in this seat, not this seat. So this seat, you need to tell me why it happened so I can explain that. Because your wife, Danielle, she deserves that. I was, when I said earlier, you, I mean, I don't know if you wrote down, I said I was not looking down the sights. I was not looking down the bore of the weapon. I was looking Stop. at the weapon Stop. that happened. Stop. You keep changing the story when you realize. I'm just adding more details Stop. as I Stop. remember. Stop. 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 When you realize it's not working, you change your story. And so then we've got all, we finally got out that it was shoulder, you had your finger in the trigger, because we know guns don't go off without your finger in the trigger. We've gotten all that. We just haven't gotten to the why. And it's, and I can tell, no just, just no, no, man, no, just by sitting here looking at you, there's something on your chest and you wanted to get out. I can see it in your eyes. It's like every What's time, it, listen, stop, that, listen to me okay. just for a second, okay? Because every time you finally tell the truth, it's like a little bit of that pressure goes away. You feel a little bit better. And so we're just to the one part where I can see it's on you, man. It's weighing on your shoulders. And you just need to tell us. Mm -hmm. And get it over and get it done with. Okay? So you know we can had move on. We can take it on your shoulders. Shoulder. Yeah. And it's respect for her. Yes. Okay. The detectives are pressing harder, and their approach is much harsher than the friendly way they started the interrogation. They are trying to convince Nemitz that it is in his best interest to confess. I, I mean, you guys can call me out again. The weapon, earlier I said I was not looking at the sights. I was not looking down the board of the weapon. I was holding the weapon, and it was, it was up, up here. It was up level with the ground. It was up high, okay? I wasn't looking at the weapon. My finger was on the trigger, I put it to fire and I pulled it because I thought it was empty. Okay, because there wasn't anything in there and I hadn't chambered it. I knew I hadn't chambered it. Okay, so I thought it would just go click. Okay. So, and again, we keep going there. Okay. And so it's like we keep running into a stomach. We know that. How many times when you're downrange, when you're training, when you're on the range, have you ever put the weapon on fire to clear it, to make sure it's clear, and then pull the trigger? I mean, like, if I'm like at a range. If your range instructor is standing right there next to you and they tell you to clear that weapon, are you going to click it on fire, drop the mag, and I'm pull the drop, trigger? I'm going to drop the mag, make sure it's unsafe, charge the handle, and block the bolts to the rear, and then I'm going to turn it up inside so you can see it in my chamber. So the instructor can come by and see that, right? Yeah. So, and how many thousands of times have you done that? Too many to count. Too many to count. Okay, so that's what we get. Mm -hmm. Now we have your shoulder in it, putting it on fire and pulling the trigger when it's in close proximity to your wife's head. Oriented in her direction, and, and you know as a firearms guy, and we're firearms mm -hmm. guys, that you orient a weapon down there, it's it's going to go where it's oriented. It's not like you don't have to look down the fucking sights to line it up. You can orient a weapon from a, from even from like a hip orient weapon and still hit the target. You can throw it up and look at the target without ever seeing the top of the sights and hit the target. Right? Well, you know that, I know that. It's no secret. So why did you do that? I really, why I did that, I, when I came into the room, when I grabbed the weapon, I thought I was just gonna immediately just, I was gonna do it real quick and then just put it in the safe and go back out of the living room while she was working. It was just one of those things, like, I don't know, today I just been moving fast.
because I was mo I've been up since four thirty. I was cleaning weapons all. I cleared weapons earlier today. I cleared four. Any of those weapons you cleared earlier today? Those four weapons, those four, the two that were yours and two that were your buddies that he didn't clear them correctly. Did you pull the trigger on any of those once you fucking? Uh, did you put it on fire? Well, I cleared take them. The I did a functions check after I cleared them. Right. That was the one time I pulled the trigger. But well, prior to your functions them. check. Did you, prior to your functions check, did you orient your weapon towards any person and pull the fucking trigger after removing the magazine? No. And when you did your function check, which way did you have your muzzle pointed? Just kind of like at the wall or at like down at the, like In a like safe that. direction, right? Yeah. Why, why, do we, why do we do that? In case it does go off. In case it does go boom. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I There's another thing. After the neighbor heard the gunshot go off, they heard the, flood, the toilet flush twice from your apartment. What were you flushing? The um, the alcohol I had. She got me that fireball, and I was just, I just was really I don't know I don't know why I was really worried it happened. And why I, were you flushing the alcohol? What? Why were you flushing the alcohol? Because I'm I'm not 21, and I was just really scared. Your wife was dead with a bullet in the back of her head, and you're worried about getting a misdemeanor ticket. Yeah. No. I was just really, I don't know why. So that kind of brings up another point. When you when you first started talking about it, the gun going off, talked about all this other stuff, how long did it actually take for you to run over there? What do you mean? Did you try, did you try first when, aid? When did you I try CPR it, on her? I saw it go off. You said you went over there and held her. But that was after, I, okay, it went off and I, 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 it, my ears were ringing and I didn't even hear, I didn't like think of it, I just, my ears were ringing and I looked up and I saw what happened and I turned and I just, white, just, I didn't, what the fuck just happened. I turned around, and I went to my bedroom and I saw the weapon and I just threw it into the fucking closet. Okay, and those, and the magazines, I, when they were on the bed, I remember I just hit them off the bed, I just fucking kicked them. I remember I was just, so. And then you flushed the fireball? Yeah, no, that was, yeah, well that, I went and I saw, I was just so fucking fright. I didn't want to even touch my wife because I was so fucking scared. Not only did Nemitz try to hide evidence, but he also didn't even call 911. Without a neighbor making the call, it is unknown when or if Nemitz would have gotten around to it. If you're trying to accuse me of killing, I I understand I when killed kill my her. wife. I killed my fucking wife. Okay, I killed my wife. You're not gonna get an argument here. I'm just trying to figure out why. That's what our job is. My partner and I are trying to figure out why you killed your wife. We already know you killed her, and we can't fix that. But what we can do is get to the bottom of why, so she can rest in peace. She deserves that. She does. Mm -hmm. You're right, Scott. You're right. She deserves that. And you and you deserve to give her that. And she people are gonna want, and people are gonna want to know the answers of why. Not just us, her family, your family. sisters. Your family. Yeah. They're gonna wanna know why Skyler would do this? Or do they know already? I brought, my wife has met my entire family, I think is, as far as anybody I can meet that's worth meeting. And they all love her. And she loves them. And I'm happy for that. And you can call my grandparents, my father's side, you can call my grandma, my mother's side, you can call my mom. I guess I get all that. We're, we're not doubting your love for your wife. But what, what you're not getting the grip of the grasp of is that if yeah, there I, was something wrong, that if, I would you, do something. if you did something like this, if you did it because you were pissed off and you did it, you need to set it, set it now because yeah, I'm not sure what the prosecutor is going to do at this point right now because this whole huge gap right here, it's not looking really fucking good. So I'm trying to figure that out so mm -hmm. I can present the best case to our boss. He and my partner and I can sit there and we can present this to our boss and our yeah. boss can dictate where it goes from there, how we do, what we do next. And and the whole thing is, Skylar, I got to have as much information as possible. I, if I, we go in there right now and, and lay this out with that big fucking gaping hole is why you did this. Yeah. It doesn't look good for you, especially the fact that you altered the scene. 
You, you poured down uh, liquor down the sink. You kicked magazines underneath the bed and you threw a gun in the closet. You flushed the toilet twice, not once. So that, that means that the fucking bowl had to fill back up with water before you could flush it the second time to get rid of that. Because There's I think, of paper in the I think whatever. But the, my point is, I think that you're so worried about being a professional sh show. I can't even say it now, I'm so frustrated. Uh, army dude, that you don't, uh, um, that's what's on your mind. Not the fact that your wife's laying in the office. That's where the blood came from. When you went back in there? Right, I went back in there and I... I went but you didn't have blood on you, you didn't have blood on you when you opened up the fucking door for your neighbor. You had no blood on you. And then... It was on my hands. And I, then you went back in there and you, and then you had some on your shirt. Minimal. And I, I tell you, I can't count how many uh, homicides and suicides that I've been on where people have been shot in the head. What little bit of blood you got on your clothes is minimal. Minimal. So did you pick her up and you hug her? Or did you I, try? I went, because if you did that, you'd have a lot of blood on no, your side. I went like this. She, I grabbed, put my hand on the right side of her head and I put it to my chest and I wrapped my arm around her. And I guess there just wasn't that much blood or what, but I put my right hand, my right hand on the right side of her head. I put it to my chest and I started saying her name. And she, there was no reaction, no movement, no nothing. I immediately put her down, and I couldn't be in, I couldn't be in there anymore. I saw the, because I looked down. You couldn't drag me away if it was my wife. Didn't think of any CPR. Try breathing for her. Hold compression to her head. Just try to stop the bleeding. I mean, they, you've gone through CPR first aid training, right? Mediocre ones, I guess. Mediocre ones, but combat level training, right? How to put a tourniquet on. How to help a uh, fallen soldier who's been She hit. was shot in the back of the head. You could put a tour tourniquet. I get that, right? But you left her. You ran out and you hid the evidence. That don't make sense, man. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't. So fill in the blanks. It makes sense to you. You know. I think I don't know immediately. I must have just thought, "Oh my God, what the fuck just happened?" And I just thought of everything wrong that just happened with me. And wrong. What do you mean wrong? Every everything that I've done wrong. One. Obviously, the major one. Two, me with the weapon. Three, you know, I had alcohol in my kitchen. And then I don't know what kicked into me, but I was just like. You I don't know why I felt like I needed to cover, but I. I wasn't trying to cover up the fact that I did what I did, but. You moved magazines from a fucking rifle. You threw a rifle in the... The magazine wasn't in the rifle. The audit, okay, I'm just saying. Was moved, I'm just telling you what... The initial area. Yeah, absolutely. And you flushed alcohol down the toilet, not once, twice, two times. It seems to me like you're more concerned about cleaning the apartment and putting things away than you were about your wife who just got shot in the back of the head. Or more concerned about your military career than a 19-year-old girl that had been shot in the back of the head, like my partner said. It seems like you had limited or minimal concern about her. Nimitz still has not come up with a good reason why he altered the crime scene or why he didn't try to help his wife, at the very least, to check if she was still alive. It's more like, ah, damn, now what do I do? And in the beginning of our conversation, I didn't count after six, but you said, what happened to me? Look what happened to me. Why did this happen to me? Well, Skyler, you're sitting right here. Your heart's pumping. Your brain's working. Your wife isn't. It happened to her. You did it, but it happened to her. Tell me why it happened to her, Skyler. Because I'm fucked up. You fucked up. There's no two ways about it. But why did you fuck up? Were you were you pissed off? Or the rage was to the point that you just said, "This is it. I'm mad because you didn't do this or you did that." Or you're talking to that guy. Was it out of rage, man? That makes sense. Like my partner said, his detective said, it makes sense. We understand rage. We absolutely do. Most of the time, you can understand homicide. But when you leave a big fucking hole, I can't understand that. 
And she gets no rest until you come forth and tell the truth. I wasn't angry at her. And I wasn't looking for revenge in any way. I wasn't... Uh, I wasn't looking... I wasn't intentionally looking to harm her in any way. I wasn't looking for revenge. I wasn't mad at her. I wasn't insinuating that she was talking to another man. None of that was in my head. The only time I ever, I, I didn't even think about her being with another man. I just thought, with earlier in the day when I asked her about her coworkers, I asked her if everybody was nice and if anybody hits on you or anything, or are they all nice to you and appropriate. So that's, that's the farthest I got with that. See, that's not okay. Here's this precious creature given to you by God to be your wife that you love above no other. Is that is that what I understand? Yeah. This is your wife. You love her. Yeah. Why point a gun at the back of her head, shoulder that weapon, and pull the trigger? This is a precious creature. This is your wife. This is the love of your life. And then you tell us, well, I loved her. I wouldn't have, I wasn't mad at her, there's no other guy. You see where we're at? It doesn't I, I make understand sense. Where I, you guys don't understand. Yeah, I understand where I look like a fucking... I understand. And we're going to find things out. This is just the beginning. We're going to start digging. We're going to dig into computers. We're going to talk to neighbors. And some neighbors have already said they've heard you arguing in the past, not today, but in the past they've heard arguing coming from your apartment. What were those arguments about? I don't even remember a last argument. Well, what was your last argument about? What do you guys argue about? There's usually money. No, we usually don't argue about money. Bills. And infidelity. We usually don't work. I don't think we've ever really had a really big argument about financial. What does it need for make a month? $1,136.98 every two weeks. And then I get my rent automatically paid. For BAQ, I guess it'll be kind of that. Um, every month, I'm giving, I'm giving about $1,000, uh, a little over $1,200. Age, which is just for rent, and I, that set up as an allotment, and I get to keep the rest of it, so I keep about a, a little less than three hundred dollars of that because my rent's only about nine twenty. All right. What's the so? The, I'm sorry. Quick, what's the combo to your save? The combination to your save. Um, two pound. Yeah. So it's an electronic yeah. keypad. Two yeah, you, have to, you have to do it slower or else it'll lock you out. Okay, so two pounds. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay, with that in mind, with a little bit of money that you're making, thousand bucks a month plus a three hundred get on top of the VA. Plus then I get my actual actual base pay. Right. How do you afford fourteen guns? I'm uh, a gun guy. Yeah. I make a little bit more money than that. Uh, how, I can't afford fourteen guns just to have fourteen guns. Over the time I've gotten them. Um the detective abruptly switches their line of questioning, hoping to throw Nemitz off balance. One, two, four. I got, my grandpa died and I got some of them as, um, mm -hmm. as they were handed down to me. Do you have a key for the safe too? There is no key. There is no key for it? No. Does it you don't have a backup? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's got a code on there and then there's a way to reset it with, a, with this like, the key if you turn it you can reset but you don't program your own oh okay yeah and if, yeah okay but there's no like manual key it's, so yeah. what if the power goes out you just it's you, a battery you, can, the battery. you just change the battery oh and then okay. you can change okay. the key code by opening the safe and you can change it like that when it's open oh okay okay um but so with those six pistols that you have you initially said some of those aren't yours are they so one, or one of them isn't mine one of them a, a friend that i have that works in the same, he's in the same platoon I have. He bought that a couple months ago legally. And legally or? Le legally, mm -hmm. all these are legal. They're all legal handguns and. But well, why are you, have, at that night, uh, you're 20 and 20 years old, you're having them, are you keeping them off post? Is everybody on post now you have them? 
you can give your list only there. like two or three of my friends because I'm not talking about friends I'm talking about your command I'm sure well, I, I, I think, service. You I think a, like you had a list all weapons owned no no you um I did two of them because I want sometimes I wanted to go to a range they have on post to, just to go shoot on the range and it was just a bolt action rifle and a semi automatic like scope rifle for like. But none of your pistols because you can't have a pistol or can't you have a pistol? No, I can, I'm allowed to have a pistol. Okay. But um, I just didn't do it because I don't really shoot my pistols that often. Mm -hmm. um, but um, there's a 44 Magnum that I got in hand. I'm more concerned with the 556 that went through you, I said. And why did you buy that? I legally bought that from Tactical Taylor on Exit 124. From Tactical Taylor or Surplus Ammo and Arms, the one behind it? The one behind it. Yeah, the Surplus Arms. Uh, yeah. Do you remember how long you were at that? You bought that? I bought that in beginning of December, end of November last year because Christmas is late December and her birthday is early, early January, so usually like in December I'll just get her some stuff for then. So was it a gift for her? Yeah, I got it for her birthday hmm. because she wanted a she wanted a rifle to go shoot a target. Did you teach her how to use a weapon? Yeah. How to secure it? How to make it safe? Yeah, but she I didn't take her to I went and took her to go shoot it maybe like. Three or four times. Yeah, maybe you took her three times or the punches or how to clear it. Yeah, and then I, one of my friends did the same thing with her, helped her out. Okay. Let's take a break. Yeah. Good. Hang tight. We'll be right back. Need anything you can say? Still up. Need anything you can say? Water or anything like that? Mm -hmm. Any bar or anything? What's the uh, recorder still on? What's the uh, um, your wife's uh, maiden name? The first, her um, maiden name is Tara uh, Danielle Ripion Bolton. Okay. Let me spell it. No, no, I got it right here in front of me. Did the um, there was a bill in the house for uh, a receipt rather? Four dozen roses from Safeway. That was dated yesterday. Um, when I picked her up, she said one of her co-workers' um, wife or whatever they're having a bad day or something like that. So she bought a dozen roses for his wife or yeah, his her co-worker's wife. That's just what she told me. She bought a dozen roses for a coworker's wife. Yeah. So she. Pretty I, I think they knew each other because she goes to the office. Apparently, that's what she so said. She's pretty close. To where they would hang out. Maybe they'd come over to the apartment. She'd go over to their house. Is it is that a type yeah. of friendship? I've never met them before. Um, well, but have you? Has she ever talked about it? Hey, you know, my co no, What's, it, what's I, the coworker's name? Did she mention the coworker's name? Nimitz doesn't even know anything about Danielle's friends, something that several of them later confirmed. They said that Nemitz would barely speak to them the few times they were ever together, and he would usually leave quickly. No, um, no. No? So she didn't say like Because she got, when she got me that, um, the cinnamon alcohol, I asked her where she got it from, and she said, um, a co-worker. Oh, well, a guy. He, cool. He's my coworker, and if his wife wasn't feeling good, I brought her a dozen roses, and I was telling you about it. I said, "Yeah, I got uh, Todd's wife. It's a coworker of mine. Yeah, I got Todd's so wife a dozen roses." So yeah. Did she mention his first name? No, I don't remember his first name. No. No. Hmm. 
probably what you say. Yeah, I know. It, 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 I know his wife. If if she wasn't feeling good and I bought her roses, we we've known each other for ten years, worked together a long time, uh, more than ten years now. Um, I think he'd be mad at me. He'd be kind of a, a, you know. If I didn't say, if I didn't go and say, uh, Rick, I bought your wife. I know she's having a bad day, so I, I sent her a dozen roses. Mm -hmm. You know, he'd look at me like, what the fuck, are you sending my wife roses for? Where'd she buy the roses from? Safeway. Well, that's what the receipt says. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying that she bought them. I'm saying there's a receipt in the house for a dozen roses. But you know what's not in the house? What? A dozen roses. Yeah, well, I just, I couldn't, I mean, I didn't buy them, I just got an attention. Well, I know you didn't buy them. Who's Michael Bolton? Michael Bolton's the guy, he's dead. He's dead. So, how does he sell the Safeway Club card then? I don't know, he, she just must use, still use the number or something. He died in... Is that the one that was not around much? Or did no, he die? Her, that's her actual, her real dad was not around much, and I don't remember his name, I haven't met him. But that was a stepdad. Was yeah, stepdad. Her, her stepdad, Michael, was a... Uh, How long did he pass away? It was, um... It was a week before Thanksgiving last year, so... Almost a year ago? Yeah, it's almost been About a month ago. But um, yeah, so she asked her where she got the album from. She said co-worker. And then she said, um, I also got his, or like his, they just had a, she said they just had a baby and she's been stressed out lately. And yeah, she's been stressed out lately. So Danielle, my wife, thought it'd be nice to buy her some roses. So she's worked at this place for six weeks, roughly. Mostly from home, mm -hmm. goes to the office sometimes. A coworker, a male coworker, his wife is stressed out, so she sends her or brings her flowers. Yeah, that's what I got from her. That's what she told me. So she's got to be pretty having pretty intimate uh, conversations with this guy to know that it's you know about his, his personal life. Because there's not a lot of people like I'm. I'm not going to share my personal life with a lot of people you know but for a for a woman and a guy to sit down and talk and find out that his wife's dressed out i mean i mean she's nice like that too though. yeah like, but i mean that's tearing some pretty intimate details don't you think i mean would you sit down with a strange woman or not necessarily a strange woman but another female would soldier and, would you sit would you sit down with a female soldier and tell her all the problems that are going on in your marriage mm -hmm. you know the only person I talked to like that is probably a chaplain. A chaplain, yeah. Do you think it's weird that maybe she was sitting down, talking to another guy, giving all the intimate details of your marriage and learning all the intimate details of his marriage? Yeah, I guess I don't really think that much of it. Um, really? Yeah. You're pretty smart, Scott. Yeah, no, I understand. I thought it was a little strange, but I didn't think much of it because that's... Strange enough to put a gun on the back of her head and pull the trigger? No. No. She's nice like that. Like she, like when my friends have. I mean, that's kind of like a, you know, if, if your wife sharing intimate details with another man, that's kind of a, a trust issue, isn't it? I mean, that's kind of private stuff for husbands and wives, right? I trust my wife. I mean, yeah. Does that does that doesn't bother you that she may have been doing that and that he was sharing intimate details of. His relationship with his wife to and her? Ne never to me, I think that they're sharing intimate details. You don't think so? And then you're out in the field with the guys, and the guys are probably talking stories. I'm sure there's all kinds of horror stories about what wives do while guys it's are. It's called a Jody story. Yeah. Jody story, yeah. Jody story all over the place, man. Yeah. And then the mind's a terrible thing. The mind just kind of takes over, kind of becomes, creates its own monster, right? Uh, okay, I understand where you're going with this, but I, I really think, I don't think she did. The detectives insinuate that Danielle may have been having an affair with a co-worker, and Nemitz struggles to act as if that had never crossed his mind. The way he speaks shows that he at least had some doubts, but self-preservation isn't letting him admit that. Okay. I don't think she did. Well, I'm not saying she did either. I'm just trying to figure this out. I'm I trying to figure out what's that. going on here. I was okay with her not doing it. I was thinking, 
Yeah, she probably didn't do that. But now with the receipt for a dozen roses that aren't in the fucking house, and a co-worker, she gave them to her, the co-worker's wife. Um, I, that's, I'm now I'm having a hard time with that. Doesn't seem very believable. Um, yeah, I'm kind of suspicious on her part telling you if that's what you're saying, but but because I think you're smart, I don't think you're stupid. Am I being gullible then? From her I don't think it's gullible. I think you know what it is. I think you thought. I, you're, I think you're thinking the same thing I was. I'd be fucking furious. I literally didn't remember fucking all that shit until you guys just brought it up. Mm -hmm. uh, just like you didn't remember that you had the gun on your fucking shoulder. Yeah. Put your finger on the trigger. She told me when I when I picked her and up. Pulled the trick. I understand that. Then the gun went off. Yes, it did go off. And your wife died. Yeah. And we find a receipt with your wife's Safeway card for a dozen roses for a guy's wife, which doesn't seem too believable. Hey, not talking to the guy's wife yet. So there, there may be a, an opportunity to, to figure that one out. But, uh, Maybe totally legit. Might be. Sure. Well, hey, well, I'm a suspicious guy because that's why I'm a detective. Say, say maybe before we accuse me of being mad at her because of that subject, could we possibly talk to that person's wife? No, I think that I can probably conclude that you would be pissed off and not gullible. I can conclude here, here that without talking here, to anybody. Here, here, here. This is the woman you love. This is your wife. So you're just coming back from being downrange for three weeks and you're hearing all the Jody stories. So your mind's kind of playing, hang on, hang on, your mind's playing tricks on you, right? And then you come back and there's maybe a few little things here thinking that, oh man, this, maybe this is true, maybe this is happening to me. Man, this can't happen to me. So it's hurtful. Again, this is the woman you love. And if she's cheating on you, how hurtful? What, a, what more of a hurtful thing can happen to a man? Especially when your whole family loves her and they all know her and stuff. And now you gotta go back and say, oh man, she's cheating on me. Now I'm, you're crushed. And then that's when the rage kicks in. The anger. And then bam, the gun goes off, she's dead. I don't know why, but you're not gonna run over and call her. You're gonna start cleaning up the apartment. And so you're cleaning up the apartment and you're thinking, oh man, what do I do now? And then, and then the door knocks. Neighbors at the door. Oh, I, I gotta come up with something. She's cleaning her. She's cleaning her rifle. She accidentally shot herself. She's cleaning her rifle. But we already know if it's intentionally an accident, you would have been over there giving CPR. You would have been holding her head. Compression. You would have been something. doing whatever to stop the bleeding. But she didn't do any of that. Man, there's something on your chest, dude. Just get it off your chest. There's really nothing. Oh, you're that shallow and that hollow of a dude? I'm not. I don't know what you guys want me to say. The fucking truth. I, tr I trust my wife. Even when she said that thing about the roses, I I thought, oh, okay, you know, she's being nice. And that's what I was getting at. Like, when my buddies at work, you know, we're like, they're always hanging out with us. We're having barbecues all the time. If it's their birthday, my wife makes them a cake. So how, like that's how well do you guys interact with other people? Do you guys have a lot? Are you guys very social? Do yeah, you guys? we're very social. Okay. We have friends. We go to friends' houses. We go to dinner all the time. So we're often you have parties at your house for get-togethers? Probably you know. once every two weeks. I'll usually have, we'll usually grill steak and make like jalapeno poppers. Mm -hmm. I'll usually have like four or five guys and they'll usually be like their wives or something. Yeah. Usually yeah. like the buddies I work with and they've known them for a while. No, are these, are these, what kind of parties are these? Are they just work? Wives hang out, guys hang out, maybe drink some beer, eat some steak, that type of thing. Yeah, usually, and we usually yeah. we always grill. I got a Weber grill, we usually grill. Okay. I, yeah. Yeah. Do they get promiscuous or, you know, no. I don't know. No, no, no. You no, know no. what I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. I have friends like, um, two of them have wives. One of my buddies, Sean White, his, he has a wife and she's pregnant right now, and then my, uh, buddy Anthony and he has a wife, Carrie. And I got buddies that got wives too, man. And well, they, but I didn't shoot my wife in the back of the fucking head, and I didn't. My wife didn't have a, a receipt for a dozen roses in there. In an effort to avoid answering questions, Nemitz goes on at length about his friends, hoping that the detectives will be distracted enough to forget what they asked him. 
And it didn't just come back from three weeks of being downrange with some Jody stories or some people talking shit about their wives. Or may not have been. But I still wondering what was going on. Come home and find a receipt and like, oh, okay. Did she bring it up or did you find it and say, what the fuck is this? And that get spark another argument. Well, I also don't have neighbors next door that say up until the last three weeks, they've been arguing all the time. We hear them arguing all the time and they're raising their voices all the fucking time. They're always arguing about something. So I don't know why, I'll, for three weeks it's been great, but guess what? You've been gone yeah, for three weeks. three weeks. And it doesn't matter where you found the receipt, you knew about the roses. And you didn't why tell did, us about it. I didn't it. need a receipt, I didn't believe I know, but you knew, you knew about the roses. So what did she bring it up? There, so you told did she that. tell you or did you find a ro uh, the receipt? No, I, I told you how it came up. Remember when I, she said, oh, I got you some alcohol. And I said, oh, okay, thank you, but how'd you get it? She said, oh, I got it from a co-worker that I work with. And she also said, oh, and I also, and, I, and he said, oh, and her wife is having a baby right now, and she's been having a lot of trouble staying, and she's been staying up. So I felt bad, so I went and got her some roses. So and some co-worker buys a 19-year-old girl so it's a bottle of cinnamon whiskey, and she buys them roses, because the whiskey's for you and the roses for his wife. What you said. No. Well, no, the roses, she told me the roses were for his wife. Mm -hmm. And he bought the whiskey for her husband. Yeah. So do you think it's roses? Do you whiskey. think that is something that you buy for somebody's wife that's not feeling? And my partner's wife isn't. None of this makes sense. There was no blood on the you're, you're cleaning up the apartment. You're not calling 911. You just shot your wife in the head. You're not rendering medical aid to her. You're not calling 911. You're cleaning up the apartment. You're hiding things in the crime scene. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? That doesn't make sense. You go to the open the door. I accidentally hurt somebody, I'm going to be doing everything in my willpower to make sure they're okay. You go to the door with no blood on you. Then you run back in and you got four little swipes on your shirt. And maybe a little bit on your head. From a head wound with a, with a five, five, six that moves about 2,900 feet per fucking second. Next to the front of her face. And you're telling me that there's no fucking, uh, that's all the blood you got on you? Yeah, I mean, I don't I would, I, when I came up to her, I was on the left side of her and I grabbed her against me. But I put my, my hand on the right side of her head. three weeks you were happy to see your cute young wife mm -hmm. no, and you find out that something may not be true or you assume something may not be wrong so you get in a rage you make a stupid act that makes sense to us that's not what I wasn't ever rage for been in rage at we've gotten arguments in what was it over No. You better fucking no. start remembering, man. Make no. your story make believable. I, before no. I went to, what were we? What were, have we argued about? Yeah, yeah. What have you argued about? I don't. Probably random shit. Probably like what? Did maybe, she not pick her clothes up? Did she not pay bills on time? Maybe, Does she spend too I much money? Bills. It must have maybe was. Did she spend too much time on the computer? Maybe, what is it? What I is mean, it that makes I you argue? We got, we got an argument before because she likes to sit on her phone all the time, or. So you're jumped on her phone and with you. Perhaps sensing that he has tried to portray their relationship as a bit too perfect, Nemet tries to come up with examples of arguments that can't be taken as strong enough motive for murder. And you got mad and you started yelling at her. 
Right. Yeah, I mean, though. we've argued about that before, but I've never. Okay. Well, then the only time I've it. really screamed, like I screamed at her before. What happened? She got I think it was because she got in a fender bender in an old car that we used to have, and we were arguing about it. And then, like, why didn't you shoot her then? I didn't. I don't want to harm my daughter. Pull the trigger. So that's what I mean, it doesn't make any sense. You tell me you don't want to harm your wife. I don't you want to harm my wife. You I tell really me, you tell me your wife is the most I've cute. Never and you don't want to harm But you shoulder the weapon, put your the weapon on fire, put your finger on the trigger and pull the weapon when it's pointed at the back of her head. So that tells me you wanted to harm her. You wanted to hurt her. And we want to know why. Was it the seventeen thousand dollars in debt that you guys are in? Because of my truck. Your seventeen thousand dollars in debt. Uh, I mean, is that why you're mad at her? Was she spending money buying roads for somebody on an E four salary, and your seventeen thousand dollars in debt? Well, how how my seventeen thousand dollars in debt? I have a car loan. That's all I know of. And I'm trying to fix my car that I wrecked a few months. Like, are you wrecked or she wrecked? I will. I wrecked it. I totaled it. Mm -hmm. So you're seventeen thousand dollars in debt, and for that car, is a, for a car loan. Yeah. And well, and fixing this, and, buy, and she buys roses for some dude. You don't get pissed about that? I'd be fucking furious if I was seventeen thousand dollars in debt and my wife bought roses for some guy. Be furious, but I still wouldn't put a fucking five five six in the back of her head and blow her fucking face off. I wouldn't do that. But I'd be angry. I didn't want to kill my wife. Then why did you? Because I was ignorant and I was. I don't believe that. I don't believe you're an ignorant man at all. I think you're a very smart, intelligent young man. I understand. I, okay, I'm good with weapons. I've used weapons a lot, okay? But I don't, this time, I just... I That's just it. Up. I don't think you'd violate those safety rules to the back of your wife's head if you really loved her. You might if you were pissed off. $17,000 in debt, another man. You know, maybe the house, maybe she didn't do what she was supposed to do. Is there maybe, a lie detector you could, because I don't know of any of Yeah, absolutely. We'll put you I, on I, a, I a CBSA. If you want to do that, I'll absolutely get that set up. I don't know any of any other man, I'm telling you. I really don't. The only you see video or something that she was doing something with somebody when she's looking on that? No. No. I wasn't even really angry at all, actually. I wasn't even angry. I even think second guess when she said she bought roses for her um, co-worker's wife. I didn't even second guess that. Your bills paid on time? Every one of them? You up to date? Yeah, they should be. Should be. You pay all the bills, the you should three, know. The last three weeks I let her pay the last one, so they should have been paid. But when I pay the bills, they're always paid on time. Usually they're paying a good soldier. They usually pay a few years, right? Uh, are you in good standing to the unit? Yeah, I mean, I, the, the only thing that I've ever had bad happen to me is I got her in that car wreck, and it was on post, so technically I had, I had to get a ticket. So that was that's the only negative thing I've ever had happen to me in the military. Okay. I've never had, had any bad reviews. I've never like had that. Bad negative counseling. I've never been on extra duty. And yeah, nothing. I've, um, yeah, that, that was the first thing that's really ever had. That was my first ticket ever about to. See, that's what's troubling. So how's this squared away soldier who's good at his job, good with weapons? Kill his wife. Miss mistake. It is not, this isn't a little mistake. I understand. They had a ticket. This, this isn't doing something stupid. This is pointing a weapon to the I'm back sorry. of her head, putting it on fire and pulling the trigger. To me, that's intentional. That's not a mistake. You don't make those mistakes. You even told me that, that you don't make those mistakes. And you've cleared that today, type of a weapon today, thousands of times. I think today you got angry and you killed your wife. You said, fuck this bitch and blow her brains out? No. You hit weapon. You hit the magazines. You flushed fucking alcohol down the toilet. You changed 
the crime scene after shooting your wife in the head. Nothing about it seems accidental. It seems intentional. I understand how... With malice. The detective circles back to the fact that Nemitz's first reaction to his wife's death was to alter the crime scene rather than to try to help her. Nemitz still has no good explanation. What's that? So are you a cold? You intended to kill your wife. You stuck a gun in the back of her head and pulled a fucking trigger. Are you a cold, heartless killer? No. Or were you acting out of revenge, out of anger, out of jealousy? I'm not a cold-hearted killer. And I was not angry or jealous of my wife in any way. Was she at you? Was she cussing at you for for no, fooling she, around? No, I told her, oh, you look very cute. And she was silent and she was on the computer. And it was quiet and I started, and I took the weapon and I was just gonna quickly just... Shouldered it, pointed it towards your wife, no. pulled it, put it on fire, pulled the fucking trigger, boom! Gun goes off, she dies. You hide the crime scene, you change it, you alter it, you go put magazines underneath the bed, you knock them off the bed, kick them under the bed, you, go, you throw the gun in the other closet, you go get the bottle of liquor and you flush it down the toilet twice. It takes a minimum, a minimum of 45 seconds to fill up a, uh, a tub of the back of the commode to flush it again, a minimum of 45 seconds. Did a little plumbing in my day, I know these things. And then, so you do it twice, and then you go to the door, no blood on you. Answer the door. Then you run back and you come back with minimal blood from a head wound with a 5.56. Five, it's got countless amounts of pressure and moving 2,900 feet per second out of the end of a 16 inch barrel. Explain that, Skyler. If you could explain it, we'll be done. If you can't explain it, son, then what happens is right now you're looking at homicide, intentional killing of your wife. I understand. I, that stuff, the stuff. Okay, when I tried to, when I took the magazine and I put it on the bed, and after all this happened, the alcohol was in the kitchen. Okay, I poured in the kitchen. The, the alcohol was in. The, yes, the alcohol, mm -hmm. I told. I said that earlier. Right, 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 right. In the kitchen. So you kill her in here. You run past this. You put the gun in there. You hide the magazines in this room, and you go into the kitchen and get the alcohol. Go back to the fucking commode and you flush it twice, not once, I twice. Didn't wait, I didn't wait for it to. And then. No, 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 change your story a little bit more. Twice. Well, you flushed it twice. They heard it flush twice. Thing. If you don't wait, it don't flush. Then they run back out here and open up the door because somebody's knocking on the door. You got no fucking blood on you. You never ran to the aid of your wife. Skyler, you never ran to the aid of your wife. She had a bullet hole in the back of her head, the love of your life, and you let her lay in a fucking pool of blood, and you run to the door and you try to cr change the crime scene. And then you come back and you got minimal blood on her. Skylar, don't fucking lie to me. I'm tired of you lying to me. Tell me the goddamn truth. That's twice I've used GD. I never say that word. You have got me angry. Yes, sir. I want to know the truth because your wife deserves the truth. You telling me this shit, it, sir? You, absolutely. Okay, but what I'm Didn't saying is, I, I was so... I've never done anything. Nothing. I. This is... I don't know what the fuck I'm supposed to say. I th I was so fu th this is I've never been around this kind of shit before. Okay, so immediately I don't know why the fuck I was thinking about myself and I should have been fucking thinking about my goddamn wife, which I should I should have been thinking about my wife. And for some fucking reason I was thinking about myself, this motherfucking myself. Okay, and I was thinking, oh my god, I'm, I'm being, uh, alcohol. You're really fucking alcohol. And then my military career is over. Me, me, me. Why is this happening to me? To me, me, me. While your wife lays there dead. Was she still breathing? No, when I went up to her, she wasn't breathing. When did you go up to her? Uh, the two minutes later, two after minutes you cleaned later? up the scene? Or did you, no, go, no, or did you okay. go right up I, to her right away? And, I, oh. I told you. Were you not writing all that stuff? I went up to her after I threw the gun. I went in there and I looked at After her. you threw the gun. Where did you throw the gun? In the bug bed. Closet. In this closet? No, the other, the other room. Bed. In the other room? Yeah. So you went out of the room? If you accidentally shoot your wife, or what you're telling me, after you put it on the shoulder, put your finger in the trigger well, put the gun on fire, aim it at her head, and pull the trigger, mm -hmm. then you take the gun out into the other room. If that was an accident, don't you think you would have dropped it right there, went over there, made sure she's all right, made sure she's breathing? Decided to render some sort of egg like, oh, fuck. Let me, oh, maybe I just, may, maybe it just barely touched her, maybe she's okay. No, let me go hide the crime scene. Let me go get this out because I'm a fucking. And then I'm gonna go back in there, peek in there, and go. Oh, she's not breathing. Just a sign of flesh alcohol. 
Get rid of the magazines. Hmm. Because it was an act of rage, you didn't plan next. Under the combined pressure from the detectives, Nimitz buckles. The stress obviously getting to him as he rests his head on the table in search of some relief. All you planned was how to kill her. You didn't plan what was going to happen next because you acted in a fit of rage. That's what's called rage. You're lashing out because you're angry, you're mad, so you killed her. And then reality sets in that, oh my goodness, I just killed her. What am I going to do now? I have to make up a story. I have to come up with something quick. Right? I'm not dumb. I'm okay? Sure. I know this is exactly what this is. This is rage. And you didn't know what to do after you killed busy. her. I was too worried about my own fucking tracks for some reason. I was too worried about myself getting in more trouble than... You don't get it much more trouble than I I understand. It didn't, really have, it didn't click for me. Something just hit me and I was like, oh my god, a, a wet fire on went off. And she's probably... And I fucking just got rid of the shit. And when I went back in there, I got pretty close to her and she wasn't breathing and her hair was over her face. I couldn't see her face, but I saw blood on like the chair and like on her shirt right here and yeah and that was after that because you acted out of rage if that would have been an action you would have been all over you'd been moving her hair out you'd been trying to figure out what let me ask you this let me run this by it what else did you do altering the crime scene did you go out the slider door i went out there and i was freaking out yeah put your dog out there no he ran out there yeah when you open up the slider, you went out there freaking out. Was that before or after you opened the door for the neighbor? Tell the truth, man. That was before I opened the door for the neighbor. I went so now we went into another complete, room. another fucking room, went outside, oh shit, oh shit, still haven't rendered aid to your wife. This is your panic mode. I, I, I didn't know what the fuck to do. She I was panicked, right? I was out of rage. Then, the, like my partner said, then the fucking reality set in. And then, oh fuck, what do I do? Plan past the point of killing her. You're just so mad wasn't that you wanted to kill her. I didn't plan to kill my wife. Okay. Wasn't so, you know what you're talking about? The difference of? First degree murder and second degree murder. First degree murder is that you planned it. You said, when I get home, I'm killing that fucking bitch. Second degree murder, second degree murder is this. That fucking bitch is cheating on me. Bam! Gun goes off. Man, That's a different son. I didn't think Reality hits. Me. Now, oh man, I actually did it. I did it. I can't believe I did it. Now what do I do? Right? No. Wow, oh, I, I did this. What do I do? So you said the first you I, I premeditated whatever it is. I did not think that. And number two, I just, no. I didn't. No, because you're caught. No, and now I you're didn't getting, dude, my kids she, are older than you, man. I got you, I got you figured out in the first five minutes we're in here. I know exactly when you don't like what you, you're going to change the fucking story. You've been doing it all night. We've been talking to you for three and a half, four hours. And I'm telling you, man, you're, I got you figured out. I know it, it, all you got to do, the difference between uh, getting this thing done and all taken care of it is you tell me why you pulled the trigger on the back of your wife's head. Well, are you fucking mad? You tell my partner, where is it because of your rage? Because she was cheating on you? Because you just said, fuck it, I want out of this. I want to be a soldier. She wanted to be out of the army. You wanted to stay in. Whatever the reason is, just tell us. It's out of rage. You did it. Boom, bang, done. We're out of here. First degree murder, second degree murder. I don't know which one it is, but it's one of the two. I really didn't think she was cheating on me. I, re I didn't have any... I didn't doubt it at all. Then we come back to the same question. Mm -hmm. Why would you shoulder a weapon, put it on fire, put your finger in the trigger well, train the weapon on the back of your wife's head, and pull the trigger? I did not intentionally try to kill her. The weapon was in her, that 
pointed directly at her, and I was not. You're changing I was, the story again. I was, You're no, changing I did the not story. You're changing the story again. Why did you do that? Other than I don't know, it was stupid. It was. Stupid. Yeah, we know that. But we don't think you're a stupid guy. The guy that's cleared thousands of weapons and cleared weapons today before he turned them in. 11 years old, you had your first AR. For nine years, you've worked that weapon system. You know better. Loaded or unloaded, you don't point a rifle at anybody at the back of anybody's head. What would happen if your first sergeant saw you doing that to somebody, another fellow soldier? He'd probably take the rifle and beat me with it. So again, you're not that stupid to make that mistake. You know better. So why did you do it? shoot the weapon I did okay I shot the weapon and it was aimed at her head I didn't intentionally try to kill her me being I skipped a step I skipped a step on the weapon and a 19 year old died hey step the weapon was not safe I didn't charge them. I think you skipped more than one step. Pointing in the wrong direction. What are the what are the firearm safety rules? Pointing weapon in a safe direction, having the weapon on safe. Make sure your weapon's clear. What's the last one? Trigger discipline. Having your finger off the trigger. That's not the one I'm talking about. You know which one I'm talking about. Always treat a weapon like it's loaded. Always treat a weapon like it's loaded. So how does a young man that's been shooting guns since he's 11, how much time he's been in the Army now? Um, since November 7, 2012. Since November 7, 2012, so almost two years. And how much weapons training have you had? Probably a lot, right? I'll let you answer that. How much weapons training have you had? Mortars, machine guns, grenade launchers, different types of rifles, short rifles. All of them you have to clear, yeah. right? All of them you keep your finger off trigger until you're ready to um, fire the weapon. And never point anything anything you're not willing to destroy. They preach the firearm safety rules to you? I know we get to preach to us. Do they preach it to you in the Army? Yeah. Yeah? Let me ask you this. Did they find a receipt, point the gun at her, not thinking it was loaded and pull the trigger? No, I didn't know there was a receipt for the roses. Were you trying to scare her? No. Trying to intimidate her? No. Were you in an argument saying, hey, I could do this to you, and instead of the gun just going click, it went bang? No, I never threatened her. Are you ready to do a CBSA live detector test? We'll be, we'll, we'll, uh, my partner and I will step out, we'll get a guy in here, he'll do that test and get it all in, if it comes through, you ready to do that? You wanna get the truth out here? And maybe help us clarify it. You wanna do that? Help us understand. I, I know you guys really don't. Well, we're just, I, no, I wanna, I wanna give you the option. It just this is, this is an investigative yeah. tool, it's not admissible in court, it's an mm -hmm. investigative tool. Gives me an idea if you're being truthful or not. Let's that's all. Yeah, that's you wanna do it? Yeah, that's fine. It's gonna take us about 10 or 15 minutes to get set up. Can I get more water in? Sure. Yeah, want a candy bar in there? No, I don't know. You like candy? I don't know. I can't help you with anything else, but I'll get you some more water. Yeah. All right. Recording still. The detectives finally decide to give the lie detector test to Nimitz, as they had discussed earlier. He is eager to take it, not realizing that the proof will not be conclusive even if he passes. The video goes black.
Hi, Skyler. Uh, Hi, I'm Detective Gonzalez. You have elected to take a computer voice stress analysis, is that correct? Whatever they need. Is that what he asked you about? He talked to you about that? Yeah, I said I would do it. Okay. I know we talked about polygraph a little bit. We're going to do some uh, administrative stuff real quick before we even get into the machine, and I'll talk about how the machine works and all that kind of stuff. So, I'm a major crimes detective. I work at major crimes homicide, and one of my primary duties is to coordinate the computer voice stress analysis program as well. So, uh, that's what I do for the other six examiners that I have that uh, work for me here. So, before we get started, though, I'm going to go ahead and get uh, your permission to conduct the examination. You gave your, you said you wanted to take it, so we'll get that. We'll get through that. Spell your first name for me, please. S K Y. Mm -hmm. L A R. Okay. And what's your middle initial? N. Okay. And what is your middle name? N E M. Oh, my middle name. Yes. N I K. Okay. O L A S. Nicholas. Yes. And it's Nemitz. Yes. N E M. E T Z. E T Z. That's what I thought. Okay. All right. So, do you have any problem reading or writing? Yeah. Can you see okay? Yeah. Oh, you're tired. Can you read that for me? Aloud? I, Skylar Nicholas. Tell me your date of birth. July 19, 1994. Okay, listen, bud. It's recorded audio and video, so you got to speak up, okay? All right. Oh, yeah. Everything. So you're kind of you're kind of at a low volume now. I know you're tired. You've been doing this a long time. You've been answering a lot of questions. I'm not up in your grill or anything like that, okay? okay. So, but I need you to you know kind of speak up so we can get through this. All right, okay. we're gonna go through Miranda once more, okay? That's okay. your rights advisal, so I under, I, I'm confident that you still want to talk to me and all that stuff. The way I do it is I'm going to read aloud from the form you're going to sign, and then I'm going to give you a blank form that you can read along with me, and we'll go from there, okay? So advisement of rights. Before questioning and making any statements, I'm going to advise you of your rights. You have a right to remain silent. Any statements that you do make can be used as evidence against you in a court of law. You're not a juvenile, so the juvenile addendum doesn't... Uh, doesn't uh, pertain to you. They have the right this time to talk to an attorney of your choice and they have your attorney present before and during questioning and to make a statement. If you cannot afford an attorney, you're entitled to have one appointed for you without cost to you to have the attorney present at any time during your questioning and make a statement. The detective reads Nemitz's rights. Nemitz, with everything going against him, really should have considered getting an attorney. So far, the entire interview has done nothing but potentially damage him. We stop answering questions or ask for an attorney at any time during any questioning to make a committee statement. Do you understand each of these rights I've explained to you? Yes. Having been made fully aware of these rights, do you voluntarily wish to answer questions now? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, a couple of, again, just procedural things. All right, one, two, three, four, and five are what I read you. These are the two questions I ask you. I'd like you to initial next to the margin, next to each numeral, indicating you understand your rights. If you have any questions about them, please ask me. Okay. I would like you to initial next to the, these two numerals for the two questions and put your answers there. You answered yes to both of those and sign below, please.
lots of paperwork with this thing. Good to go for a little bit. I mean, you have. Do you need to use the restroom? You've got some water. Are you are you okay? Because this may take a little bit. I might drink some of this, and then I'm gonna probably go to the bathroom. Okay, you might go to the bathroom. That's fine. That's fine. Before we get started, so I don't want to. I don't want to get too far into it before we go on. You ready to go right now? Um. Yeah, I can do it right now. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do Whatever that. I can. Okay. Let's do that. Come on. So, not a good circumstance. I, I realize that. We have uh, some things to get over, you know, from the scene, as compared to what you told us and some of the things you did, and we'll get into all that. But. Uh, Again, this is the time, you know, we've got a couple of questions. Uh, I mean, there are just two questions, really, is intent more than anything else, you know. And then, and I want you to answer that right now. Or was it an accident? And a stupid, an, an accident, or an, act of, or an act of negligence? It's kind of the three options we have. You know what I mean? Does that make sense to you? Yes, sir. Okay, all right. All right, do you have a driver's license? Yes. Where you, where's your driver's license at? It's in my wallet. Is it from the state or from Washington? Nemitz has calmed down now that he isn't being pressed so hard. It must come as a relief now that he has time to think of an answer before the next accusation or question is posed. No, it's a California driver's license. Where are you from, California? Northern California. Where? Eureka, Humboldt County. Eureka, yeah. Okay. Do you know your driver's license number? Um... I can only remember the first few. It's that's right. That's right. If you don't remember it, that's fine. Uh, what's your social security number? Okay. And what's your address exactly? Eight five zero nine. Mm hmm. Eighty second Street. Mm hmm. Southwest. Mm hmm. Apartment three zero one. Yeah, like. And what's the zip out there? Nine eight four nine eight. Okay. 
then you're employed by the U.S. Army, and what's your unit of assignment? What am I unit? What's your unit of assignment, yeah? 3-2. Right. What company? Dash 520, or it's 5-20. Okay. HHC. Okay. So you're in headquarters, headquarters, 70, 520 infantry. Yeah. Or third brigade. Third second brigade. I, second yeah. ID. Okay, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, second ID. Okay, great. What, what's, the, what's the address over there? At the, uh, what's, what's the building number, do you know? I can't, I don't know. Are you on North Ward or are you guys on? Main. Main, main, main post. post. JB1. It's over next to the second range of bat. Or down by 275 on yeah, the second division. It's like literally right on the street from 275. Yeah, it used to be right down the street from 275 too. At 504th MP Battalion. I was there about 15 years ago. So what's your phone number? You got a cell phone? Yeah, 707. Okay. 832-9008. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what's the unit number? Um, I don't know that off the top of my head. You don't know your section number, your company number? It's on my phone. It's on your phone. And I have a call card. You got a that it, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. A data card. Okay. I don't know. So, so what are you, what's your position in your platoon? My rank or my position? Your position. Gunner. Gunner. Okay. Are you on a track or are you on a Humvee? I'm on a striker. A striker, okay. Yeah. Is that is that going to be a fifty or is what what's what are you running? Two forty. Two forty. I saw. Okay. What's your MOS? Eleven C. Mortar. Yeah. Okay. And how long have you been there? Um, I arrived there on March 7th, 2013. Been in the military since November 7th, 2012. So you had four months down Fort Benning? Yeah. For infantry basic and all that shit? Mm -hmm. Okay. You've been there since March. Did you go down range? Did you get deployed? When I got back, they just got back from deployment. So oh, they just got back. Yeah, and we've been. We haven't. You haven't rotated again since. No. Okay. So, where did they go? Where in Afghanistan? Oh, they went to Afghanistan. They went to okay. Afghanistan. Okay. Yeah. Are you scheduled to deploy again? Have you heard anything about that? No, it's uh, nothing. Warning orders. Nothing that, hey. at least until we have. We're booked up until like June and July time next year. What so do you mean booked? We range. Have, we have rotation? train. We, yeah, we have training rotations booked all the way till July. Gunnery rotations. Gunnery from here to NTC, Southern California, yeah, yeah. Idaho, and Yakima. Right. That's. Uh, we haven't been told otherwise. Besides that. They had an op order like a month and a half ago that told us all about it. And that's as far as we know. So gunneries through July of of fifteen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. All right. The questions about his job are fairly easy. Nemitz has no reason to lie during this portion, and he seems almost to have forgotten why he's even there. No, no pending deployment. No. So far. And what's your right now? E4. Specialist? Yes. Okay. Any other skill identifiers or additional schooling that you've been to? No armor schooling, nothing like that. You haven't been to any training except your basic qualifications, your gunnery training. No advanced training? Yeah, I've just done gunnery training. I've just trained on the weapons. Okay. But nothing? You haven't gone to any schools or anything like that? No. Okay. Have you put in for any schools? Yes. What did you put in for? Air assault, ranger. Yeah. yeah, you put in already? And you have got your 4187 back or not? No, they didn't put me through because they said I was too young. Right. Okay. So 
So they didn't even forward your 4027. They got up to gate level and they said that I was too young. Okay. Gate level. All right. Okay. You you put in for Ranger and Eversault, but you did not put in for Airborne School? No. Why not? I just wasn't interested. It's kind of tough to get through Ranger School without having been Airborne qualified. You know, because you got a job. Yeah. Well, they do, they send you to Airborne after Ranger School now. Really? Yeah. Not my day. I'm gonna do a little jumping. Alrighty. So, you grew up in, in uh, White Eureka the whole time? You never lived in place yeah. else? No, I was, I, I was born in Eureka, California. Yeah. And um, I lived there. It's called Y R E K A. No, right? it's, it's not Y Eureka, it's E Eureka. It's E U R E K A. Oh, okay. It's the other one. Okay. Yeah. Like Eureka Arcade area. Okay. And I lived in Eureka Arcade in McKinleyville area. It's all up one pretty much big town. And I lived there pretty much my entire life. What's, up, what's the closest town to that bigger town? To Eureka? Yeah. Arcadia. Arcadia. How far is Sonoma? Is it near there? Sonoma's south. Yeah. It's a couple hours south. A couple hours south. Okay. So you're almost in Oregon. Yeah, I'm about an hour and a half away from... Closer to weed and all that action? Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. They just had, didn't they just have... What did they have in there? Fires or something? Yeah, a fire. Big fire. Like 159 houses or something. And weed. Got burned up. I didn't hear about that. Yeah. Just the last couple of weeks. So, uh, since... Since you were born, you lived in Wairika until you graduated from high school, or what? Yeah, I graduated high school at Arcata High. Okay. And, uh, yeah. I you never lived in place else? Same parents? Mom and dad? Yeah, um, well, they split up when I was younger. When they split up? When I was, I think I was probably eight. They divorced? Or nine, they got a divorce. Mm -hmm. And... My mom remarried. Mm -hmm. My dad did not. So where, who'd you live with? I went back and forth evenly. Okay, you went back and forth. I lived with my parents my entire life. You lived with your parents? Yeah, until I went to the military. Which parents? My mother and my father. I went back and forth until I left to go to the army. What was the last house you, but your mom and dad split up, you said? Yeah, right. but they both lived in the same area. Okay. And, yes. and, and, and Eureka or Arcata or what? Yeah, they both lived in Arcata. Okay. What'd your dad do? Um, what did you for a living? He was a pipe fitter yep. for Simpson and Evergreen Pulp. Okay. And then my mom was a hairdresser, a hairdresser and a business owner. She had her own salon she, or something? She owned her own clothing business. Oh, okay. How did that affect you when they divorced? Is that a bad thing for you? I think it was good for the both of them. Really? I had oh. healthy parents after that, I think. Really? What yeah. was the what was the problem between them? Was there a drug issue with one or the other or something or what? I think my mother was just not a very trust trustworthy person. Oh really? And wasn't very good with money, I think. Oh really? But she got better after yeah. some time. Okay. And uh yeah. Did you rack up a lot of debt or something for your dad? Yeah, I think she did. Yeah. That kind of caused a lot of friction, finances. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any siblings? Yeah. Who, what do you have? I have, Brothers, sisters. I have an older sister. That's it? Nemitz doesn't notice, but slowly the questions about his parents are becoming about the same issues he had with Danielle. His feelings about his parents' situation may give some insight into how he might have acted with Danielle. And I have a younger brother. Okay. How older is how much older is your sister? She we're all four years. So my sister is four years older than I am. She's twenty four. Okay. What she, she do? She just turned twenty four. She is a um I guess 
she like she tests products for pet smart so she tests them with real animals before they actually go into the store oh okay and then um my younger brother just turned 16 mm -hmm. in june so you still in high school in arcata no when i when i left to the military mm -hmm. my mother moved to park city utah oh that's a difference yeah, I thought we were just talking before I was. Well, no, just get get the story. Um, yeah, when I went to the military, my mom moved with my little brother to Park City, Utah, and then my father moved to San Jose, California. Yeah, and they still live in those same places now. Okay, what was the big draw to Park City, Utah, for your mom? Say that you what was the big draw to Park City, Utah for your mom? Um, Since she, you got remarried, she, right? Yeah, but about, I think it was five years later, she got a divorce again, and oh. she hasn't remarried since. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, then she moved to Park City. She moved to Park City because she liked the area. She'd been there before, and she has friends that have moved there. Okay. All right. Sometimes marriage is not for, for people, you know, sometimes it's not, not a good thing. All right, and dad still, dad's never remarried, you said, and he's in San Jose? Yeah, he has a girlfriend, but they are uh, married. Right. Yeah, and he lives in Morgan Hill, which yeah. is right, yeah, it's from San Jose area. Have you have you been down there? Yeah, I've been to his house before. I, I visit and talk to my parents very frequently. Yeah, I grew up down there too. My dad was just up here visiting me like, a week before I went out, so four weeks ago. Yeah, I grew up in Salinas, right down the road. Oh. Right there. Yeah. Okay. So did you go right, you must have gone right after high school, huh? Yeah. Like that's, had, that's for, that summer right after you graduated? Yeah, I had about, yeah, July, August, September, October. Yeah, I had about five months. Five months before you In there. between my graduation and me leaving for basic training. And what did you do? Did you, were you working at all? Yeah, my uh, my friend, mm -hmm. his his family owns a, a kitchen, and my aunt is uh, owns a catering business. Mm -hmm. So when they needed a hand, I'd help out because mm -hmm. I like to cook. Nothing steady though. No, I don't, like I don't a, really not, need anything not, steady. Not like a forties kind of got the you go to you go to school or anything, start college or anything like that. No, I was going to start college once I got to the army. Okay, have you done that? I haven't started it. Don't you get no online or anything like that? No. Okay. All right. And you're married now, right? Yes. Okay. How long have you been married? Since March 7, 2013. Was that like the day you were right here? Yeah, well, the day I graduated was March 7th, and I got married March 7th. From That's from basic training. So did you guys get married in Georgia? Or? Yeah. I, yeah. The actual day I got to... I think it was that day or the next day, because I remember when I graduated, they mm -hmm. put me on a plane that day. Yeah. And I flew out and reported that day. Yeah. So did your, your wife fly with so you? So I think it was like March 8th, but like one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So did your wife fly with you? No, she flew back um, when my when I left, or no, when, when I went to the, uh, basic training and my mom moved to Park City. Yeah. My she was my girlfriend then, mm -hmm. but we've been together, and uh, she went with my mom mm -hmm. and lived with her. Oh, okay. Because it was just better, it was more healthy for her. Oh, okay. And uh, she lived with her for the four some odd months that I was in training. All right. And then when I graduated, they flew out to my graduation. We got married, and she went back to Park City, and then I went to Fort Lewis. Okay. Alone by myself mm -hmm. and I was here for a couple of weeks just getting everything situated before right. she came yep. and then she came and we moved into our own place and there done that a few times okay so um, how long were you guys together before you got married I mean um, dating we're actually only dating like the question are finally turning toward his wife for now they are focused on the early part of the relationship but it will be interesting to see if Nemitz acts any differently when the time period around her death is brought up. Three months before that. Three months. Yeah. So during 
during you kind of struck up a relationship again during your it was trip? right after I graduated I met her okay. right after I graduated high school I met her okay because I already knew her family right and her cousin was uh, one of my best friends when I was growing up okay all right so high school education that's it yes sir okay all right and the only other employment you've had throughout your history is some part-time stuff yeah it was no steady job okay part-time caterer does that make sense yeah i just did some random cooking jobs here and there okay. for some people did you ever work at a restaurant or anything like that i mean i worked at like my buddy's restaurant for like a, like a day or two yeah just to help him out with the helping hand yeah yeah it was more just helping out okay what kind of restaurant do you have what kind of restaurant did he his family yeah have? It was a, uh, it's like a country and breakfast store. Yeah. It's like, Diner. yeah, it's kind of, it's called the country store. So it's yeah. just homemade country goods. It's uh -huh. all homemade. All right. That's an arcade. Yeah. You were arrested when you were juvenile at all? I've never got taken, never arrested. Never arrested? Smoking weed, stealing anything, breaking anything? No. Never? Never done anything like that. What'd you do in high school? I mean, play sports? Yeah, I wrestled okay. year, year round my entire time I was in high school. Wrestled? Yeah, varsity, just, yeah, I was on varsity, and I was the um, what do you call it, like the team coach for my uh, junior and senior year. Okay, team a captain. Yeah, I was the captain. Okay, yeah. all right. I wrestled uh, collegiate freestyle and Greco. Okay, all right. Pretty much the whole time. Any other sports? Wrestling was year round. Okay, that's it. Just wrestling. Yeah, there was only like a two month break. Oh, okay, just training. All right. No juvenile difficulties at all, never? No, I've never been arrested. I've never gotten a ticket when I was younger. Did you drive? Yeah, I drove. Since you were 16? Yeah, when I turned 16, I got a, tr a pickup truck. Okay. And I got a license. But How'd you pay for that? My fam uh, my mom did it for me. Your mom paid for it, okay. Yeah, and I would just pretty much just help her out whichever she needed it. What kind of truck do you have? It was a, a Ford F-150. Okay. What year? It was a 06. That's a pretty nice truck. Mm -hmm. Did you do anything to it? No, it came with like tires. Pretty and nice of them. Okay. All right. Have you ever taken any CVSA or polygraph before? Just no. No, not for security clearance or anything like that. No. Do you have? You, do you have security clearance? I have like a basic security clearance. But Secret or what? All it is so I can use the electronics that are in our trucks. Okay. Because you apparently you have to have that, that basic yeah. level security clearance right. to be able to use like some computer systems that are inside the truck. Right. Never been to jail or locked up or I've never been youth camp or stuff. nothing like that? Never. I've okay. never done anything like that. Okay. Any crimes that are undetected? Everybody does something. No, I mean, I drink. I drink alcohol okay. at age. So you drink in my pee. Okay. Never smoked any weed or anything like that. Never took ecstasy. No, I've never Nothing. done pills before in my entire life. Nothing like that. I think that. I smoked when I was like in high school a couple times. Little weed. Okay. Yeah, but I wasn't like a pothead. Or anything. Right. That wasn't something you're into. Your no, athlete. No. Anything else? I mean, just alcohol. I, I smoke cigarettes on occasion. Cigarettes. Well, age. okay. That's. I'm, I'm talking about criminal stuff. No. Never stole anything. No. Never. No. Not took a pen from anything from the unit. I mean, I'm not, these aren't the chargeable things. They're just things that you did and maybe weren't detected. No, I mean, I was given random stuff sometimes. Like, like that you thought were probably taken. To, you, you possess stolen property? Not that, no. I don't think so. Not that you were. Really? Yeah. Okay. What else? Nothing? No. You know? The only time I got some from the military, like I remember I got a box one time, they were throwing it away in the box dumpster. of what? It was like a, just a metal box, like just a, just like a, an ammo can? No, it was just like a metal like clamp it wasn't an ammo can, it was like a clamp box. A clamp box. Nemitz becomes a little more careful with his answers when he is asked about various transgressions he might have committed. This could be a sign of guilt or just general nervousness about the nature of the questions. Yeah, they're throwing them away because we found a bunch of them that are all dented and rusty. Okay. So, besides alcohol and, and weed, that's it? No no larceny, no malicious mischief, never egged anybody's house, nothing like that. TP'd anybody's life? I, I think I egged a house one time when I was in high school. 
Okay. No TP in people's houses, anything like that? I think that came with the A unit. Okay, TP in, okay. All right. I was back when I was like 14, I think. Yeah. This is where it starts to get a little sticky. So, from the beginning, again, mm -hmm. all right, and I know you've said this many times tonight, start out your day for me. When did you guys get back from Yakima? Back to you. Can you start from when I woke up? Or yeah, sure, go ahead. Start. Um, this morning I woke up at 4.30. Where? I uh, 4.30 wake up call. Uh, in Yakima, we had uh, they let us have the barracks for two nights before we went back home so we could shower. Okay. And um, so we woke up, we went to the motor pool, which is about a couple blocks away, mm -hmm. loaded up our trucks, got them so yep. they were good to roll on the, on the roads. Do you guys railhead or do you guys drive back? We drove back. Mm -hmm. um, it was about a five hour. We left, we. SP to 7.30 and we got to JBLM I think it was uh, we parked the truck at about 1300 so about 1 o'clock mm -hmm. that's when the trucks was fishing okay. off um, yeah got all my stuff we brought all of our weapons mm -hmm. and all of our SI we brought it back to the company after we uh, took apart the trucks and locked them up and made sure they were secure. Yes, so you're talking about special issue stuff? Yeah, we're talking about... Uh, radios and... Radios, mm -hmm. uh, dagger GPSs, um, compasses, our M4s. Okay. Um, That's part of your weapons, right? So. Yeah. How many weapons do you have? You have your 240? At work, I have a M4. You have an M4? And a 240. Right. And then I have other gear that goes with it. What else you got? I have a pair of uh, seven Bravo night vision goggles. Okay. I have um, I signed out a PVS seven, which is a it's like a night vision scope. Yep. And then or a past thirteen, the PVS so it's actually a PVS thirteen. Okay. I don't think it matters, but um, and then I sign out a mortar tube also. So you got a plate in the tube. Yeah, well, the, the, you don't sign out the plate, you just sign out the tube. Okay, all right. But, yeah, so we, I have a tube that I sign out to because I'm a gunner. Right, where's the plate stay? The plate stays locked up in a cage at work. Okay, so you got to lug that thing around? What's it weigh now? Yeah, it weighs... 80? Like, no, it's it's 81 mil. It's 81 millimeter tube. Right. So the base plate only weighs like... Well, that's a light one. Oh, okay. Okay, what? Yeah, it's 81 millimeter. How, what's, how, how much weight then? Um, I can't remember. You don't know? I can't remember off the top of my head. The, the base plate weighs like 27 pounds, I think. Oh, that's not bad. Pounds. Sure seems like I remember the guys that were humping them, they like 80 pounds. That's jump. probably for the uh, 120. Yeah. Because... They're jumping those, I mean. I feel like a fucking rock. It's not good. It's no fun. Okay, so what else you got? Hi that? No, um, yeah, we turned those things in. Right. Um, and then after that, I went, well, What time I, did you turn in? We turned in our weapons uh, between two and three, because when I looked up, after all the weapons were turned in, I mm -hmm. looked at my watch and it was, uh, it was like 3.05, mm -hmm. or it was like three o'clock. Okay. And then we went outside, we all talked. Are you in a mortar platoon? Yes. Okay, all right. Um, Who's the platoon leader? The platoon leader is First Lieutenant Huddleston. Backtrack a little bit. How did how long when did you go to Yakima exactly? We left on um, September twenty seventh. Not a little bit. Huh? It feels like it is taking forever to get to any relevant questions, but this type of test is more tedious in real life. Than it is portrayed in television or movies. Now, a little bit. Okay. All right. And then we got back today, so the 16th. Okay. 19 days? Something like that? 
Yeah, we were out in the field for 17 of those, and then two of them we spent in the barracks cleaning. Yeah. cleaning. Right. All right. How'd you do? How'd you shoot? Good. I'm, majority, I gun, so I don't hang the rounds. I get the gun on target so we can shoot it. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Yeah. So how did, you, how did you do? I'm pretty fast on the gun. Okay. So I'm one of the faster guys we have. How did, how did uh, the, how the, you guys got, how many guys in your track are your striker? Uh, we have four strikers total. So we got four strikers, four gunners, three AGs, three ABs, and four drivers, and then four squad leaders. Okay. So two teams per squad, two vehicles per squad? No, we kind of, we run it separate. So right. we have one, two, three, and four gun. Uh, squads? Yeah. Okay. They're, yeah, they're pretty much squads. They're just small squads. Right. No bigger than five people because that's all we can safely sit in a striker. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. But I was in two gun now. So you just you just get it on target and they hang around. Yeah. See, if I'm doing an eighty one, I pretty much I get the sight on the poles and I get right. the gun laid in, so it's ready. To hang Those guys around. are hanging too. Okay. Yeah, and they just hang around. And okay. Then one twenty, do the same thing. Okay. So how did how did your squad shoot? 100%? What? I mean. it, uh, when we went this time, it was, it was a MORTEP training mission, so it was right. more, um, they wanted to do, it was exams, mm -hmm. and everybody in my squad got 100% on everything. Oh, well. no, no fails or anything. But um, this MORTEP that we just did, the mortar training, it was mm -hmm. more to find out what's wrong with our trucks mm -hmm. so they can fix it. Right. Like combo was the main thing, so mm -hmm. now they're going to look at fixing combo for our trucks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's what training is, you know. Okay, but you, you shot pretty well. But how did how did uh, LT feel about everything? I think everything went, went pretty well, or? As far you? as I could tell, all the officers were happy with everybody. How's platoon sergeant? Uh, good, we just got a, a new platoon sergeant about, well, he can't, it was like official about two, like a month or a month staff sergeant or sergeant first class. He's a staff sergeant. We had a we had a sergeant for first class on Zoloskowski, mm -hmm. and now we have a staff sergeant Pena. Pena, okay. Yeah, so it's now yeah P yeah. What's, what's your take on him? You okay? Yeah, I have no. So far, so good. Yeah, I have no problems with anybody. I work who's your with. team? Who's your TL? My team leader. Yeah. Well, I'm actually the team leader. Oh, your TL. Yeah, my squad leader is a. Uh, E5, Sergeant Winstead. Okay. Who's your squad there? Okay. How they do it in the mortars is your VC is your squad leader, and then your gunner is your team leader, mm -hmm. and then it goes down to AG, AB, and driver. Okay. All right, so you got back, got all your stuff put away between 14 and 1500, then what? Um, once we were done, we went outside and we talked and they said, and we had a brief and the NCO said, give us our safety briefs. They said, you know, don't drink and drive, don't beat your dogs, don't beat your wife, don't hurt anybody, be careful if you're going hunting because it's mm -hmm. hunting season. Right. And, uh, that was it, and they let us go. And we had the company commander and first sergeant come out, and they said they were happy with our progress, so we made it more to them. Okay. So then we left, and... Um, Who's yeah, your first sergeant? Uh, first sergeant Patois, P-O... Let me spell it. Yeah. Uh, P-O-T-O-A-E, I think. I forget how it's spelled. Okay. Almost, looks almost like potato. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but the buddy catch a lot sure there. All right. Anyway. So anyway, so we're off and. So do, do you or do you have a car now? Yeah. Well, my wife was waiting for me to pick me up. She has a car. Yeah, we have a truck. Okay. And she was waiting in the parking lot across the street to pick me up. My wife's name is Danielle, right? Yeah, well, her middle name is Danielle, and that, that's what I call her. What's her Her first, first name is Tara. Now that the questions are getting closer to his wife, Nemitz lowers his head 
to avoid eye contact. T A R A. T A R R A H. Okay. And she's waiting to pick up the truck. Yeah, and um, what kind of truck do you guys have? It's a 2009 Toyota Tacoma. Is it there at the uh, apartment? Yeah, it's in our parking spot. Are they designated by numbers there? The, the yeah, yeah, they're just yeah, they're designated by so numbers. So it's parking for 301 or something? It, it just has numbers on it. You get a number. It doesn't say 301 on it. Oh, it says something has, else? Yeah, it just has a random number. Okay. What's your assigned number? I can't remember if you... What color is the truck? It's tan. Mm -hmm. Is it California plates or Washington plates? It's got Washington plates. How long do you have it? I just got it like a couple weeks before I went to Yakima. Who's it registered to? It's registered to me. So, you guys go directly home, or? Uh, yeah, we. Uh, so I got my stuff in the truck, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I jumped in the truck, and we were, we drove home, and yeah, we were just catching up and talking, mm -hmm. and um, she was really happy to see me, and I was really happy to see her. And okay. So we got home. And I wanted to order a pizza. Time you guys get home? Yeah. Oh gosh! Once I got home, I really wasn't even looking at time. Pretty close to four. It was probably three thirty, three forty-five. Okay. So, yeah, around right there. Um, okay. Got home. Um, I immediately all the stuff, all my TA fifty. I took it all on the back porch because it stunk. Yeah. And um, it'll happen after a month. Yeah, and I have two dogs, mm -hmm. so um, Daniel let them out so they could come say hi to me. And I was on the back porch, and they came and said hi to me. Mm -hmm. What kind of dogs you have? I have a. It's like a one and a half year old. Um, he's almost two actually. It's like a little rat terrier. Little, okay. Just a little lap dog. Right. And then I have like an eight month old black snout hound. Mm -hmm. and that's it. Those are those two are it. Like a black face, like a mastiff, or what? Yeah, he, he looks like a mastiff, kind of. He like he's blonde, but he has a big snout and just a snout's black. Right. How much? How big is he? He's probably I haven't put him on a scale before, but because he grows like every week. Mm -hmm. But uh, he's probably like between sixteen and eighty pounds right now. Yeah, he'll be big. Yeah, he's probably like sixty. He's probably like sixty something. Well, I have. A girl, uh, old English is one forty-five. Yeah, that's, that's at, big. At two, yeah. Um, a girl. Yeah. All right. So, see the dogs. You dump your T fifty there. Now what happens? Um. Yeah, dump my T fifty outside. Then I went in. I was just kind of messing around with the dogs, and. Okay. Uh, Oh, we sat down for a little bit. Me and wife were just talking about mm -hmm. her work and where she work on the and another thing they had on the report that they made a big deal of. But on the way home, on the way home, she told me, "Hey, I got you some alcohol." Okay. And I was, I was like, oh, "Okay." And she got me some cin um, the cinnamon st um, fire fireball. She got your fireball. Yeah. What about the Jack Daniels that's in there? Is Jack Daniels? Yeah. Is it an empty bottle? Yeah. Is it up on top? We found it okay. in there someplace. Yeah. yeah, it's probably from a party it's, it's I had like old. a couple months ago. Okay. Yeah. But you dumped the fireball today? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we so, sat down. So she, she said up. she bought the fireball on the way, so she knew. This is while we're driving that she brought this up. Right. And with what they said, and I wasn't really knowing about the. Uh, we'll so we'll kind of get back to that in a minute. But okay, so when you get home, you sat down to she fix your drink or something. Is that what you're getting to? What? So Did she you fix your drink or tell you after she told you about the fireball, you guys got home? Yeah, she got me her Red Bull too. And, um, you drink Red Bull and Fireball? Yeah, I, I don't usually drink any of that kind of stuff. Okay. But somebody told when I was in Yakima, somebody told me that if you mix the two together, like a little dash of Fireball and some yeah. Red Bull, it tastes good. Okay. What do you call that? Crap. Crap? It tastes terrible. You know, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't know what Red Bull and Fireball would taste like. 
Yeah. yeah, but I was digging the Red Bull because I was really really tired. Okay. Um. So on the yeah. So on the way home, she told me she got me that fireball, right. and we're underage. And I asked her, "Hey, where, where, where'd you get it?" Friends of Nemitz claim that he drank fairly regularly, but since he is underage, it isn't surprising he is lying about it, even though he has more important things to worry about. And she said, "Oh, well, I had my coworker get it." Okay. And who's that? I don't know. I've never met them before. Okay. So, um, yeah, and I said, oh, okay. And then she brought up that she had bought um, that co-worker's wife some roses or flowers. She right. said flowers. She didn't say roses. She said flowers. I heard about that part, yeah. Yeah, and um, she said it was because she had a baby and she's been being kept up a lot and, like, wasn't feeling very good. Right. So... Did she mention that on the way? Yeah, she kind of just brought that up because I asked her where she got the alcohol from. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah. Okay. All right, so you're sitting down there talking. So I didn't think too much of it, but yeah. they brought something up that I didn't We'll, we'll get to that part. This is just trying to keep on the natural progression okay. of what happened, the chronological sequence there. Okay. So you're sitting there talking to your wife. Uh, she fixed your drink, or you just go this get is, it? We're talking on the way. Oh yeah, then I know. Got home, but you got home. Did the dog thing, and then we yep. were sitting on the couch, and we were just kind of talking. Okay. Yeah, no, I went and made it myself. You made it yourself, okay. Yeah. Um, when, after yeah, she I told you about it. What? After she told you about it, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, what was I gonna say? Yes, did that. We were talking, and I was just. Uh, yeah, I was curious about her work because she got a job with a company called Granite Transformations. Where's that at? Uh, well, it's like a global company, but they're just not opening up a branch in the SeaTac area. Where, um, how long has she been there? Well, she started, she got the job like two, I want to say two weeks before I went to Yakima. Okay. So about probably about two weeks before the 27th. And, um... Sorry, I feel really sick. Okay. Um, Are you going to throw up? Before I get in the story, I keep thinking I am. Um, There's a trash can there. If you need to grab it, move it closer to you. you so, no, I'm good for right now. Okay. Um, anyway, so I was like, oh, show me. So we, went to the, we have two bedrooms. We have one bedroom is set up like, for a computer. And like yep. if we have a guest, they can stay in there. It's where I keep like some of my hunting stuff. Right. Anyways, um, yeah, I went there and she was showing me some stuff on the computer because she makes like the people that uh, do the transmissions will like take videos of them doing it. Yeah. And then my wife goes in, she'll cut it up and like make a little snippet video of like how it's done and begin. Oh, is that her job? She does now. graphic. Well, no, no, she does a little bit. Like that was just something she got tasked to do was to make that. Right. But. She, I think she does like sales. Oh, she, she did like sales. Okay. And she worked with like the manager and stuff. Okay. Kind of went around with them, but she was moving around a lot. It seemed like. What do you mean? Well, moving when, around within the company or? Like just going all over town. I feel like. Okay. Right when they first started, she had to go to like a class that right. was up in Everett. Right. And she had to go there twice. Okay. Uh, the day after, you know, she stayed up. over up there, or she had no. She she drove back as far as I know, but I was out of town when she did that. Oh, okay, that was, was yeah, that was uh, the weekend that I left to go to Yakima. Okay, that she went to go do that. Okay, but she'd been uh, doing some stuff with them before, like she'd been talking to the owners before that. Right. Anyway, so so we went there we were talking about it and we were just I just wanted her to show me what she was doing her boss like gave her a couple books to read and she okay. and so I was just looking at the books and I was just watching her doing these videos and I watched some videos and we were talking and then one thing led to another we had we ended up having sex in our uh, spare bedroom so is that where the computer is yeah that's where the computer okay is. so there is there a bed in there as well yeah that I have a or bed a futon or what? no it's a full it's like a uh, twin or like a double or like a queen size okay. or whatever you want to call that like a queen so anyways but yeah we've been there for like in case you okay. know somebody needs a place to stay okay or yeah spare room had sex 
Okay. Anything mm -hmm. specific about that? Anything unusual? About the sex? Yeah. I mean, anything, you know? No, it was good. Just, just, just fine. Okay. Yeah. We really don't get crazy. We're pretty lovey. Okay. All right. So, uh, and then after that, I went and took a shower. Okay. And she went back to the computer and just started doing a little bit of work work, and she was, she was calling some, um... Nemet says he is getting sick thinking about this part of the story, but nothing in his overall demeanor backs this up. The only time he is visibly upset is when it is implied that he is guilty. Some clients or employees or some, some somebody that she works with to set up some sort of schedule. Anyways, yeah, she's doing that. And a client or, or a coworker? I don't know. I don't, she said, I think she said clients. Okay. But I don't, I don't really know. Okay. She was, she was talking to somebody about the business. I don't know what is. What was context of that conversation? What? what was the context of that conversation? Do you recall? Oh, I said I was going to go take a shower. She's like, okay, that's fine. I'm going to go. I got that, but did you, walk, did you walk in on that conversation? No, I, I didn't listen to her on the on the phone. That's hear, when I was in the shower. You didn't hear any of that? No. Okay. So when you get out of the shower, what happens? Uh, I got out of the shower. I dried off, put some lotion on, some uh, cologne, went and got some PJs. And right then, when that happened, I, I, um, before we had had sex, mm -hmm. while we were talking and stuff, I ordered a, a pizza on Domino's app. Okay. And um, so, well, at first I ordered it and they didn't send it out, so then I had to call them again okay. and redo it. So by the time I got out of the shower, like literally right after I got out of the shower, okay. the pizza guy came and I went and got the pizza and then okay. me and her... Uh, just hung out. I was sitting with the dogs. We got some pizza and we started watching like GI Jane okay. and like some other stuff on TV. Okay. But GI Jane was what was what I was watching and like um. On what uh, was that was just on TV? On yeah, it was like on a, I think it was like on AMC or something. Okay. Um. But yeah. Um. So when do you stop watching TV? Oh. Um, where's your wife at that point in time? At that, okay, so after dinner, she went, she, uh, went back in the room, and she was on the computer, whatever, and then she went from that room to the bedroom, and while I'm out of town, I haven't done this before, but this time I left her a, a firearm. Mm-hmm. Did she take her shooting before? Yeah. Okay. But I don't think, I mean, she knew how to use it. I brought her shooting, like, a few times. So she knew how to use Which it. Which firearm did you leave her? It was a uh, AR-15 that I got her for her birthday. What kind of AR-15? It was a DPMS 5.56. Anything specific about that? No, I put some, I had like blue. Four grips or pistol grip or what? It had blue furniture on it. Yeah. Like blue mossy oak furniture because she likes the color teal blue. Mossy oak. Type stuff. Yeah, it was like a can blue teal camo. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah, I left her that. Okay. And so she was in the room, and I was watching TV, and she went to the other room. Okay. And she grabbed the rifle, and she brought it to the bedroom. The, I mean, not my bedroom, the, the spare. Off, the off, yeah, the spare bedroom. And while she was doing that, she told me, "Hey, you can put this away. I don't need it anymore because you know I'm home." So, I wasn't really, I was just sitting there with the dog and I was just like, oh yeah, okay, I'll do it in a minute. Like, I wasn't really paying attention. Okay. And then, um, a few minutes later, a few minutes later, I was just like, oh, I'll go do that right now. And um, I went in the room and I, just, you know, I was just going to do it real quick. Cause I was, where did you come from then? I was you, sitting you know. in the living room watching that movie. Okay. And she, remember, she brought the rifle back in the spare bedroom. Right. And then she just called out to you, hey, can you put this away? Yeah, she's like, hey, can you put this away? I don't okay. know where you're going. Okay. And then I, I didn't do it right away. I sat there for like okay. five, ten minutes. I was still watching the movie. All right. And then I got up, and then whatever, I got up like five, ten minutes later. Mm -hmm. I went into the spare bedroom, and I just like. Where is she? She's sitting, at that point. She's sitting in the office chair. Okay. 
And um, yeah, she's sitting in the office chair just looking at the computer. I don't know if she, she was doing I saw Granite Transformations on the computer. Okay. Stuff. I don't know exactly what she was doing. Um, so I, uh, oh, and in between there, the, the status of the weapon, when I left on the 27th of September, right. the magazines were not in the weapon, and the weapon was not charged. It was not loaded. As he recounts his story, Nemitz takes long pauses between each statement, as if he is trying to figure out exactly what to say or not to say. There's nothing in the chamber. There's nothing in the chamber. I left okay. it that way. And it was in, the, in her uh, closet in, in the bedroom. So how was it when you f went to, went to retrieve it and put it away? When I went to retrieve it, it had, uh, she had the magazine, there's a bird cage on the side. Mm -hmm. She had the magazine in the bird cage. Okay. Yeah. And I don't, I think, and I saw that and I wasn't really thinking and, but it didn't really click that she'd probably put the magazines in the weapon while I was gone. Yeah. And. You didn't ask her? No, I didn't ask. I just insinuated. Mm -hmm. So, so. I go in the bedroom and I grab the rifle and I just take the magazine out of the bird cage and I put it up like this, not even aware of where I was even pointing it. And um, I just, I thought it was empty already, so. Okay, so let me make sure. Yeah. We've gone through this a couple of times and it took about two hours for those guys to get you from, you hold it at your thigh, like kind of down at your waist and level with the ground. I was so when I first brought me in here. I didn't okay, know. to a point where you actually shoulder the weapon. Yeah, I had it like this and, and I was just... put it in the fire position and pull the trigger. Yeah. And it happens to be oriented toward your wife's head. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, so... All right, I got that part. So we all know that as a result of your actions, for whatever the intent that you shot your wife, we got that part. Yeah. All right. So, all right. So... She gets, uh, to, just tell me, just tell me what you did. So I, I picked up the weapon, mm -hmm. I, I was in, I, I picked up the weapon, put it on fire, pulled the trigger. Okay. Thinking that it was empty because okay. that's how I left it. Okay. Not thinking my basic rules of the fire. Now where's the, where's the weapon at that point in time? How were you holding it? Like, like you just like, I wasn't looking down the sights. I was look, I wasn't even looking at Danielle. Okay. I was looking down like at the top of the weapon like okay. this. I just held up like this, and I put. It, I remember I put it on. I looked at the safety selector. I put it on fire and just fired. Have you done any weapon. training in Mock City, over at Ranger Battalion, or anything like that? No. You never used the. You know what I'm talking about? The Mock City in, in military operations and urban terrain, where you do building searches and do yeah, that I've, kind of stuff. I've done some, when, like, like in basic training. We haven't done anything since you've been a part we, of the party. We don't. Um, <clears throat> You guys are strikers. That's a permanent so. party. Yeah. Not really. When I go shoot on my personal time, it's usually with like a hunting rifle. Yeah, sure. like, but what I'm saying is dur during the course of your action, how do you, how were you trained to clear buildings and shoot? How do you do that? Um, at the low ready. At the low ready. Okay. So like this. So you can point shoot. You're not really especially aiming, right? You're just center mass there on your, your, on your freaking... Uh, Vest, right, and your heavy vest, and you're yes, ready sir. to go up gun and, and, and get 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 rounds on target, correct? Yes, sir. Is that how you're holding it right there? That's what I'm asking you. When I was inside of my house. When you're getting ready to, yeah, you're you're clear. When I was inside of my house, I did not have the weapon at a low ready. Okay, so we're, it's it's up way up here. Yeah, it was like out, it was on my shoulder. It was up on the upper part of my body. I think it was. It was is it sit shoulder. at the center or is it up in your shoulder pocket? I think it was like right here up in my in shoulder. In your shoulder pocket. It, yeah, and yeah. So I put it right there. Okay, the, down the okay. safety selector. Now, the problem for me, yeah. you know, because obviously I've shot a long time, all right? Yeah. So, you know, my last job was the operations sergeant major at MP battalion, right? So I've been around weapons a long time. And all I've done in my whole life since I was 19 years old has been a copper, been an MP, right? Mm -hmm. My problem is, that I've got somebody who's putting their weapon in their shoulder pocket, which indicates that, hey, that's a point aim freaking position. Or, you know, if you're trained like this, yeah. you know, clearing buildings, I get that part, you know? And you're even even if you're just putting it in your chest as a, as a matter of practice, and you're like, boom, you know, and you're clearing it, I get that part, you know? 
and you're telling me what I'm seeing during that during that interview is that hey I have clear weapons I know how to clear weapons but yet I made this fatal error yes sir you know what I mean yes sir is that you, you understand and the, and what happens after that somebody was killed I okay I got that part what happens after that what do you do what I do after that happens? yes sir I immediately freaked out I um, I looked down and I saw there was a casing on the ground. I saw my wife. Where was that casing located? It was, uh, I think it must have hit the wall and just went right down on the ground right in front of me. Inside the bedroom or out in the hall? I think it was in, I think it was in the bedroom. Yeah, well guess what, it's not in the bedroom. Where is it at? It's out in the fucking hall. I must have That's kicked a problem. it. I must have kicked it then. And maybe. Or was it in the position you thought, or you weren't in the position you were telling me you were in? No. Well, this is going to eject out to the right, right, if you're pointing toward a person. When I walked into the bedroom, as you walk into the spare bedroom, yeah. it's kind of a small bedroom, so the bed is kind of close to the door. Right. I grabbed the rifle right off the bed, and mm -hmm. I was just kind of like in the doorway, halfway between the bed and the doorway, mm -hmm. and that's where I, the weapon, mouth, my weapon error happened. Okay. Okay. All right, so what do you do after that? After your wife is shot, you see that she's, it appears to be a fatal injury. I'm Once more, Nemitz is confronted with the fact that an accident of this magnitude doesn't make sense in light of his training. Is that your, is that a correct assumption? Yes. Okay. She's shot how? What is her extent of her injuries at that time? I'd seen that she was shot, um... Tell me what you saw. I, I didn't see the wound right away, but I did see that she was like this and her head was like that and she was like leaning. And what side of her head? Uh, well, she was leaning on the right side. Was she shot through the right side? I didn't find, I didn't know she was shot on the right side until after I went, I left the room. I took the rifle and I threw it on the ground in the closet. What did you do when you left the room? That, that's what I did. That's what you did? I turned around, I, I threw the rifle in the closet. In your, in your primary bedroom? Yes. Okay. And I was, um, yeah, and I went back to the, um, the spare bedroom and there was the magazine and I think there was like another one that she had there and I sweeped it off the bed and I kicked it un un under the bed. I don't know why I did that, but I did. And, um, I, and at that point I did look at Dan. Go back up for me just a second, make sure I got this right. So you, once you threw the weapon in the closet in your bedroom yes. where you sleep, yeah. right, in your closet, you came back to the spare bedroom. There's a magazine on the bed. Is that correct? Yeah. When I unloaded the, when I picked it up, when she brought it into the room, it had that magazine in the. That was in the birdcage. Yeah. And there was another one that was like on the bed. I don't know, like. I don't, she must have had that with her or something. Were both of them on the bed or just one? They're both on the bed, yeah. Okay. But there is that one that was in the birdcage, and I took it off the birdcage, and I put it on the bed. I took it out of the birdcage, and I put it on the bed. Right. So there's two magazines on the bed at that time. Yeah, because she had two. Right. Yeah, there was probably more. Probably the one that came out of the magazine well, right? And if she took yeah. one out. Yeah. And if she had obviously chambered around. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. And you, you swept them underneath of it? Yeah, I don't know why I did that, but I went like this. I uh, scooped, I like shoved them off the bed and kicked them. Underneath the okay. And um, kicked under the bed. Yeah, I went like this, like this cup. I just went yeah. like that, and I kicked it. Okay. And then what happens next? And then I, I looked over at her. I didn't touch her yet. Okay. I, I looked at her mm -hmm. and um, did you say anything? I I was said her name okay. a few times. The whole time I was saying her name. Calling Danielle. Yeah. Um, but right there I was I was like yelling it. I was but I was saying it. Right. And I I seen the. the How many times did you call her name? Oh gosh, from um, from beginning to end. Before I left the scene, probably. Hundred times. Okay. All right. I was saying it a How loud? I was whispering and I was yelling it and I screamed it a couple times and it was just like I was like saying it to myself. I was like Danielle, Danielle, like that. And, um. So you're telling me you're whispering it? I was. Because you're distraught 
and then you start yelling at because maybe the emotion and circumstances. It was, I was just up and, yeah, I was just up and down, up and down. Is it loud enough for the neighbors to hear? Do you think? Yeah, I'm, I think yeah. they, they must have heard me say it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Then what happens? Um, yeah, I, when I looked over or after the magazine thing happened, I looked at her mm -hmm. and I noticed that I saw the wound. Mm -hmm. And I, I was just ghost. I, I didn't know what to do when that happened. I, I noticed that she had been shot in the head on the right side. Okay. Um, I, I Did you see the exit wound? Um, I didn't see. I didn't see the actual wound, but I saw like I didn't see like like the actual hole, but I saw like the. His story doesn't quite add up going by the timeline between the sound of the shot and the police arriving. Nemitz almost immediately began trying to hide the evidence. Of course, it sounds better if he says he checked on her, but forensics don't show that to be the case. I don't know. I, get, I mean, I kind of, I didn't like the actual hole, but I saw like the area. The blood, like, where the blood mask was up? Yeah. Okay. Any exit for her face or head on the front? I think it was right like here. Around right her left or right arm? Um, her right, but mm -hmm. if okay. you looked at it, her, it'd be her left. Okay. Any other damage to the wall? I didn't, I Anything didn't, else I that didn't, you saw where the round might have gone after that? Did you see it? Did it hit the computer or anything like that? No, I didn't look at the where the round went after that. Okay. Um, you don't know if it hit the computer. You don't no, remember I don't, the computer. I don't, I don't know where you don't remember seeing the computer damage. No. Okay. All right. I don't remember seeing. I don't, I didn't look at the only thing I saw was the blood. Okay. That was the only. And then what? And then for for some reason, I thought. Oh my gosh, I have alcohol now in the house. And I went and I grabbed that. Is it just one bottle? Yeah, it was the... Where did you put that bottle? I threw it. Where? I, like, when I, w I went out to my porch and I just, like, threw it. I don't know. Off the balcony? Yeah. Threw it off the balcony? Yeah. Just out in the bushes someplace? Where did it land? I don't remember. I just kind of, like... The grass? I or? just kind of tossed it. I don't remember what direction. Okay. All right. Um, then what? Somebody knocking on your door? Yeah, at that point, somebody was knocking on my door as I was when I went back with. Before I w I went out to the porch. Right. I went by, right by, after I saw Danielle. I went to the kitchen. I grabbed that bottle. I went to the bathroom. And I poured it out, and mm -hmm. then I flushed it twice. Okay. And then I went out through the bottle, and while I was flushing. I heard the people knocking on the door, my next door neighbors, and um, yeah, I threw that bottle and my, my dog, my hound dog, mm -hmm. chased me out there, not like scary, but he like ran out there and he was like hiding on the porch, Okay. and my little dog was hiding somewhere Did you put the there. dogs on the porch and close the slider? What? Did you put the dogs on the porch and close the slider when he answered the door or what? No, I just left the slider open. Okay. My dogs don't mean any harm. They wouldn't do okay. anything, so I wasn't worried about them. I didn't know if you wanted to jump on the neighbors or, you know. Okay, anyway. Um, so did you answer the door eventually? Yeah, after I threw that bottle, I um, answered the door. Mm -hmm. And what did you tell her? It was my next door neighbor. It was a male. It, okay. it was, Ken. Yeah, um, he was wearing a white shirt. You see a military guy? I think he's military. Ken, do you know his name? I don't remember his name. Okay. Um, but apparently they said that they came in here, that he, the guy that knocked on my door, had, might have come in here and did a report or something, so I don't, okay. I don't remember his name. Don't worry about what he, what he said. I want to know what you experienced. I don't care about anybody else yeah, at this one time. Um, we'll get to that part. I guess fine. Um, but yeah, I answered the door and I, he said he heard a gunshot and... I was just, and he asked if everything's okay, and then I just looked at him and I said, no, not, and everything's not okay, my wife's hurt, and, okay. and he's like, is she okay, and I'm like, I, I don't even know what to do, and I was freaking out, and... Okay, I, this is very important. Well, what did you tell him at that point in time? Because I'm going to tell you, that's a sticking point for me. I think I might have said that... Um, she was cleaning her rifle 
but I don't know why I said that because I wasn't trying to cover that up. Like, I don't know why I said that, but they said I said that, and I must have said that. If they said I said that, I probably said it because I don't remember. But I do remember right between that time when he's at the door, my body, I went like limp and I fell on the ground. You fainted? Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I, no, I knew what was going on. Yeah. Like, I was thinking still. You just fell down? But my body just like gave out. And then I got up right after that and. Uh, After you close the door or before? No, the door automatically closes, closes if there's somebody not so, holding it. Okay, so after you closed the door with the neighbor, you fell down? Is that right? No, he was holding the door open. Oh, okay, he was holding the door open. Yeah, and, and then. Um, you fall in front of him? Yeah. Okay. Like, it, I, once I realized what I did and he was talking to me and then. Okay. So. How would you describe him? White male, black male? He was a white male, probably six foot one. Mm-hmm. Probably heavy, medium, what? Heavy, probably two fifteen, two twenty. Okay. Okay. Um, brown hair, blonde hair, what? I think he was like short blonde. Short blonde. Important points of Nemitz's story have changed over time, making it hard to believe he isn't hiding something. The fact that the neighbor had to be the one to make the emergency call certainly doesn't help matters. Okay. And then his wife was outside too, but she was like in the, I didn't really get On the landing? Yeah, um, she was like probably five, nine, five, probably like five, nine. Okay. Where do they live? They live directly across. Directly across? The door directly in front of mine. And you don't know their name? No, I met them once before, but I can't remember because. Okay. And then, uh, but yeah, and then after I fell, I got up and I realized what happened. I went into the room. I started crying and I grabbed the right side of her head. And uh, where's your neighbor at this one time? He didn't come in the house. He was. What did he say to you? Um, I can't remember what he said. Oh, I remember he asked me if she was okay, and I said no. I think she's gone. And. That's all I can remember him saying. Okay. And then I asked, I asked um, his wife because she was on the phone. I was like, you calling the cops? And she said, yeah. And I was like, okay, good. And that, but this is after I fainted and I walked, and everything snapped. And I walked into the room and I, I started crying and I was I grabbed the yell on the right side of the head and I cut my finger on I think bone fragment on her head. Mm-hmm. And um, I'd seen what I did, and I was just holding her. I looked at her face, and there was no response. And I, she wasn't breathing. There wasn't anything. And yeah. I just started whispering Danielle, and then. And what? That's it. I did you walk down to the police? Yeah, and then I walked downstairs to. Did the uh, police call you out? Uh, no, they didn't have to call me out. I immediately, like, I heard, uh, like, sirens outside. Mm-hmm. And I uh, I walked downstairs, and I was sitting on the landing with the neighbor's wife. And I was, like, making sure that, that those were the cops that she called. And then I, and so I went downstairs because I saw, um, I think it was, like, two or, th- I think it was three police officers, and they had their weapons drawn. Right. And um, I put my hands up, right. and I, and I, they handcuffed me and I wasn't, I didn't resist or anything. Okay. I told her that my wife was upstairs and she's wounded. Okay. And they brought me to um, one of the uh, officer's cars and I sat there for a little bit while they had a fire truck and I didn't see a paramedic truck, but I think that's why the firemen were there. Yeah. Um, they're rushing here. Um, I can't remember his name. They put me, they were gonna put me in one cop car and somebody else said no, put me in this cop, put me in a different car. And then he brought me here in in cuffs and then I I sat outside for a little bit. Okay. And at that point I was just, I was still saying my wife's name. Let's get down to a few questions that I have. Okay. Okay. So let me make sure I understand everything. Then I want you to make sure that you understand everything, yes. right? Because 
there is an explanation for this. And, you know, Detective Jordan and Detective Barnett have told you that, hey, you know, did you make a mistake? Nobody refutes the fact that you you shot your wife and killed her. Yeah, we know the physical act of that is yours. Okay? Yeah, There's a couple of things that are omitted here. One thing is, you know, you're about as emotionless as I am, you know? And I'm a 36-year freaking veteran of, of police work, okay? Yeah, that That's a problem for me, okay? If somebody shoots their wife, accidentally or otherwise, and they have no intent, all right, you know what? I'm a basket case, you know? Just like Barnett had told you before, okay? All this is gonna be entered, you know, this is, it, we're being recorded, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna go in front of a jury, yes. okay? And with the totality of circumstances, right? Now look at, yes. you, you understand what I'm talking about? Okay, you like emotion? I, I don't so, know why. Okay, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, let me finish speaking, please. You like emotion, you admit to pulling the trigger and orienting, orienting the weapon towards your wife. Yes, sir. Okay? That part we got clear. Now, were, I mean, like I said, it's why, why did that happen, okay? Your experience, we know that, all right? The other thing is, we've got a scene there. Yeah. You shoot her, the weapon's hidden in the, in the, in the closet, thrown in your closet, in your bedroom, the magazines are kicked under the bed, the alcohol that you're too young to have is poured out, and the bottle is thrown off the balcony, right? Yes, sir. What does that look like to a reasonable, objective person? Uh, what I was trying to cover something up. It does it? I mean, I'm asking you, is that, I mean, what do you think? Yeah, it does. It looks like I was trying to It looks to bad, it. okay? It looks yeah. horrible for you. Yeah. Okay? The only thing, the only, look at me, the only thing yes. that I can do for you, and I, listen, I have sat across the table from many a freaking killer, many times, mm -hmm. okay? Sometimes it's an accident, and most of the time it's freaking damn straight on purpose, okay? You just got back from Yakima. The day you get back, you shoot your wife. Yeah. What usually happens in that case with a soldier? What is usually the cir circumstance? His wife's been fucking around on him, man. That's usually the case, yeah. okay? And he finds out about it. And you find some evidence of that. We know that she bought flowers for somebody, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Like no. I said at the beginning, well, she told me about that. Okay, and that's why we're getting to this now. Okay, she told you about that. Now she might have been trying to mitigate that circumstance. Now listen to me. I've been married thirty-three freaking years. Same woman. Okay, a long time. Unusual for my profession, having that I picked. Of course, being a soldier for 22 years and being a police officer for 15 years, you know, after that, that's a long time, right? Yes, sir. And you can tell from the lines in my head, I'm not a real fucking prize to peach to be around sometimes. But I'm gonna tell you that, you know, I would never send roses, red roses, to anybody except my wife. That is unusual. Now, if somebody were sick, I would send them flowers. A bouquet, perhaps. I red roses is a little roses. different. Well, it specifically says red roses on the receipt, right? It is pointed out that giving someone red roses is an unmistakably romantic gesture. It is also a very strange thing to do when you are so deeply in debt, and it is hardly something that Nemitz would just ignore without question. Did you know about that before? I didn't. The first time I heard about the receipt is when the two uh, detectives came okay. in after they took a break. And did, did your wife tell you what kind of flowers she sent? No, she just said a, she just said a bouquet of flowers. Bouquet of flowers. Yeah. Okay. Did you did you, so you never saw that at all? So never I, you never saw the receipt or anything from. I Safeway. never saw the flowers. And I never saw the receipt. Right. I understand. You never saw the flowers because they're not in the house, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. Did you ever scratch your head and kind of go? What the hell is that about? What do you think that a dozen rose and, ro roses cost a cent? Did she tell you how much she, she, she spent on them? You know, I'll usually buy Danielle like a single rose and I'll bring it to your room. And what's that running? Just a few dollars. A few dollars, right? So you multiply a few dollars times 12. Like 40 bucks, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's not a, you know, it's a little chunk of change, right? 
Yeah. Is that something you would do for just anybody or something you, somebody you knew casually? I mean, I don't know. You see, I, I, I wouldn't buy flowers from my wife. I wouldn't buy flowers from my wife either. You know, and I would, and I wouldn't do it for somebody I knew casually. You know, and if my wife did that shit, it probably, I'd probably say, "What the hell's going on with that?" You know. Was that the case? Were you suspect about that at all? No. When she told me when I was in the car, I thought she would because she told me she got it for her uh, her coworker's wife. Right. So I was I, having some postpartum depression issues or something. Is that kind of what it is? For the you know, do you know what that is? For the other woman. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why or what was wrong. She said like she had a kid. Right. She had a baby and she was kind of feeling blue after the fact. Yeah. yeah. That's what postpartum depression is. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's that's when you have a baby and or um, freaking problems or something. Yeah. Okay. Um, so but yeah, she told me about that, and I didn't really think much of it because okay. I thought, well, maybe she knows them better than I do. I don't. All right. Well, let's get let's get to the rest of the part of it. Okay. Okay. Rifle goes in the closet, right? Yeah. Magazines get kicked underneath there. You dump that stuff out. You give the the neighbor some bullshit story at the door. All those things, in totality of circumstance, formulate intent. I understand. Do you understand sir. that? Yes, sir. Okay. So, which is it? Are you in? Did you intend to shoot her, or did you intend to disturb the crime scene? Which one is it? I did not intend to shoot her, but I did intend to disturb the crime scene. Okay. So you, endure, you, you disturbed the crime scene after the fact. Yes, okay, sir. intentionally. You gave that. You had some quick thoughts about that. Intention, and you did, and yes, and intentionally did that. quick thoughts came. And why did you do that? Sir. Why did you do that? I, I don't, I don't know, sir. You just can't. I, I, I guess I don't. Okay, let me ask you this question: Did your acts of negligence result in your wife's death? Yes, sir. It did. Okay. So what do we call that? We call that manslaughter, that's what we call it, right? That's a problem for you. That's a problem for you right there, okay? Whether or not, you know, it's a, it's a lower form of murder, but it's a murder, okay? It's recklessness, right? Yes, sir. Okay, that's what I need to know. I mean, first, did you intentionally plan to kill your wife? Answer the question. No, sir. Okay. Did you negligently and recklessly kill your wife? Say it again. Negligently and recklessly kill your wife. Did your actions negligently? Yes, sir. Okay, they did. Yes, okay. sir. So, would you, in, in simpler terms, would you say your own stupidity resulted in your wife's death? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. That's what I need to know. There's no other reason at this point in time for you to, that you killed your wife. No financial issues? No. Apparently they said that I was $17,000 in debt. Might be. I, I do have a car loan, but okay. I, that was never a problem for me. But, but altogether, I mean, that's a little chunk of change. How much do you make a month? Um. When asked if he had the motive to kill his wife, Nebitz can barely give an audible answer. For my housing, BH, I make. I BH and salary. Seventeen thousand six hundred, two thousand five hundred. Wow, that's big money, huh? Pretty four. It's a lot different than when I was in. Okay, so thirty-five, thirty-six hundred dollars a month. Yes. With, with BAH? BAH, BAH. BAH, okay, all right. And then so for my base pay and... Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You, you don't get any other proficiency pays, right? Nothing else? You're not airborne qualified, you're not jumping? No, I don't that. get anything extra. Okay, good. All right. So let's get down to the test. So what are fair questions, in your, in your opinion? What are some fair questions? Did you intentionally kill your wife? Is that a fair yes. question? No, I'm asking you. We're going to formulate the questions I'm going to ask you when we get in the box. 
that I intentionally came on left. That's yeah. a, if you want to ask that, that's a, that's a fine question. I'll answer oh. that. Okay. All right. All right. Is your name Skylar Nemitz? Skylar Nemitz. Yes. Nemitz. How would you answer that? Yes. Okay. Is the color of, now? This is a control question. This is how I find out what your light looks like on that machine. All right. I want you to say no to it. I'm going to ask you: Is the color of my briefcase black? Look at it. No. Okay. So if I I ask, it is black, obviously. Yes. Would you say, would we agree on that, that it is black? Yes. Okay, but I want you to say no, right? Okay. That's going to show what your lie looks like. Is today, it's today, it's Friday, already. Is today Friday? I'm going to say yes, right? Yes. Okay. So, the relevant question is, no big surprise, did you intentionally kill your wife? No. No. Okay. Is this the month of October? Yes. Okay. Did you negligently kill your wife? Yes. Okay. Are we in the city of Lakewood? Are it's we in this? Lakewood. Yeah, it's Lakewood. Yes. Okay. Another control question. I want you to lie to it. Because everybody has. Have you ever driven over the posted speed limit? Yes. Okay. But I want you to say, no, because uh, yeah. right? That's that's a control question. All right. Am I wearing a watch? Yes. Yes. Anything there that you can't live with? I'm fine with that. Okay, all all those questions, right? Okay. I'm going to talk to the guys out here. Make sure everybody's okay with the the the, the, the case detectives okay with the questions we talked about, mm -hmm. and then we'll get on the test and I'll be some money. Okay. Thank all you, right. sir. Is there anything you under, that, that you don't understand about this and the totality of the circumstance? You understand this looks horrible for you. It looks bad. Yeah, I'm probably done for the next 20 years. Done for a while, you know? It is time for the direct questions. Nemitz manages to answer calmly, showing no sign of nausea he supposedly felt earlier. That's what I'm trying to make sure of. You know, all I can do for you is say, when I looked you in the eye, you told me the truth. Are you going to be able to do that? Yes, sir. Have you told me the truth so far? Yes, sir. Really? Yes, sir. You didn't kill your wife because you were pissed off or anything no, like not, that? No, I did not, sir. No? No. Why do you think you're so void of emotion? I really don't know. I, I've learned that myself. Are you in shock or something? Are you always like this? Is this just your personality? Uh, I, well, I've never been around something like this. My heart's been pumping like crazy since I, since I have not It hasn't stopped. Really? You don't display that. I mean, you know, like I said, if my wife's dead, what am I going to do, Skyler? What do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to go right there and I'm going to apply some direct pressure like I'm trained to do and I'm going to call 911 with the other hand 
and I'm going to talk to her and make sure, you know, I have her attention and she's still with us, right? Yes. Sir. Have you been trained in that? Yeah, partially. Bullshit. I know you've been trained in it. I know that you've had some combat life service training. I see, sir. Something like that. Stop making fucking excuses because I know that. Okay? That's that's the thing. You can't. Why didn't you do that? Why? Answer the fucking question, man. I, I don't know, sir. Why? I mean, the reasonable fucking I, person would go there and try to save that person's life, especially if it's somebody that fucking means a lot to them. Is that reasonable? Yes, it is. It is. Is it reasonable for somebody to go dump their alcohol off the goddamn no, uh, yeah, patio as a priority? No. Is it reasonable for somebody to flush it? No. Is it reasonable for somebody to kick the fucking magazines under the bed and to hide the weapon? No. It's not. So tell me why you fucking did those things. Because it makes you look like a fucking killer. I'm telling you, it makes you look like a fucking killer. And when this gets in front of a jury, that is exactly what you're going to look like. Because you're not giving me an explanation. You're just not, man. I, was just, I don't know why, but... I think because of the alcoholism in my system, I tried to cover my... How much did you drink, Tyler? I mean, Skyler? How much did you I drink? One drink. One drink? I, I don't drink that often. I How much do you I weigh? Like 150 to 160 pounds. 150, 160 pounds. Yeah, one drink. How big of a shot of fireball did you take? It was, it was, if I filled it up in the cup, it was probably right there. Not a whole lot. Yeah. And yeah. some Red Bull. And some Red Bull, right? Did you feel drunk? I, f I definitely was not sober, so I felt buzzed off. You felt low buzzed. Were you out of control? Do you think you were in in incapable of making a fucking decision? Were you? I'm asking no, you. No, I was capable of making decisions, sir. Okay, so are you, you're telling me, as a soldier in the United States Army, who is able to fucking hang a fucking mortar to, how long does it take you to fucking calculate that trajectory hang, and get him to fucking hang that round and shoot it. How many seconds? How many fucking seconds? I can get the gun up in like 10 to 15 seconds. 10 to fucking 15 seconds. You can get a goddamn 81 millimeter mortar downrange, but you can't keep your shit together enough to apply direct pressure to your wife's fucking wound after you shoot her. Really? Really? You want me to fucking believe that? How do I fucking believe that? How do I convince a judge and a jury that you were not a fucking intentional killer? After you have, you know, you fucking destroyed my fucking crime scene, you, you find out that your wife bought flowers for somebody fucking else, and you get back from Yakima on that day. Really? Does that look fucking rosy and fucking peachy for you? Does it? No. No, it doesn't. So what's the fucking truth, bud? I didn't intentionally kill my wife, sir. You didn't? I did not. Really? The, f the flowers... I What's that fucking machine going to say? Because I'm going to tell you what. Let me explain how this works. The FM frequency of your voice will be measured by that machine. A polygraph is 35% accurate. I would not take one if my fucking life depended on it. An 18-year study completed last year with that through Johns Hopkins is 96 fucking percent accurate. If you lie, I will fucking know. Absolutely positive of it. Yes, sir. No bullshit. Sir. The technician tries to evoke a more emotional response from Nemitz, but he remains oddly flat. He may be attempting to regulate his emotions for the test. So before we get and you waste my fucking time, let me know where you're at with it, bud. Where are you at with it? As a soldier, to soldier, tell me what the fucking deal is. Because the only thing I can do to mitigate you getting 20 or fucking life is to say, listen, when I looked you fucking straight in the eye, you said, listen, I made a mistake, I fucked up, and that's the way it is, okay? Now, is it intentional or isn't it? It's not intentional, sir, and I did fuck up. I am, I fucked up. What do you think you deserve then for that? Just I wish I could trade places with her. Okay, got that part. Not happening. How many years do you think you should go to jail? How well do you think you're going to do in Washington State Prison, Skyler? 
at a buck fifty and five foot eight now well at all you know what it's gonna be a hard fucking road to tow road to tow ho oh, dude I'm telling you cause some fucking buck <laughs> you know you got a pretty face man they're gonna be all over your ass I'm gonna tell you that and that's not even a fucking threat it's a matter of fact I'm just telling you I need the truth the absolute fucking truth okay what do you think sir I'm asking you I, I think the totality of circumstances looks horrible for you. I'm telling you, the facts of the investigation indicated that you intentionally shot your fucking wife, either because you found something on that computer or because you thought she was having an affair over the flower thing. I mean, that's all I can come up with based upon the facts and the physical evidence that I have now. And that's the only thing I can deal with, Skyler, is what I'm finding in your apartment and what I'm putting together, you know, and what the other investigators are putting together. I'm not lying to you. You know everything that I fucking know. Everything. I'm not holding anything back. I don't need to. You know what went down there. The only thing I can't figure out is what's in your fucking head. And why that went down. Sir, I'm trying to spill as much as I can for you, but... Uh, and I'm just trying to make sure, absolutely, that I got the right picture here. My negligence killed my wife. Okay, so that's what the machine's going to say? Yes, sir. Okay, all right. Just making sure I don't make a mistake. You got it? Not the personal. That's the way we're doing it. You want some water? I'll get you some. Okay, come in. Got your diet coke, how's that? All right, yeah. All right. Let me make sure we. I talk to the investigators, make sure they they got what they want. All right. One of the questions that we'd like you'd like to clarify. That's maybe a little maybe a little better. I don't know. Were your actions, or did you point the weapon at her to intimidate her? Or scare her? No. Okay. What would you like? What which question you like? Did you did you point the, did you fire the weapon at her to scare her or point the weapon at her to scare her? No. Okay.
Okay. Give me a minute to get the machine set up and we'll get it going on. Okay. I'll get you to we'll do some testing and actually this will be pretty quick. Nemitz has had a few moments alone, but it hasn't helped. The adrenaline that carried him through the earlier portion of the interview has been depleted and he is ready for this to be over. So it's the 17th already. Okay. The plugs. Oh, moly. It's way over there. Let's move your stuff for me, please. Specifically, or anybody, not that I'm aware of. Uh, usually, the case agent or the chaplain will have the, those duties. So I'll find out for you. When will I be able to speak with you? Uh. Let's see if uh, we. I don't, I don't know if I can get you that before booking or before I get downtown. Let's see. Okay. What's downtown? Jail. I mean, you know you're going to jail, right? You're not going to walk out of here for a manslaughter. Mm, I understand. It's pretty serious, right? Yes. That's why I'm trying to emphasize. I can't emphasize enough that you need to tell me the truth. Yes, sir, and I'm trying to do my best. That's okay. why I agreed to this. And it's pretty serious. Yes, I know, sir. And, and, and you've been cooperative, you know, as far as participating in all the, uh, in everything we've asked you to do. But, you know, like I said, people lie to me every day, every single day. Yes, sir. So it's not uncommon. <clears throat> What about my um, leadership? I already talked to him. You already talked to him? I briefed your commander and your platoon leader. What did they say? Well, they didn't say much. It's basically, you know, I just told them the facts of the investigation as it was thus far. Of all the people that Nemitz could possibly want to contact, he has never thought to mention a lawyer the one person that could have helped him in this situation. Make sure I got it. N-E 
or N E M E T Z, correct? N E M E T Z. Correct. S K Y L A R. Yes. Okay. And middle is N, correct? Yes. In November. Okay. Will I be able to see my wife? I don't think so. One more thing, real quick, before we get on this. Mm. Were you screwing with her at all? I mean, just you know, trying to no, there know, was no there point was. at her, you know, or were you just in the back of your head? Maybe she was looking the other way, and you had that little suspicion maybe something was happening, and you click it off and kind of your own little hey, you know, self satisfaction, anything like that? No, no, no funny games. Just okay, I'm just asking. You know? My intent was to clear the weapon, just put it away. Just put it away, and uh, you were just negative and how you handled it. That's what you're telling me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So real quick, I'll go over the questions for you one more time, and then we'll get the we'll get the. Uh, mic on and have it calibrated and we'll calibrate your voice. So is your name Skylar Nemitz? Say Nemitz? Skylar Nemitz. Nemitz, okay. Skylar Nemitz. Is the color of my briefcase black? You'll answer? No. Okay. Is today Friday? Yes. Did you intentionally kill your wife? No. Okay. Is this the month of October? Yes. Did you point the weapon at your wife to scare her? No. Are we in the city of Lakewood? Yes. Have you ever driven over this piece of uh, posted speed limit? 
No. Okay. Am I wearing a watch? Yes. Okay. Nemitz is asked another round of questions, which he answers robotically. Yeah. Is your name Skylar Nimitz? Yes. Nemitz continues with a test, clinging to the hope that it will be a point in the favor of his innocence. Is today Friday? Yes. Is your name Skylar Nemitz? Yes. Good. Remember this control question. Is the color of my briefcase black? No. And I'm 
might have to ask him again just to make sure it takes, okay? We're gonna ask that one again. Is the color of my briefcase black? No. Is today Friday? Yes. Did you intentionally kill your wife? No. Is this the month of October? Yes. Did you point the weapon at your wife to scare her? No. During the trial of Skylar Nemitz, his expertise with weapons was one of the prosecution's driving points. They said that there was no way that he could have committed the string of errors that were required to result in the death of his wife. The defense protested that there was a lack of substantial motive. The result finally came down to the decision of the jury, who had to weigh the evidence with great consideration. When they came to their conclusion, Nemitz was found guilty of first-degree manslaughter. He was sentenced to the maximum length of 13 years, and he is appealing his sentence. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, there is a Patreon link in the description where you can support the channel further. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.